Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 141 Chapter 141 Harry watched the council fiddle with the terminals in front of them. Soon enough they finished and to those immediately began to speak Commander Shepard, please step forward. Shepard and Anderson shared a look, after a few seconds, Anderson nodded to Shepard and the commander stepped forward, everyone around the Citadel Tower began to pay attention to what was about to happen. To those nodded and began to speak once again, it's the decision of the council that you be granted all the powers and privileges of the special tactics and reconnaissance branch of the Citadel. Valern then went on spectres are not trained, but chosen, individuals forged in the fire of service and battle, those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. To those then continued speaking spectres are an ideal, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self-reliance, they are the right hand of the council, instruments of RW. Harry growled which made to those jump and turned her head towards Harry, she began to nervously sweat at the glare she was receiving from him, er, uh, I mean instruments for the good of the people? Harry just narrowed her eyes while everyone sweat dripped at the fact that Tavos sounded so unsure and very nervous, but Harry nodded, which let Tavos relax and sigh in relief. Sparators continued on, to try and save face spectres bear a great burden, they're protectors of the galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense, the safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. Tavos, now slightly recovered, decided to give this another go, so she continued on you are the first human spectre, commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. Shepard nodded, and even though he was trying to keep calm, he was obviously amused at what Harry just did, he however decided to get things moving what's my first mission? Valern immediately answered his question we're sending you into the Traverse after Sarin, he's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend him or eliminate him. Shepard nodded any idea where to find him? Sparators answered Shepard's question we will forward any relevant files to Ambassador Udina. To those then sighed, she was obviously stressed and tired so her next word didn't come as a surprise this meeting of the council is adjourned. The council members quickly left, while Anderson wasted no time to congratulate Shepard congratulations, Commander. Udina sighed and then crossed his arms we've got a lot of work to do, Shepard, you're going to need a ship, a crew, supplies. Anderson nodded and then went on you'll all get access to special equipment and training now, you should go to C-Sec Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisitions Officer. Shepard nodded, while Udina then turned his head towards Anderson Anderson, come with me, I'll need your help to set all of this up. Anderson smiled and nodded, both soon left to get everything Shepard will need ready, it seemed like they were quite excited about all of this. Rex shook his head HMPH, bastard didn't even thank you. Kanu giggled and patted Rex on his arm well, he must be very excited about all of this, plus I bet there's still a lot for him and Anderson to get ready. Harry nodded let him worry about all the paperwork and political crap, not receiving thanks is more than enough of a price for us, not having to deal with all of that. Rex hummed but then nodded in agreement, Shepard grinned well, enough about you Dina, let's go. Everyone nodded to Shepard and got ready to leave, for convenience, soon enough, everyone left to go to the C-Sec Academy. Dash. As everyone walked towards the Citadel Rapid Transit Station, Taylor suddenly began to speak 300 years ago, the Geth drove my people into exile, we asked the council to wipe the synthetics out, but they ignored our pleas. Valerie sighed why am I not surprised? Lefay shook her head the council does seem like the type to wait and see, rather than to do something about a problem. Rex scoffed maybe if they listened, we wouldn't be here now. Everyone had to agree with Rex and Lefay's words, but they also knew that spending time thinking about what ifs is a waste of time. Harry, however, took note of what Taylor just said. He will be asking about all this later. Something about what Taylor said did not bode well for him. After that conversation, Shepard and the group reached the Citadel Rapid Transit Station and called a transport. 
A few seconds later, they were on their way to the C-Sec Academy. Dash. As soon as they arrived, everyone got into the elevator, though it was a bit of a squeeze for all of them to get inside, as they rode down, Rex suddenly began to speak Uguarians messed up the whole galaxy when you let the Geth break free. Do your people ever talk about it? Taylai huffed and then said, do the Krogan talk about starting a foolish war that resulted in the Turians sterilizing your people? Rex nodded all the time. Harry suddenly stopped everything, and by that, it means, he stopped even time and space, everyone was shocked at what had happened but they soon ignored all that and when they noticed Harry's narrowed eyes all right, what's this about the Quarians setting the Geth free on the galaxy and the Krogans being sterilized? Kanu frowned yeah, we've been hearing a lot of stuff that's beginning to raise red flags for us, and well, Harry looks very aggravated, I really suggest all of you answer honestly to his questions. Everyone except the girls gulped, and Shepard shook his head I don't know much about all of this, but from what I heard. Those are very well known and dark moments in galaxy history. Ashley scratched her head yeah, we're humans Harry, so we don't know much about the history of other races. Kaiden nodded, Harry nodded at them and then turned his head toward Garrus, Taylai, and Rex, Garrus seemed ashamed, while Taylai was nervously fidgeting with her hands, and Rex sighed and shook his head. He then began to explain Harry. You have to understand, that as a race, Krogans are a rowdy bunch, we seek battle and war, thrive in it. We were a very primitive race but soon became technologically advanced. The Salarians eventually uplifted us into galactic society, and soon our battle prowess and high numbers were put to use, in the Ragni Wars. But we grew arrogant. Our rapidly expanding race became a threat and so we started the Krogan Rebellion. In the end, the Turians unleashed the Genophage on the Krogan. Rex looked down and seemed very angry right now, Harry discreetly gazed at Garrus only to see him looking down as well, this was obviously a sensitive subject for these two races. But Harry needed to know what was going on what is this genophage? Both Rex and Garrus tense up, then stayed silent for a few minutes and Harry was more than happy to let them take as long as they wanted, eventually, it was Garrus who answered Harry's question the genophage was a biological weapon, one that caused a genetic mutation in the Krogan. Harry raised an eyebrow at that, Taylai then spoke up apparently the genophage was not designed as a sterility plague, the combination of a low frequency of viable pregnancies with the Krogan proclivity to violence and indifference about focused breeding left the Krogan a dying race, and soon to be extinct. This is well known in the galaxy Harry, the Turian made it impossible for the Krogan to procreate. Rex shook his head it's just not that, the damn genophage did more than just make us shoot blanks. It destroys growing babies from developing right. Do you have any idea how many baby Krogan died still inside their mothers? Many were still born. And the damn genophage makes it impossible to use gene therapy to counterattack it, many of us had to endure the disposal of massive amounts of dead children. Rex growled in anger, Garrus shook his head not even daring to say anything, he might have not been personally involved, but the shame of what his people did was surely felt, especially because of what Rex just said. Meanwhile, Shepard, Ashley, and Kaiden looked down, all of that was just horrible, and they just did not know what to say, while Taylor just looked down lost for words as well. Kanu shook her head how could the Trians do something like that to another race? Valerie sighed fear Kanu, fear. They were afraid of the threat the Krogan posed, but still, to do that to another race? How sad. Le Fay looked sad, all those poor babies. Rex heard the girl's words and couldn't help but smile at their honesty. Harry suddenly spoke this reminds me of the Yuzu Maki clan. Everything turned to look at Harry, but flinched at the cold look in his eyes, he was absolutely pissed off, and Garrus was hoping he wouldn't just decide to go end the Trians, no one could stop him if he did. Though a part of him, wouldn't really blame him, Rex however was curious about what Harry had said Yuzu Maki clan? Harry nodded they were a ninja clan who had their own country in another world. They were also a rowdy bunch. But what made them dangerous was their skill in sealing techniques, their mass amount of energy reserves, and their vitality, they were a hard bunch to kill and even had a healing factor. Shepard frowned when he noticed something in particular about everything Harry just said was, as in past tense. Harry nodded the Yuzu Maki clan eventually grew in number and became a great threat to other nations, so much in fact, that three nations banded together and attacked them to near extinction. But the Yuzu Maki went down fighting, one clan, outnumbered by three massive armies, they almost killed them all, the Yuzu Maki had single-handedly crippled the military might of three nations by themselves. Everyone except the girls gaped, while Rex chuckled they sound like my kind of people. 
Harry grinned and nodded to Rex Yeah, I bet the few remaining Yuzumaki would love to hang out with you Rex, there's only a handful left. But they're extremely powerful, one, a brother in all but blood is actually a leader of his village and one of the most powerful individuals in that world, though his daughter, my niece is already leaving him in the dust. Rex grinned and was already liking these Yuzumaki quite a lot. Harry sighed and shook his head Rex, I'll be looking into all of this, but more than likely I will have to fix this problem myself. I promise you, soon, the Krogan will never have to see a dead child again, just give me some time to get all the information I need. Rex stared into Harry's eyes, and as they glowed brightly, Rex could see that Harry was entirely serious about this, so Rex nodded to Harry I look forward to that day Harry, thank you. Harry nodded and smiled at Rex. He then turned to Garrus you don't have to be scared, I'm not about to go on a genocidal walk path Garrus, I doubt any of the Tyrians responsible for this are even alive. I'm not about to judge the next generation of the sins of their predecessors, but I will fix this and if anything dares get in my way, I'll kill them all. Garrus raised his hands hey, I will help you, I can understand why they did it, but I don't condone it, I'll even help you kill anyone who tries to get in your way. After hearing Rex describe what was done to his people. Well I'm more than willing to fight for this. Rex grinned, he never blamed the new generation of Tyrians for the decision of their predecessors, and a part of him could see and understand why they chose to do what they did with the Genophage. He more than anyone, knew how dangerous a single Krogan is, dealing with thousands, it must have terrified the Tyrians. Harry nodded and sighed, he then began to scratch his head, everyone knew he was trying to calm himself and were more than happy to let him do so. Ashley however, leaned to her side and whispered to Kanuam. Harry seems to take this very personal, no? Why is that? Kanu's ear flicked from having Ashley whisper to her so close to her ear, but still answered her question Harry loves children, he himself never had a childhood and was abused by his so-called family. So when he sees children suffering, it really makes him angry, I half expected him to snap, but luckily for everyone, he seemed to be able to keep calm, so yay Tilda. Ashley sweat dropped. She certainly did not like that Harry was very close to snapping, a dragon god rampaging in the citadel was not something she ever wanted to see. Harry then took a big breath and exhaled, feeling calmer now, he turned his head towards Taylai alright Taylai, now you explain this whole thing about the Quarians having set loose the Geth. Taylai gulped a bit, Harry might look calm, but she can clearly see that he was still quite upset and in a bad mood uh, where to begin? Harry shrugged from the beginning is a good choice. Taylai sighed and nodded the geth were created by us Squarians as laborers and tools of war, but became sentient and began to question us, the Quarians about their existence. So they attempted to exterminate them, a war ensued and we lost. We were kicked out of our home planet and reduced to a race of nomads. Harry raised an eyebrow at all of this and he already had quite a few things running through his head, Garrus then spoke up the history of the Geth's creation and evolution serves as a warning to the rest of the galaxy of the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. Harry nodded did anyone ever try to speak with them, come to an accord? If they grew sentient, then that means they're capable of higher understanding. Taylai seemed rather shocked at what Harry was asking but she was able to compose herself enough to answer no. The Quarians at the time thought it was best to shut them down, especially when they started to ask questions only sentient beings would ask. Harry huffed so they panic and let fear dictate their actions, for a race of very talented and smart people, they were pretty stupid. Taylai sweat dripped and did not know how to respond, usually, she would argue or even defend the decisions her people had made, but with Harry? A dragon god and someone who could end her with a flick of his fingers? Well, she didn't dare say anything and just listened, Harry sighed and shook his head well, any being who's awakening to sentience would begin to question their existence. The Quarians should have dealt with this smartly and patiently, but instead chose violence. Taylai, any being, synthetic or not, deserves the right to live. I'll introduce you to some friends of mine later, but I will be looking for more information on this. Maybe I can come up with a solution, but know that the Quarians are at fault here, understand that and things will better, for now, I heard enough about all of this. Everyone watched as Harry snapped his fingers and time began to move once again, but they all knew Harry was in a bad mood now, it clearly showed with the way he just closed his eyes and stayed silent. It made everyone worried, but Kanu smiled and shook her head it's alright guys. Harry is just processing everything he just learned, it is quite a lot to digest. Everyone nodded, they could understand and decided to give Harry some space, though they did have quite a bit to think about too. What Harry had said also made a lot of sense and meant a lot to both Taylor and Rex. Dash.
A few moments later the elevator arrived at where they were going, so everyone got off the elevator and began to walk into the hall right outside. To their surprise they found both Udina and Anderson close by. Udina immediately turned his head towards Shepard when he noticed him and his group arrive I got big news for you Shepard, Captain Anderson is stepping down as the commanding officer of the Normandy, the ship is yours now. Shepard turned his head towards Anderson and looked at him in surprise, Anderson nodded she's quick and quiet, and you know the crew, perfect ship for a spectre, treat her well, commander. But Shepard didn't like the way everything was happening, he had some suspicions, so he decided to ask I want the truth, why are you stepping down, sir? Anderson nodded to Shepard and answered his question you needed your own ship, a spectre can't answer to anyone but the council, and it's time for me to step down. Shepard wasn't buying it though come clean with me captain, you owe me that much. Anderson sighed I was in your shoes twenty years ago, Shepard, they were considering me for the spectres. Valerie sighed so Harkin was telling the truth. Everyone nodded, while Anderson scoffed. He was certainly upset that Harkin spilled the beans, Shepard nodded why didn't you ever say anything? Anderson frowned what was I supposed to say, I could have been a spectre but blew it. I failed, commander, it's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story, for now, all you need to know is that, I was sent on a mission with Sarin, and he made sure the council rejected me. Anderson shook his head I had my shot, it came and went, now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. Shepard nodded to Anderson Saren's not going to get away this time. Anderson nodded Saren's gone, don't even try to find him, but we know that he's after the conduit, he's got his geth scouring the traverse looking for clues. Udina then spoke up we had report reports of geth in the froze system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Neveria. Anderson nodded and turned his head towards Shepard find out what Saren was after on Froze and Neveria, maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. Shepard frowned, it seems like Udina and Anderson were forgetting something important the Reapers are the real threat. Udina was about to speak, but Harry cut him off well keep an eye on everything that has to do with the Reapers, I'm sure we'll find more information as we look for the conduit. It is a big priority, but one thing at a time Shepard, we'll do our best with what we have right now. Shepard nodded, Anderson then spoke up the conduit is the key to bringing them back, stop Saren from getting the conduit and we stop the Reapers from returning. Shepard agreed and slightly nodded to Anderson anything else before I get to work? Udina nodded we have one more lead, Matriarch Benizia, the other voice on that recording? She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved but it might be a good idea to try and find her, see, what she knows, her name is Liara, Dr. Liara Tsuni. We have reports that she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau cluster. Shepard crossed his arms and began to think about what they should do first, after a few seconds he came to a decision sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau cluster. Anderson smiled it's your decision, commander, you're a spectre now, you don't answer to us. Udina sighed but your actions still reflect in humanity as a whole, you make a mess and I get stuck cleaning up. Shepard raised an eyebrow but Harry spoke up that's your job, not Shepard's, might as well earn your paycheck Udina. Udina sweat dripped and wondered why Harry seemed extra annoyed, but decided to just nod and not provoke Harry any further. Shepard wanted to chuckle and how subdued Udina was in front of Harry, but decided to hold it in. Udina shook his head and then said I have a meeting to get to, Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Shepard sighed and turned to speak with Anderson how are you holding up? Anderson looked down honestly. This isn't how I picture my career coming to an end, pushing papers really isn't my thing, but you're the one who can stop Sarin, I believe in you Shepard, if that means I have to step aside, so be it. Shepard smiled at Anderson, he decided to ask more about his and Sarin's past tell me what happened with you and Sarin twenty years ago. Anderson sighed but nodded it's close to twenty years ago now, Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel, like Udina, she wanted to get humans into the Spectres, and she chose me. The council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nilus to keep tabs on you. Shepard nodded why didn't you say anything? Anderson shook his head and frowned it's not something I'm proud of, I had a chance to become the first human spectre and I failed, Saren made sure of that. Harry scratched his head well, might as well tell us what happened Anderson, this seems important after all. Anderson nodded we had intel, on a rogue scientist being founded by Batarian's interest. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. 
Alliance Intel had done all the work but the council wanted a Spectre involved, so we compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple, sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. Shepard and the others immediately felt Aber coming, Shepard sighed I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Anderson nodded Saren and I split up to cover more ground, then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off enemy guards. Lefe hummed that didn't seem necessary, I mean, don't get me wrong, we, of the Potter household tend to go overkill most of the time, but all of you have seen that we are capable of finesse. Shepard nodded in agreement Le Fay is right, all of this sounds like overkill. Anderson agreed with both Le Fay and Shepard, he nodded to them to let them know so and then went on the explosion tore the refinery to shreds, the whole place was on fire, black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere, nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the worker and their families nearby, between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500, mostly civilians. Everyone's eyes widen in shock, even Harry and Rex were hit by the number of deaths, Anderson just continued on Saren didn't care, the target was eliminated, mission accomplished and I ended up taking the blame, that ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Harry growled son of a bitch. I'm going to rip more than arm off Saren, when we see him, he's a complete and total asshole. Everyone nodded in agreement to Harry's words, Saren was not a good person it seems, and before all this about Geth and Reapers even began he was already a bastard too. Shepard huffed Saren caused the explosion, how'd he pin the blame on you? Anderson crossed his arms and began to explain in his reports, Saren accused me of blowing his cover, he said it was my fault the guards were ready for us, and he claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Anderson shook his head in annoyance Saren's report was all the proof the council needed to kill my chances of becoming a spectre. Shepard closed his eyes for a few seconds, the council was really filled with idiots and now more than ever he was very happy about how Harry put them in their place, Shepard opened his eyes and then said don't blame yourself, Captain. Anderson smiled at Shepard I don't, I blame Sarin, I think he wanted things to go bad, he was looking for an excuse to blow the refinery. Maybe he just liked the violence, maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the spectres, if so he pulled it off. Kanu's ears flicked in annoyance while her tails wagged as well I wouldn't be surprised if that was his goal, he was very anti-human when he spoke to the council, it's obvious he hates humans. Both Taylor and Ashley stared at Kanu's tails and ears and seemed to be struggling to not just grab hold of a tail and hugged it, Harry saw that and chuckled in amusement. Shepard nodded in agreement to Kanu's words then we have to stop Saren and make him pay for what he's done. Anderson nodded yes, let's do our best commander. Shepard smiled at Anderson, he then decided to ask for more information about the three places they were going to investigate, starting with the Artemis Tau Cluster What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Anderson shook his head not much, I've never been there myself, a handful of systems with a few small uncharted worlds, but not real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tsuni out there, my advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. Valerie hummed a bit and then said looks like we're doing this the old-fashioned way, looking around, though I'm excited about going to other planets. Everyone smiled at Valerie, Shepard then went on with his questions any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Feroz? Anderson nodded the entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city, mostly ruins now, but some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind, we lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. Lefay took her witch's hat off and scratched her head protheans again. Why do you get a feeling that I will be learning more about them as we go on? They seem to be involved in anything that has to do with Saren. That comment made everyone think about all of this more closely. Whatever Saren was looking for, had to do with the protheans, so they had to agree with what Lefay just said. It seemed like they'll be learning more about the protheans soon. Shepard then continued on with his questions and what can you tell me about Neveria? Anderson frowned but still answered the question Neveria's trouble, always has been, the whole planet is basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back out there Shepard, Spectres are about the only form of Citadel authority Neveria respects, but they aren't popular. Rex grinned sounds like my kind of place. Harry nodded and grinned as well sure does, we'll just make ourselves at home. 
Ashley Swest dripped all right, calm down you thugs, we're the good guys remember? But Harry and Rex just darkly chuckled causing everyone to nervously stared at them, the girls, however, just smiled. Shepard sighed and shook his head we should go, thank you for the information captain. Anderson nodded you know where to find me if you need anything. The group smiled and said their goodbyes to Anderson and then walked past him towards the Spectre Requisitions Officer Room. Dash. It didn't take long for everyone to speak to the SRO and get a few things they thought would come in handy, after that, Shepard decided that it was time to get to work so the group then headed back to the Normandy. For speed convenience, Harry opened a dark corridor and everyone, now used to it, walked right into it. They ended up right outside where the ship was docked and Shepard immediately walked towards the Normandy. The Normandy, of course, scanned everyone but soon enough the doors to the ship opened and everyone walked inside. Dash. The next few hours were spent making announcements to the crew, introducing new squad members, and organizing their rooms and work areas. Luckily for Shepard and the crew, Harry only needed one room. This room was expanded and modified by him to have everything the girls and him will need, he even created a hot springs in his room which shocked everyone in the Normandy. Besides that, Shepard also gave Harry a small room by the engine core, for his use, Harry and Love they then got to work setting it up with everything they will need to create, research, and investigate. Valerie will be in charge of researching firearms, Love is in charge of researching technology while Kanu will be researching all the different races of this world. Harry will then take care of creating and improving gear, with the information the girls will collect, he was also going to get involved the most in Shepard's missions, having a dragon god to help was a very welcome addition to Shepard and the squad. The girls will help as well, but most of the time they will be busy with other stuff, however, they agreed to have at least one girl with Harry and the squad at times. They were a big group after all, and most of the time, they needed the space or to move fast, having a big group will get in the way of that, so they decide to do things like this. After all of this was set up and ready, Shepard and everyone else were ready to relax and rest for a bit. Meanwhile Shepard and Harry went to speak with Joker to see how he was doing. Dash. Joker immediately knew Shepard and Harry came to see him when he heard them step into his pilot cabin, he then began to speak I heard what happened to Captain Anderson, who survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back commander, things go bad on this mission, and you're next on their chopping block. Harry grinned I wish they tried anything to Shepard, it would give me an excuse to deal with the council, can't say they're in my good books at the moment. Joker raised an eyebrow what? Shepard chuckled and then proceeded to explain to Joker, about Harry and the girls plus what Harry did to help him when he was in front of the council. Joker gaped so much, that he was a bit worried he might break his jaw, but then began to laugh a bit well damn. A dragon god huh? Can't say I heard about that kind of dragon before and I used to read a lot of fantasy book when I was a kid. Joker then lightly shrugged not a lot to do, anyways so I got into reading about magic, dragons, and what not, then I played a lot, and I mean a lot of video games as well. Shepard nodded, even he, as a kid, had read a book or played a video game, dragons are and had always been a very popular trope in this sort of media. Harry grinned at Joker well dragon gods are deities, conceptual beings, and very powerful, I'm actually at a universe destroyer level, which means one snap of my fingers and boom. Everything ceases to exist. Joker sweat dripped not going to lie, that's both cool and terrifying. Harry grinned at Joker and then all three of the shared a laugh, things were certainly never boring in the Normandy. Chapter 142, Chapter 142 After sharing a laugh together, Joker, Shepard, and Harry calmed down but still smiled, Shepard suddenly sighed and looked up still, Captain Anderson should be the one in charge, it's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Joker nodded yeah. It sounds like the captain got screwed, but it's not like you could have stopped it, nobody is blaming you. Everyone in this ship is behind you, commander, 100%, intercom is open, if you've got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Shepard nodded and immediately used the intercom to speak with the Normandy's crew listen up Normandy, this is your commander speaking, we have our orders, find Saren before he finds the conduit, and I refuse to let anything get in the way of that mission. We all know what happened on Eden Prime, we saw the destruction, we saw the bodies, we saw what Saren did, and I plan to make him pay. For too long our species has stood apart from others, now it's time to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Wherever Saren goes, we'll follow, wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there, we will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. 
humanity needs to do this, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space, Saren must be stopped and I promise you all. We will stop him. Joker nodded well said Commander, Captain would be proud. Harry grinned at Shepard for sure, brought a tear to my eyes. Shepard just lightly laughed at Harry and shook his head in amusement, he then turned his head towards Joker the Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance, we can't fail. Shepard walked away from the Joker, while he smiled, and then said yes sir. Harry smiled and nodded, he rather did like that speech from Shepard, in fact, he felt a little motivated to get to work, so with a nod to Joker and a small wave, he teleported to his workshop in the Normandy. Dash. Some time after, Shepard, well rested after taking a break in his cabin, decided to go check on Harry and see how he was holding up or if he needs anything, so he went to the little room he gave him by the engine room. Though he stopped in his track when he saw a wooden door, he did not see before and stared at it for a few seconds, but in the end, he chalked it up to Harry's shenanigans and decided to check it out. He walked up to the wooded door and reached for the doorknob and quickly opened the door, only to gape when an enormous wide room filled with actual nature inside appeared before his sight what there. Shepard closed the door, and then stared at it for a few seconds in surprise, he then looked around the sides of the door and tried to make sense of how such an enormous room filled with actual trees, grass, and all sorts of plants could actually be behind the door. However before he could ponder any longer, a voice called out to him from behind Shepard, the commander turned round and saw Lafay, standing behind him and staring at him in confusion What are you doing standing in front of Harry's workshop like that, commander? Shepard scratched his head This is his workshop? Lafay, there's a whole enormous forest behind that door. Lafay smiled and nodded I see. Well Harry works best with nature, he's a sage after all, but the reason he created an entire environment, is because he tends to test out whatever he makes and train with it a bit so he needs the space, plus there's a time dilation in there, I'm sure he's already spent a few days in there working on all kinds of projects for you, especially because we're already on the way to find Liara Tsuni. Shepard nodded yeah, okay, I understand that but how? We're in a ship after all. Le Fay giggled and walked up to the wooden door Harry must have created a small pocket dimension and anchored to the door, so the forest isn't exactly inside the ship, only the door is. It takes quite a bit of specialized space and time manipulation, to be able to do something like this though, but nothing Harry can't do. Shepard nodded I see, just when I think Harry can't surprise me anymore, he does something like this. Le Fay opened the door and both she and Shepard stepped inside, she then smiled at Shepard it's best you just accept and try to digest everything Harry does, trust me, this is nothing compared with what he can really do. Shepard nodded while he looked around the forest behind the wooden door, he then followed Le Fay as she walked towards a path that led deeper inside. It took about ten minutes, but eventually, both Le Fay and Shepard arrived at a clearing, and inside of it, stood a small building, Le Fay walked towards it and Shepard watched as the door opened for her. He walked up towards the door and was thankful it stayed open for him, so he stepped inside, he gaped when he looked around and found a fully equipped lab and workshop. He then noticed Harry sitting in front of a desk and carving something into a small metal plate, Le Fay walked up to him and hugged him from behind, Harry smiled and turned his head towards Le Fay and gave her a kiss. Harry then noticed Shepard and immediately smiled at him hey Shepard, had a good rest? Shepard nodded and walked up to Harry yes actually, we're already on our way to find Dr Tsuni, so I decided to come check up on you, but I see that you made yourself at home. Harry smiled and nodded, he then quickly finished carving on the small metal plate the ship engines are too loud, especially for those of us sensitive to sounds, so I decided to make a place anyone can come into and relax, plus it's a great place to train and test whatever I or the girls make. Harry then grabbed the metal plate and began to install it into a pistol, after he finished, he showed the pistol to Shepard like this pistol. Shepard grabbed the pistol and began to hold it like he was getting ready to shoot, he checked the sights and even the weight and feels like any other pistol, but it's very well made. Harry nodded and stood up, while Le Fay began to fiddle with her omnitool well, that's because, it's a normal pistol, but I heavily modified it. Shepard raised an eyebrow you modified it? Huh? Harry smiled wheel, Valerie took a few of the weapons she collected apart, and we were able to figure out how some of the weapons were made and how they function that way. But we also saw some flaws in the designs, for example, how the weapons tend to overheat. How the shots seem heavy and somewhat slower than regular lead bullets and the recoil has quite the kick as well. Shepard nodded, everything Harry just pointed out, were common issues with modern technology, though research and development were always making improvements, they were kind of slow on coming out, 
and even then humans are usually the last to get such upgrades. Harry then walked up to Shepard and pointed at the pistol so, using what we know about magic guns and what we learned about the firearms of this universe, Valeria and I made some upgrades. I built a whole new pistol from scratch, and added a few runes and enchantments to improve the pistol's performance, by quite a wide margin. Shepard looked at the pistol, it certainly looked like any regular firearm available to anyone in the Alliance military, but it had been made from scratch by Harry and that was amazing to think about. Meanwhile, Harry walked away from Shepard while continuing to explain I resolved the overheating problem by adding cooling enchantments on every piece of the pistol, along with stabilizing runes on the muscle and stock of the pistol. That will absorb most of the kick and reduce recoil by 50%. As for the rate of fire, I added acceleration enchantments around the barrel of the pistol, this will increase the speed of the shots by at least twice the speed. Harry walked up to a table and then clicked on something on top of it Friday, give me a hard light 3D simulation of the pistol, with all current upgrades. A voice suddenly spoke up of course sir. Shepard then saw some sort of hologram of himself shooting the pistol, he gaped as he saw clear improvements in the rate of fire, recoil, and number of shots this is incredible. This pistol puts all other current weapons available to shame. Harry nodded yup though it's still a prototype, we need to see how resistant the materials are and if the runes and enchantments can continue to maintain their structure while in prolonged use. I suspect that I will need to use other materials in the final product, stronger and more magical conductive, but for now, this should be a good start. So I want you to use it in the upcoming mission, so we can get some data and see what the next step we should make. Shepard nodded of course, I would gladly help, if this is the quality of the upgrades you're making, then these would be very useful to us. Harry grinned ah Shepard, this is nothing compared with what I'll be making later, just you wait, when the girls and I are done investigating and researching everything we need, you'll be getting some real legendary rank gear. Shepard nodded and he 100% believed Harry, after all, what upgrades he did just now, were already amazing enough as it is, a part of him was both excited and afraid to see the end products. Soon after, Harry, Shepard, and Le Fay, sat around a table and drank some tea, as they relaxed a bit, Shepard suddenly hummed and then said how did you make that pistol in one hour Harry? Le Fay smiled remember Shepard? I told you that this place, has a time dilation, for Harry, it's been a few days, rather than the hour that you rested with. Harry sipped his tea up, it's been around 10 days for me in here, though I can change the time dilation setting. I can make it match the time outside, or even go for one year and here equals one hour outside, though I didn't feel it was necessary right now. Shepard nodded incredible, this room was already amazing as it is, but with the time dilation, it will be very useful as well. Harry nodded so, what's up? You came to check on me? Shepard blinked but then remember, why he was coming to see Harry before he got distracted with everything he just learned yeah, I wanted to see how you and the girls are settling in, and if you need anything. Besides this being a whole new universe to you guys, you aren't military either, this sort of environment might be too stiff for some of you guys. Harry nodded well, I actually have experience in a military environment, I was even an ambu captain, in one of the worlds I used to live in. The girls have their own guild and experiences with military-like groups, so this environment isn't anything new to us, so we're fine. Harry smiled right now we don't need anything per se, we're still in the process of investigating and researching things. I'm sure we'll be able to find what we need on our own as well, but thank you for asking. Shepard nodded what sort of things are you guys investigating and researching right now? Le Fay was the one who answered Shepard's question right now, we're looking into firearms, technology, and all sorts of advances that could prove useful for us or that we can improve on. We're also looking into minerals, fuels, and even materials that could prove useful to us. There are actually a few exotic minerals and materials that we're very curious about already. We're also looking into alien species and wildlife, back in Neo Kyoto, in our world, we have a place called the Natural Dungeon. This dungeon is a self-evolving place where everyone in the Yokai faction and our allies can go in and get stronger. Monsters, creatures, and all sorts of beings constantly spawn in the dungeon, and drop all sorts of things, from money, to even precious metals and gems, among other things. But the Natural Dungeon has one peculiar quirk. Whatever Harry or the Potter household, fights and kills, begins to spawn in the dungeon, which also includes whatever useful resources we find. Shepard nodded in understanding that actually sounds pretty interesting, but with what you're telling me, then alien species and materials of this universe will begin to spawn in the natural dungeon right? 
Harry nodded that's right, which means, that we will need all the information we can get, so we can spread it around near Kyoto, that way no one will be caught by surprise by a Krogan charging at them, or a Turian sniping them with weaponry of this universe. Shepard hummed for a bit to be honest, all of this sounds like a video game to me, but it's pretty amazing that a place like the Natural Dungeon exists, the place sounds like the greatest training facility ever. Harry grinned at the irony in Shepard's words, while Le Fay giggled, Shepard didn't know what he had said that got such humor out of his friends but decided to shrug it off, for now, he was happy his new friends were okay, and getting everything they needed. Dash. After relaxing a bit, Shepard decided to go make some rounds and speak with his crew in the Normandy, Harry stretched and decided to go with him so he could get to know his new friends a little better. Le Fay decided to stay in Harry's lab, she had some information to go through right now, so with that decided, both Harry and Shepard left the lab, and then the forest inside the pocket dimension that was created by Harry. Afterward, they came out of the door leading to Harry's pocket dimension and into the Normandy, Shepard then lead Harry to their first stop, the mess hall. Dash. Once there, they both went to speak with Kaiden, since they hadn't had a chance to speak with him yet, they found him checking out some sort of panel, but he didn't seem too busy. So both Harry and Shepard approached him, Kaiden noticed them and turned his head towards them, he smiled and nodded anything you guys need? Shepard lightly smiled and nodded just trying to get a sense of where the crew's had thoughts. Kaiden hummed for a few seconds but then began to speak his thoughts well, the last couple of hours have been an eye-opener, that's for sure. One thing is to know the galaxy is big, but another is, to find out that the multiverse is real and even bigger than we could have imagined, I mean, vampires? Yokai? Magic? and dragons? Not only that, the fact that they're so powerful and can do all sorts of crazy things, is a little unnerving. Don't get me wrong though, I know Harry and the girls are good people, but makes you think about, what sort of crazy and bad people are out there, you know. Shepard nodded in agreement. It was certainly scary to think about, someone evil with the same level of power as Harry or the girls have, to suddenly appear in their universe. Harry smiled at Kaiden there's certainly, a bunch of very evil and horrible people in the universe, but luckily for you, they don't have the power to cross to another universe. There are a lot of rules and barriers, that prevent just anyone from being able to freely cross between universes like that, even someone that has the same level of power as me, don't have the leave to cross over. This power of mine was really limited at first and it was only possible because death herself powers that ability. Now that I'm a dragon god and have conceptual powers of my own, the ability evolved and became stronger, though it is still random though. Kaiden nodded I see, that does make me feel a bit better, at least I don't have to worry about another dragon god showing up and proceeding to destroy everything. Shepard nodded yeah, but still, random huh? I guess we were lucky that you ended up in Eden Prime then. Harry smiled and ah, I'm sure you and everyone else would be fine on your own, all I did, is make everything a bit easier for you guys. I'm sure you would have been able to make this happen eventually, humans are a tenacious race and one that shouldn't be underestimated after all. Both Kaiden and Shepard smiled and nodded in agreement to Harry's words, Shepard then turned his head towards Kaiden got to go and check on the others, but we'll speak more soon. Kaiden nodded of course commander. With that said, both Shepard and Harry walked away from Kaiden, while heading to meet with the next crew member. They headed back to the lower floor, and they both looked around for a bit, they saw Garrus speaking with the requisitions officer and Ashley by the workbench, doing maintenance on the firearms. Since Garrus seemed busy right now, they decided to go talk to Ashley, she heard them approaching her and immediately stopped what she was doing and greet them commander, Harry. Shepard smiled at Ashley hey Ashley, how are you feeling with everything going on? Ashley sighed a little overwhelmed, if I'm being honest, but can't say that it hasn't been interesting, I mean, I got to see a real life dragon, scaring the daylight out the council. That was fun Tilda. Harry chuckled well, they were really getting on my nerves. I've met some real arrogant and stubborn people, but those guys were something else. Shepard nodded yeah, I'm just glad you were there, who knows how that council meeting would have ended without your help. Ashley nodded for real, I have the impression that the council was a little too happy to deny everything against Saren. Harry crossed his arms and nodded in agreement to Ashley's assumptions they were in denial, Saren was their best agent, and him being a traitor doesn't look good on them. So they were in denial and refused to see the evidence for what it was, in the end, they were just trying to save face. Ashley shook her head and sighed politics, I really can't stand them. Harry and Shepard had to agree with Ashley, after all, there was no doubt in their mind that the council was going to be a big pain in their asses if it wasn't because Harry intervened that is. 
Shepard sighed well I'm glad everything worked out in the end. We'll leave you to your duties Ashley, but we'll speak more later. Ashley nodded of course Commander, Harry. Both Harry and Shepard walked away from Ashley while waving a bit. Suddenly they saw Rex and Valerie walking over to the weapons locker while talking about something. Curious about what, Rex and Valerie were talking about. Both Harry and Shepard decided to approach them. Rex immediately turned around to face them when they got close. The Krogan grinned and nodded to Shepard. Nice ship you've got, Shepard, what can I do for you? Shepard smiled at Rex. What are you both up to? Rex grinned and then pointed at Valerie with his head little lady here. Wanted to know more of Krogan branded weaponry, so I decided to show off my shotgun, pretty fun I'd say. Valerie giggled Krogan weaponry packs a punch, and most of it is modified so only someone strong and heavy as a Krogan could use them. Though I also heard that they do make weaponry modified for human use, just without that extra oomph. Still, it's useful to check them out, since Harry and I might be able to come up with some upgrades thanks to their design. Shepard smiled at Valerie, he could see that she was very interested in firearms. Rex nodded Val here, seems more Krogan than whatever the hell a vampire is, just as bloodthirsty too. Harry chuckled that's Valerie for you, sweet to her friends and a menace to her enemies, though yeah, she tends to get a bit bloodthirsty when she fights. Valerie blushed and seemed a bit sheepish I'm not that bad, I am? Shepard raised an eyebrow at her Valerie, you came out of Cora's den, drenched in blood and smiling widely. Valerie blushed again, which made Harry and Rex chuckle in amusement, Valerie pouted at them, but that just made them laugh even more. Shepard smiled, he then decided to ask Rex about what he heard about Krogan in the elevator Rex, are your people really dying? Rex huffed but nodded we're sure not getting any stronger, we're too spread out and none of us are interested in staying in our system. Harry hummed isn't that normal, from what I have seen, every species in this universe are spread out and seem to be prospering. Rex nodded but they go to colonize new worlds, we're not settlers, we're warriors, we want to fight, so we leave, hire ourselves out, and most of us never go back. Harry crossed his arms as he thought about, what Rex just told him, various ideas were already going through his head, and both Valerie and he shared a look. Valerie nodded and smiled at him, she knew what sort of ideas, Harry was thinking about right now, Harry then turned his head back to Rex and smiled I have a few ideas on how to help your people Rex, but let me think about some of them more thoroughly, well talk about it later cool? Rex smiled and nodded sounds, good, you already want to help with the genophage, so I'm more than willing to hear any ideas, besides you're a god. I'm sure you can pull a miracle out of your ass or something. Harry chuckled I certainly have been known to procure a miracle out of my ass on occasion. Everyone shared a laugh for a few moments, soon after Shepard became curious about something and decided to ask Rex about it you explained about the genophage, but to be honest, I don't know much about myself, can you tell more about it? Rex closed his eyes for a few seconds but nodded to Shepard the Salarians know all about it, they made it, all I know is that it makes breeding nearly impossible, thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far, every Krogan is infected, and no one is rushing to find a cure. Well except Harry. He seems to be the only one who cares about it, must admit, I'm surprised, in a good way that is. Harry smiled I draw the line on children and babies, the fact that this genophage seems to exclusively target those, well, I take that very personally. Valerie nodded yeah, a good way to get Harry to kill you and destroy your soul, is to mess with children. Rex raised an eyebrow you can destroy your enemy's soul? Harry grinned yup, in all kinds of very painful ways. Rex chuckled neat. Now where do I go to send prayers to you Harry, you seem like the kind of god a Krogan needs to follow. Valerie smiled Harry has a big temple back in our world, full of priestesses and everything. Though he's more of a mellow deity, so you don't need to pray to him to gain his favor. But if you really want to, just pray while saying his name and he'll hear it. Harry huffed, but the small smile on his face showed that he wasn't really annoyed or anything. Rex and Shepard nodded, and Rex even grinned and said that's good to know. Shepard smiled I'll make sure the crew knows, so we can pray to Harry before any meal and before we go to sleep. Harry rolled his eyes ha, ha, very funny. Everyone once again shared a laugh, this time, however, at Harry's expense, but Harry just took it in good fun and also laughed. After that, both Harry and Shepard decided to get going, so they left Rex and Valerie to go back to their weaponry hobby and continued their rounds. Dash. Seeing that Garrus was still busy, they decided to go look for Taylor. thanks to Harry, they were able to find her by the field integrity monitor, it seems that Kanu was with her as well, so both the commander and dragon god went to see them. 
they found both girls talking to each other in a corner of the room. But Kanu must have sensed them because she immediately turned her head toward them and waved. This of course made Taylai notice them as well, so she also turned her head toward them. Both Shepard and Harry walked up to the girls and as soon as they were in front of them, Taylai immediately began to talk with Shepard your ship's amazing Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before, I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Shepard smiled and nodded the Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. Harry hummed so this ship is a prototype, looks like it's a very successful one though. Kanu nodded I did some scans and looked at some of the schematics Captain Anderson was kind enough to send them to me when I asked, this is some very advanced stuff. Though I'm sure you and the boys would be able to make something better, especially with Tony and Asgardian's technology we have access to, not to mention what sort of thing the guilds would be able to make to help. Harry nodded that's true, still, this ship shows how far the humans of this universe have come, it's very impressive on its own. Taylai nodded and then turned her head towards Shepard a month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla, now I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along, traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. Shepard smiled at Taylai I had no idea you found ship tech so interesting. Taylai nodded it comes with being Aquarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people, ships are our most valuable resources. But we don't have anything like this, we make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment, we just try to keep them running for as long as we can, some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Harry raised an eyebrow wasn't that about 300 years ago? Wow, that's a lot of time for a ship. Taylai fidgeted with her hands a bit but began to explain they're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted, they aren't pretty, but they work, mostly. We try to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla, grow our own food, mine and process our own fuel, but some things we can't make on our own, a patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have, that's why our pilgrimages are so important. Kanu smiled Aquarians sound like such handy people. Taylai seemed to be happy about Kanu's opinion on Aquarians, or at least that's what Harry got from her posture and mannerisms. Taylai nodded to Kanu and continued to talk our lives aren't easy, resources are scarce and we are constantly on the move, everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival, the bonds among my people are strong, unfortunately, we have to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What Taylai just said, intrigued Harry, Shepard, and Kanu, but it was the commander who decided to ask more about it liberties. Like what? Taylai wasted no time to elaborate well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child, if our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to the breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few, if our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed and in extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births, though the conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. Harry hummed I see, it's kinda sad about having only one child, I myself have quite a lot actually, and I can't imagine my life without them all. Shepard turned his head towards Harry, and raised an eyebrow I kinda feel bad for your girlfriends now. Kanu blushed and shook her head hey. They're all adopted, but we love them all very much though we ourselves want to wait before we have children of our own. Most of us have responsibilities and duties within Neo Kyoto and the Yokai faction, some of us are busy with all sorts of projects and research that we don't want to postpone, so we are waiting a bit before we have children of our own. Though Harry was still able to make us mothers nonetheless Kanu giggled in amusement. Shepard raised an eyebrow at Harry now I'm curious as to how Harry did that. Taylai nodded yeah, just how many children did you adopt and why? Harry hummed well. Let's see. Hope was actually created between me, Jean, and Irshkigal or rather we helped in the creation of rebirth for a conceptual being, she's the closest to a blood daughter as you can get, without actually giving birth. Eric sweet Eric. I rescued her when she was being kept locked away, and experimented on since she was a baby. She was had a very horrible first few years of her life, but since I adopted her into the family, she has grown into a cheerful and strong little girl. I also fell in love with a mother, who had a horrible and abusive husband, the man was such a bastard, that she broke. 
she made a few mistakes and ended up being locked away in a psychiatric ward. When we got together I ended up adopting her children, though all of them are a grown up, I tend to spend time with them and even spoiled them, like any of my children. Kanu giggled it's funny to watch Tuyu and Natsuo get sheepish whenever Harry spends time with them, though most of the time, they just hang out or drink together. Fu Ayumi though, she really enjoys being spoiled by Harry, she's a bit of a daddy's girl with him, though I'm not surprised, their biological father, really was a horrible person. All three of them didn't have a good childhood, nor did they have, a good male role model growing up, but Harry treating them like friends and his children has helped them a lot. Both Shepard and Taylor turned their head towards Harry and smiled at him, Harry just smiled back and went back to explaining then there's Sherry. My niece Morgan and Hope, adopted her as their sister, so I adopted her into the Potter family, she also had a tough childhood and had a pair of not very supportive parents. Then we have numerous amounts of demigods I adopted into the family, some of their godly parents, really neglected them and practically abandoned them to their luck, so I adopted them all. Shepard shook his head you don't do things by half. Do you, Harry? Taylor nodded in agreement but, this shows the kind of guy you are, to think you would take care of and love so many children, children who had bad childhoods and you gave them the care and love they need. Harry smiled and felt a bit embarrassed, but he was also happy to think, about his children, he really did love them all. Chapter 143, Chapter 143 After a bit, Harry decided to ask more about the Quarians, starting with asking more details about this conclave tale I mentioned the conclave? I take it that's your government no? Taylor tilted her head a bit and answered Harry's question the conclave is our civilian branch of government, each ship can elect a representative to serve on the conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say, it's a tradition that dates back to the early days when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. Harry nodded it's pretty impressive how the Quarians created their own government, while living on a ship, live and adapt huh? Can you hum so the Quarians have a democratic government, how interesting. Taylor nodded in practice, the conclave and the representative council for each ship tend to set rules that govern our daily lives, but in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board, these five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty, and they can only do this once, after that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that's served us well, in nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Harry closed his eyes your people are well organized and seem to be thriving despite the difficulties you face daily, it's quite inspiring. Taylor seemed rather embarrassed by the praise, or at least that's the image they got, with the way she began to fidget, Kanu suddenly spoke up oh I wanted to ask you more about the Geth Taylor, since the Quarians created them, you must know a lot about them, and since we're fighting them, any sort of information would be of great help. Both Shepard and Harry nodded in agreement. Taylor nodded as well and immediately began to speak well I doubt I can tell you anything that you can't find in any database, it's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins, what they were when he created them, and how they turned on us. Shepard, Canoe, and Harry stayed silent for a little bit while digesting what Taylor just told them, but in the end, Harry decided that he needed to know more about the Geth and the Quarians do you mind telling us about it? Taylor seemed to sigh but nodded the Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force, initially, their intelligence was as limited as any AI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. Shepard suddenly cut in wait, I thought AI research is illegal, how come the council didn't step in and stopped you? Taylor shook her head this wasn't true AI research, we may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them, or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network, a million geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. Harry huffed well shit, no wonder the geth awakened to true sentient they were all sharing a network, all that information experiences and observations awoke that in them. Kano nodded so this was the cause, the Geth shared brain power. Taylor looked down and nodded many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth, basically, 
The more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. Shepard raised an eyebrow and seemed intrigued so there's some sort of group consciousness? Taylor quickly shook her head no, nothing like that, they cannot share sensory data or information, their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity, the neural network only operates on a process-based level, it's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Shepard scrunched up his eyebrows in confusion that doesn't make any sense. Taylor nodded I'm probably oversimplifying, the Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations, all you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated and more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Squarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence, am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Harry frowned while Kanu tilted her head in curiosity but why? What did you people do? Taylor shook her head it was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation, we knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth, the Geth responded to this order violently. Shepard raised an eyebrow at Taylor you didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? Taylor looked a bit defensive but still calmly continued to explain the hope was that most of the Geth would still be a little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance, but they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody, millions upon millions of Guarians died at their hands, and in the end, we were forced to flee our home world. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the veil, now we drift through space, exiles searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Harry Hum got to say Taylor, but the Guarian caused their own demise, sure it's sad that millions of Guarians died, and that you were kicked off your planet. But war has two sides to it, the Geth were the victors, so to the Guarians, they're the bad guys, but in the end, all of this was caused because Guarians were playing with things they shouldn't. Skirting the law and not doing anything illegal, doesn't absolve you of the fact that your people were doing something they shouldn't have, but then, when the consequences of what you did hit your people in their faces. They panicked, they let fear dictate their actions and instead of talking and explaining things to the Geth, you chose to try and destroy them. The Geth were probably confused and scared, you know? They were feeling emotions that they shouldn't have, thinking things they didn't understand, and the people that they trusted the most, their creators, didn't help them, instead, they tried to kill them. Any being would be pissed and feeling very betrayed, honestly? I don't blame them for hating organic life, I would too. Sure, we aren't going to let them cause more deaths, and I'm definitely not picking on you and the Guarians, but you all have to understand the simple fact, that you fucked up. Taylor looked down, and stayed silent, she really couldn't argue with Harry's point of view, and everything he said, opened a whole lot of different perspectives here. Kanu hummed for a little bit and then said then again, I don't think the Geth, really hate the Quarians. I mean, if that was the case, they would have moved to kill them all off. But that didn't happen, perhaps they just feel betrayed and hurt? Or maybe they felt sorry for the Quarians? I don't know, but I think there's more to all of this than we know. The four of them, stayed silent as they thought about all of this, Taylor shook her head and sighed I must admit, nothing like having a dragon god tell you about things from an outside perspective, to make you really think. Harry smiled and then gave Taylor a head pat, which made the Guarian sheepishly fidget with her fingers, Harry then said I might not look like it, but I'm very old Taylor, and that means I've seen a lot. I'm just trying to open your mind to all the possibilities, help you understand and hopefully not make the same mistakes the Quarian of 300 years ago made. You're more than welcome to tell me to fuck off and ignore everything I just said, I'm not in a habit of forcing my allies and friends into thinking my way. Taylor shook her head very fast, which made everyone panic a bit, thinking she might hurt herself, but then she began to speak no, you certainly have been opening my eyes to a lot of things Harry. I could never say anything like that to you, plus, I can tell you're being nice and just telling me what your understanding of this whole thing is, it has given me a lot to think about too. Everyone smiled at Taylor, Harry then nodded that's good, perhaps in this whole adventure we'll learn, more about everything going on. I'm sure we'll find out even more truths, I'll tell you this though, I'll be thinking about how to help the Quarians some way along the line, just don't expect me to be nice to arrogant and foolish people, that's a big no, no for me.
Taylor nodded of course and thank you, Harry. I can see why Valerie, Kanu, and Lefay speak so fondly of you all the time. Kanu grinned and nodded proudly, which made Harry chuckle and give her an ear scratch which made Kanu smile and close her eyes in delight, Shepard then spoke up we should go, we still have to finish my rounds. Both Kanu and Taylai nodded and both waved at Harry and Shepard as they walked away. They saw Engineer Adams standing close by, so Shepard decided to speak with him. Adams turned to look at Shepard, as soon as he noticed him approaching, he smiled and then began to speak Hey Commander, you knows that Guarian? Taylai? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. Shepard raised an eyebrow, while Harry decided to ask she's not bothering you though, right? Adams shook his head what? No. She's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is, give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one, I see why you wanted her to come along. Shepard smiled and nodded I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. Engineer Adams nodded you've got a real eye for talent, Commander, but I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Shepard smiled and nodded towards Harry I'm just showing Harry around, there's a lot he doesn't know, so I thought that getting to know the crew and some of what they can do, could help him understand how things work better. Adams nodded to Harry, who smiled at him, he then said I see, then I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Harry hummed for a few seconds and then nodded I heard this ship has stealth capabilities, can you tell me more about that? Adams nodded and smiled at Harry, he then went on to explain you can't hide a ship out in space, they emit too much heat and radiation, too easy for sensors to pick them up unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself, with no emissions to give away our location. Eventually, the sinks have to be vented, more than a few hours of silent running, and then overheat, cook us inside our own hull. Harry crossed his arms as he thought about how that worked, in his mind, he was already thinking of ways to fix and take advantage of those emissions somehow. He then looked up and asked, is there any way for anyone to detect us? Adams nodded a visual scan can still pick us up, anyone looking out a window could see us as plain as day, but you have to be pretty close to get actual visual in space. Most vessels rely on scanners, as long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us, not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Harry tilted his head FDL? You mean faster than light travel right? Why wouldn't it work on those speeds? Adams nodded yes, and cracking up to FDL blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks, as soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we got the only one. Shepard turned his head towards Harry, and saw him thinking about something hard, he smiled as he decided to ask what was in his mind what are you thinking about Harry? Harry turned his head towards Shepard and began to explain hearing how the stealth system works for the ship, gives me a few ideas on how to improve it. Cooling and absorbing runes on the sinks, will extend the time we can stay in stealth mode, plus absorbing runes can transform the emissions into clean energy, that can be used for something else in the ship. I can also add enchantments on the ship's outside as well or a few wards that will make it truly invisible, so we wouldn't have to worry about visual scans. Shepard nodded, having already gotten an explanation of runes and enchantments, thanks to the pistol Harry made for him, he understood what Harry was planning. Meanwhile, Adams looked intrigued and a bit confused, Harry noticed this oh, I'll explain everything in more detail once when I have everything prepared. Adams nodded, and certainly looked very interested right now. Harry grinned and then decided to continue asking questions why don't you tell me a bit about yourself, Adams? Engineer Adams nodded and decided to do so if you name a class alliance ship, I've probably served in it, everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was in the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship, couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Harry smiled ah, so you're the guy to ask about ships, me and the girls have quite a few questions about how they work and designs, would it bother you if we came to ask you about all of these things? Adams shook his head not at all, Captain Anderson did speak to the crew, he asked us all to help you and the girls with everything you need, I'm sure Commander Shepard doesn't mind either. Shepard nodded yes, Harry and the girls have full clearance, please answer all their questions and provide any help you can. They're trusty allies to the Alliance military and mine as well. Harry smiled and nodded in thanks to both the commander and engineer. 
He then decided to ask for more information on Shepard's ship. Could you tell me a bit more about the Normandy? Engineer Adams smiled. She's the best ship I've ever served on, probably the fastest vessel ever designed, and she's the only one using the new Tantalus drive core. Harry tilted his head. Tantalus drive core? What's so special about it? Adams immediately answered Harry's question proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel, not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speed longer before we have to discharge the core. Harry looked down, I have quite a lot of ideas to make this ship even better, though I'm going to have to contact a friend to plan everything out, for now, I'll focus on the stealth and vent systems. Shepard nodded sounds great, now come on, we should continue our rounds. Harry nodded and both he and Shepard say their goodbyes for now to Engineer Adams, who waved at them as they walked out of the engine room. After coming out of the engine room, they went to see if Garrus was free now, luckily for them. It seems like he was done speaking with the row, so both approach him, Shepard greeted the Tyrian Garrus. How is everything? Gary grinned it's pretty wild. This ship would make any Tyrian captain jealous, heck, I'm jealous, but other than that, it's been a pretty wild ride so far. Shepard nodded without a doubt, but how are you feeling with everything that has happened so far? Garrus crossed his arms and then proceeded to speak his mind honestly. I'm still digesting everything. On one hand, we have Sarin, a pretty famous spectre turning traitor and working with the Geth. Then we have Harry. I don't even know how to begin about Harry and the girls, I've heard about what they are from human C-Sec offices, and I even watched a vampire movie once. But to find out a dragon god is working alongside me is a little bit much to take all at once. I also heard that Harry is the reason the council has been very supportive with you so far, that's another can of worms I'm very hesitant to open. Harry chuckled well, they were all ready to brush everything aside, so I decided to do something about it, otherwise, we would be working against them and that's not very constructive to what we want to do. Garrus nodded oh, I get why you did it, Harry, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but to an alien. A Turian, and a C-Sec officer at that, all of this seems like a dream, you know? Shepard shook his head just wait until you see Harry fight and use magic, that will blow your mind. Garrus sighed and slumped great. I can't wait. Shepard and Harry shared a laugh which Garrus joined in soon after, after that, Joker suddenly called Shepard in the intercom and told him that they were arriving at Artemis Tau. Shepard nodded and then with Harry headed to the command center, to choose where they were looking for Yaritsuni first. Dash. Once in the command center, Shepard took some time to choose which system to investigate first, in the end, he chose the Athens system, and soon after Harry and Shepard left to get ready to leave. However something unexpected happened, just before they could step into the elevator, Joker called out to Shepard via intercom and let him know there was a transmission coming for him. Shepard frowned but in the end he decided to find out what was going on, so he walked back to the command center and accepted the transmission commander. I'm glad you accepted the transmission. We got an emergency situation, and you're the only one I can trust to get the job done. Shepard raised an eyebrow, but was intrigued. How can I help, Admiral? The Admiral immediately went on to explain the situation. Biotic fanatics have hit a medical research station with a psychotropic drug. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy, and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. Shepard sighed, this was a very delicate situation, but one that needed to be dealt with I'll do everything within my power to bring those researches back safely, Admiral. The Admiral responded right away I know you will Commander, I'm sending you the station coordinates now, 5th Fleet out. Harry walked up to Shepard change of plans? Shepard shook his head no, we'll deal with these missions at our leisure right now we should focus on finding Dr. Tsunyi but if we get close to them, we'll take care of it. Shepard checked his Omnitool and quickly read the mission's objectives, plus it seems like he received an extra one. Looks like I'll also be playing the negotiator too. Shepard nodded to himself, and then began his investigation into the Athens systems. Unluckily, after a few hours of scanning the planets nearby, the Normandy couldn't find any signs of Liara or Prothean ruins. So Shepard chose to look into another system, the Knossos system. It's a small system, so there weren't too many planets to scan, though the Normandy got a hit on the planet Thurum. It seems like there were some Prothean ruins on this planet, so Shepard chose to land and investigate. Dash. For this mission, he chose to take Garrus and Rex, along with Harry and Valerie, so the group of five got ready and then gathered together to investigate Thurum. Shepard, Rex, and Garrus landed on Thurum inside the Mako, while Harry and Valerie flew down and landed on top of it, where they took a seat and attached themselves to the Mako, with Chakra. As soon as they landed, Joker immediately got in contact with the group commander, 
I'm picking up some strange readings, really strange, like, off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Shepard nodded and immediately began to drive towards the location Joker pointed out. Meanwhile, Valerie looked around this planet looks primal, only rock and lava around. Harry nodded looks like it's not a good place for life to grow, sort of looks like Mars, but less red. I can't detect any life either. Suddenly the Mago shook and jumped up. Harry raised an eyebrow what the hell? If it wasn't because we're using Chakra, we would have been sent flying. Valerie giggled I feel bad for Rex and Garrus. They're inside the Mako and just being held by straps, though who would have thought Shepard was a horrible driver? Harry chuckled, while the Mako suddenly bounced up and almost made a whole flip. Luckily Harry used telekinesis to make sure the Mako landed on its wheels. The Mako kept going through the rocky terrain for quite a while. Harry was actually having fun riding the Mako, since it sort of felt like a roller coaster, but the fun ended when Geth suddenly attacked them. A Geth armature suddenly opened fire on the Mako. Harry immediately raised a barrier, while Valerie and the Mako began to fire at the Geth armature. The Geth's attack crashed into Harry's barrier and was stopped from even reaching the Mako. Meanwhile, the Geth armature was then blasted to pieces in seconds from the Mako's cannon and Valerie's charge shots. As soon as the Geth exploded, the group kept going. This time, however, they were more cautious. They now knew they weren't alone on this planet. Eventually, they drew close to some sort of complex, however, they were immediately shot at, by a multitude of Geth-heavy turrets, Shepard immediately slammed on the brakes. Harry seeing the attacks coming their way immediately raised another barrier and blocked the barrage of attacks, the Geth-heavy turrets then began to shoot missiles at the Mako, but Valerie shot them down before they could even get close to the Mako. Shepard grunted son of a bitch, Rex. Destroy those turrets. Rex grunted but immediately began to shoot at the Geth heavy turrets, while Harry and Valerie kept them safe, Shepard began to drive around to avoid giving the turrets a clear shot at them and to help everyone target them easily. It took a while, but they were able to clear the area, though Geth troopers began to attack them with heavy weaponry, these were smaller targets, so Rex was having a hard time hitting them with the turret. Harry however summoned Oblivion and pointed it towards the general area where the Geth troopers were shooting at them. He activated his Renegon and locked on all the Geth. Harry then grinned thunder. A multitude of big thunderbolts shot from the sky and landed on the Geth. Rex who was watching all of this whistled when he saw Harry spell, destroy and disintegrate the Geth troopers, and even destroyed a bit of the area. He knew without a doubt that Harry is holding back, so he wouldn't damage the complex, but it was still an impressive attack nonetheless. Shepard saw that it was clear and immediately drove around the complex, looking for some sort of back entrance, so they could go inside. But then a Geth destroyer dropped down, from who knows where, and began to shoot its massive plasma cannons at the Mako. Shepard cursed out and began to try and dodge the shots, he was able to clear one. But the second was going to hit the side of the Mako, but Harry appeared right in front of the plasma shot and batted it back toward the Geth destroyer. The Geth Destroyer was hit squarely in the chest by its own attack and was forced to try and regain its balance, but Valerie didn't give it a chance, she immediately charged Mana into both Ebony and Ivory and then shot at the Geth Destroyer while yelling charged shot, Mana Cannon. The two massive orbs of Mana flew through the air and crashed into the Geth Destroyer, they exploded on impact and not only destroyed the Geth, but also made a massive crater. Gar escaped a bit, reminded me not to make Valerie angry. Rex barked out a laugh I like her, she's a Krogan in spirit. Shepard chuckled and shook his head in amusement while he continued to drive, it took a bit of time, but the group was able to clear the Geth troopers and whatever else they brought in. This allowed Shepard to drive close to the complex after following a long tunnel and parked right outside of it, everyone got off the Mako and drew their weapons as they approached the place. Valerie shook her head that was an awful lot of Geths, I think we're in the right place. Shepard nodded yeah. But this mini geth makes me worry about Dr. Tsuni, I hope she's alright, otherwise, there goes our lead to Matriarch Benizia. Everyone nodded and then began to move towards the complex on foot the rest of the way, though they were attacked by more geth troopers along the way, the however group took them out quite easily. Along the way, Shepard was hit by a sniper shot, he grunted and took cover as soon as he felt his shields break I lost shields. Knowing that it would take some seconds for Shepard's shields to charge up again, Rex and Garrus began to cover for him, while the Geth troopers began attacking them. Garrus shot one in its head and watched it fall. He then turned his head towards Harry can you guys take care of that sniper? He's going to keep us pinned down here as long as it's still active. 
Valerie nodded and then turned into a multitude of bats that took off flying towards the sniper. Garrus shook his head and she can turn into flying rats. Great. Harry chuckled while he began to bat away shots coming towards Rex and Shepard. Meanwhile, Valerie arrived where the sniper was and immediately turned back to her normal form. She launched herself towards the geth and ripped it apart with her bare hands. Harry saw that and nodded Valerie took care of the sniper, let's go. The group nodded and then got out of cover to keep moving. Throughout this whole ordeal, Shepard was very impressed with the pistol Harry made for him. He just keeps shooting and shooting without stopping and the gun wasn't overheating. This was amazing to him and he was very glad to have this weapon on him. It was certainly coming in handy right now. However, as they were now approaching the complex, Geth began to drop from the sky. What caught everyone by surprise, was the new type of Geth that appeared among the group. Geth Stalker and Geth Assassins. The Geth Stalker would run on all fours while going up walls and ceilings while shooting at the group from all kinds of angles. The Geth Assassins were becoming semi-transparent and began to try to move and flank the group, though the group also had to worry about the big-ass Geth armature and troopers that arrived with them. Rex grunted, that's new. Shepard clicked his tongue in annoyance active camouflage and all-terrain movement, great. Harry nodded leave the ones being camouflaged to me, I can see them, Valerie you take down the ones on the wall and everyone else take care of the rest. Valerie nodded, Shepard grinned at Harry well keep the rest of them off you. Harry nodded and disappeared in a flash of twilight, while Valerie disappeared in a blur, Shepard turned his head towards Garrus and Rex keep the rest off of them. Both Garrus and Rex nodded and began to shoot back at the Geth while keeping an eye on the Geth armature. Meanwhile Harry flashed behind a Geth assassin and cut it in half with the Earthkeeper. He then turned around and threw oblivion. The dark keyblade flew through the air, like a black buzzsaw and cut another Geth assassin in half. Harry recalled Oblivion back to his hand and then launched himself at the last Geth assassin and in a blur of movement, slice it into little pieces. Dash. Valerie appeared above a Geth stalker and kicked it off the wall it was crawling up to. The Geth stalker flew through the air and crashed on top of a Geth trooper. Valerie then quickly kicked off the wall and launched herself towards a Geth stalker crawling on a ceiling. The Geth Stalker launched itself towards Valerie, but she turned into mist, and the Geth flew through her and landed on the floor, before it could even move though, Valerie landed on top of it with her two feet and crushed it. The Geth exploded into many small pieces, Valerie immediately turned round and aimed at the last Geth Stalker and unleashed a barrage of energy bullets on it. The bullets tore it apart in seconds, while this was happening, Shepard and his squad were now shooting at the Geth Armager after having taken care of the troopers. Harry suddenly landed on top of the Geth armature and stabbed both of his keyblade into its head. He then roared as the Geth armature violently exploded in a blast of darkness and light. With that done the area was now clear of enemies, then the group got back together. Shepard sighed what were those things? I don't think I've seen anything like those Geth before. Garrus nodded me either, those Geth crawling on the walls and those using active camouflage. Rex grunted and nodded they were made for assassinations. Shepard frowned and sighed we have to let the Alliance know about this and the Council too. Harry nodded yeah, those things had some very good camouflage, it's not perfect, because if they move you could see them, but it's pretty darn good. Valerie sighed the one crawling all over the place would make great infiltration units, they could sabotage and spy, along with assassinations as well. Garrus shook his head as if the Geth weren't bad enough as it is, but now they have this new type as well. Shepard nodded yeah, but what really bothers me, is the reason why they were created. Harry hummed since the council is working against Sarin, he's probably targeting them, among some other high profile targets, plus having a unit for infiltration is a good way to know what the enemies are doing and planning. Rex scoffed we're going to have to be more careful from now on. Valerie sighed and nodded we'll have to do scans everywhere we go, Harry how do you detect the geth? Harry shrugged they give off this odd signal I can pick up, sort of what I can feel from a baby Digimon, one recently hatched. Garrus, Rex, and Shepard seemed confused, but Valerie began to plan something, so Harry waited to hear her idea. Chapter 144, Chapter 144. Valerie hummed, for a few seconds, while thinking, she then looked towards Harry and asked Harry, can we make something that will tag the Geth and let us know where they are? some sort of scanner that we can give to the Normandy and the Alliance military, this way everyone can scan for the Geth and avoid getting caught by surprise. Harry crossed his arms and thought about what he would need to make a scanner like that, plus to calibrate it in order to detect the small digital wavelength they give off. After a few seconds, Harry nodded and smiled I think I can come up with something, I won't use magic or enchanting though, 
otherwise the Alliance military won't be able to replicate whatever I make. I also have to use materials from this world too, but that won't be a problem, maybe I'll even just create a program that will work with our Omni tools or something like that. Shepard nodded that will be great, if you can also make it impervious to signal jamming that would very useful. Rex grunted yeah, it's knowing that they can jam our mapping and targeting signals. Harry nodded just give me some time to study on the technology in this world and I'll have something ready soon after. Everyone then nodded to Harry, Shepard then sighed and holsters his pistol we should get going, if the Geth are here, then Dr. Tsuni is definitely in danger, maybe whatever they're researching here has gotten Saren's attention and that's never a good thing. Everyone nodded and then together, they all headed to the back entrance to the Prothean dig, though Harry was now keeping an even closer eye for Geth than before. Dash. A very long tunnel awaited everyone and they didn't waste any time in rushing down this tunnel, however, Harry suddenly stopped everyone I'm sensing Geth up ahead. Shepard frowned damn, they already made it inside. Do you know how many? Harry nodded at least three up ahead, but I'm sensing even more deeper inside. Shepard nodded, he then signaled everyone to move forward quietly, the group immediately did so and not long after they came up to the Geth Harry had warned everyone about. Harry and Valerie, instantly moved to take them out, both disappeared in blurs and appeared behind two Geth. Harry grabbed the head of the one in front of him and ripped out its head with one strong pull, Valerie just pointed Ebony at the back of its head and blasted it off its shoulder. This was done so fast that Shepard, Garrus and Rex weren't able to see anything, but reacted right away and fired at the third Geth. This Geth heard the death of his fellow synthetics and turned round to see what had happened, but was barraged by gunfire so fast, it didn't even have time to process what had happened. The group immediately continued forward and came out of the tunnel into a metal platform, everyone quickly followed it and began to descend towards the lowest floor. Harry sensed more Geth down below, so he suddenly jumped down the platform they were running on, and landed on top of Geth's shock trooper. Harry took a kunai and jabbed it into the, the top of the Geth's head and twisted it, destroying it, he quickly hopped off the destroyed Geth and threw three pairs of shuriken towards a trio of Geth's shock troopers running towards him. The shuriken struck the Geth in the chest and then exploded destroying the trio, Shepard saw this and grinned so he really is a ninja too. Valerie giggled and nodded yup, but try to keep up commander, or you'll lose in on the fun tilde. Rex chuckled that little woman should have been born a Krogan. Garrus shook his head but seemed amused that though of Valerie being a Krogan terrifies me. Shepard nodded, while they all continued following the metal platform, eventually they came to a door, and Shepard immediately opened it revealing an elevator leading to the Prothean ruins further down below. Garrus hummed a bit as he took a quick look around the elevator while it went down I've never visited a Prothean ruin before, aside from the citadel, I mean. Harry raised an eyebrow at that the citadel is a Prothean ruin? Shepard, Garrus and Rex nodded, while Harry sighed son of a bitch, I should have asked my shadow clone to give it closer look, now I have to wait for next time. Shepard frowned sorry Harry, I should have mentioned that. Harry shook his head and ah, it's fine, there's bound to be information we don't know about, that will come forth later, but there are things I would have liked to know sooner. By the way, how's the shadow clone scanning of the keepers? Shepard smiled we've been getting a constant flow of credits so far, I'm sure you shadow clone is getting all kinds of scans, I've sent half of the accumulated credits to your account Harry. Harry smiled and nodded thanks, but you didn't have to though. Shepard shook his head yeah, I did, you're practically doing all the work Harry. Harry chuckled well, I did it to help and to get you funds, but if you're okay with half, then it's cool. Shepard smiled at Harry, the elevator soon arrived to the lower floor and everyone got off right away, into another metal platform which they began to follow immediately. But soon after, a few Geth assault drones dropped from above and began to fire at the group, Harry waved his hand and covered the group inside a barrier, Valerie, Garrus, Rex and Shepard then opened fire at the Geth assault drones. Though the Geth drones were able to dodge some of the shots, most of them were taken down almost instantly, Valerie then killed the rest quickly. Harry dissipated the barrier let's go. Everyone nodded and took off running again, as the group ran through the metal platform and got closer to the Prothean ruins, Rex couldn't help but make a comment about them sterile white, Protheans sure build things homey. Valerie looked around these Protheans seem like the researcher and smart types, though that usually doesn't mean a good thing either. Harry and Rex nodded in agreement, since they had experienced with researcher and smart type of people, and they weren't good experiences at all. Soon after they found another elevator, and everyone jumped in right away, Shepard activated it and it took them further down below, however the elevator began to malfunction halfway down there until it broke down. 
it stopped and forced everyone to get off the elevator, luckily it stopped right before reaching its destination so everyone hopped down into the metal platform and began to follow it. Until they reached a broken part on the platform, everyone stopped before the wreck and took a look around. Harry looked over to the other side Valerie, and I can reach the other side, but I don't think you guys can. Rex grunted yes, Krogans are made for jumping Harry, have you not seen my legs? Harry chuckled and nodded, suddenly a voice called out of nowhere uh, hello? Could someone help me, please? Shepard raised an eyebrow and tried to look where the voice came from where did that voice come from? Valerie looked down the platform and saw some sort of blue energy blocking some sort of tunnel oh, it's coming from below. Garrus sighed great, how do we get down there? Harry just floated up and lifted everyone with telekinesis, he then flew himself and everyone down to the metal platform below, Harry landed right after everyone else did. So he was the first one to see who had spoken to them, though he tilted his head when he saw the person's predicament hmm, how curious, I couldn't sense her. I wonder if it is to do with this weird energy around her? Valerie looked at the person floating inside the blue energy with curiosity in her eyes, is this some sort of alien game? Perhaps a kink? Cause it looks kinda fun. Everyone except Harry Sweat dreamt at what Valerie said, Shepard shook his head and tried not to laugh, instead he walked forward to the poor embarrassed Asari. The Asari snapped out of her embarrassment and called out to the group in front of her can you hear me out there? I am trapped, I need help. Shepard nodded to the Asari we can hear you, are you okay? What happened to you? The Asari seemed to be far more worried about her situation so she tried to quickly explain this thing is a Prothean security device, I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, alright? Shepard sighed, he wanted to help her but he needed to make sure she wasn't helping Sarin or her mother you must be Dr. Tsuni, your mother is working with Sarin, whose side are you on? The now revealed Liara looked confused what? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Benizia's daughter, but I'm nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years, please just get me out here. Harry hummed and crossed his arms she's not lying. Shepard nodded to Harry, he knew that he could trust Harry so he accepted his word, he then decided to ask Liara about her situation how did you end up in there? Liara immediately began to explain, she was really desperate to get set free after all I was exploring the ruins when the Geth showed up, so I hid in here, can you believe that? Geth beyond the veil. I activated the tower's defenses. I knew the barrier curtain would keep them out, when I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to, I was trapped in here, you must get me out, please. Harry deadpanned at Liara so. A klutz. Valerie nodded definitely a klutz. Liara blushed again but didn't say anything is her defense, she knew it was her clumsy mistake that landed her on the situation she was currently in, Shepard smiled and tried not to chuckle. He saw that Liara was already very embarrassed so instead he decided to try and calm her down we'll find a way to get you out of there. Liara smiled and nodded there's is a control in here that should deactivate this thing, you'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part, the defenses cannot be shut off from the outside, I don't know how you'll get in here, but be careful, there's was a Krogan with the Geth, they have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. Garrus great, a Krogan, I just know this is going to be fun. No offense Rex. Rex just grinned finding Garrus's sarcasm amusing some taken. Shepard however was busy looking at the barrier now, how do we get through this? The commander turned his head towards Harry and decided to ask any ideas. Harry scratched his head honestly, I'm not sure, this energy is new to me and I haven't seen anything like it before. It actually cloaked Liara from my senses, that is a very hard thing to do. Valerie nodded yeah, I can't smell her nor sense her either, it's odd. Harry looked around I could try pushing my way inside or use some sort of energy attack to destroy the barrier, but I don't know how this energy will react to that. Worst case scenario? Liara dies in many different kinds of ways depending on how this energy reacts to mine, at best it would just bounce it off harmlessly, though I could use my power over reality to make it disappear. Shepard hummed let's put that on on hold and take a look elsewhere. Maybe we can find a way to get Dr. Tsuni out of this without relying on your very complicated and overpowerful abilities, I don't want to make us over-reliant on the them. Harry smiled at Shepard and nodded, with that decided, the group then decided to look further down the Prothean ruins and see about finding a way to safely help Liara. So they followed the metal platform down leading further deeper down into the ruins, however, as soon as they reached down below the metal platform, they were attacked by more Geth. This time Shepard quickly shot them down with Harry's handmade pistol. He only had to shoot them down twice to take down the Geth, 
something that he noticed right away as soon as he began to use it. One shot was powerful enough to shatter their shields and the second was to kill them. Rex and Garrus had noticed this and had grown curious about the pistol. Garrus walked up to Shepard I didn't know that humans made high caliber munition weaponry this small Shepard. Shepard grinned they don't. This was made by our friendly dragon god. It's pretty amazing right? Garrus blinked amazing? That small little thing pack a serious punch, in fact it's stronger than my sniper rifle. Rex nodded yeah, it might be even stronger than my shotgun and that's saying a lot. More stable and accurate too. I'm a bit jealous now. Shepard chuckled it's a prototype, Harry wanted me to use it, to get some data, I'm sure he'll be making a whole bunch of things for everyone to try later. Both Rex and Garrus seemed inexcited, which Harry and Valerie noticed, but before they could say anything, a Geth fired a rocket launcher at them, Harry snapped his fingers and created a small portal in front of everyone, the rocket flew through it. Suddenly another portal opened up above the Geth that fired the rocket launcher and the rocket flew out of that portal. The rocket crashed and exploded on impact destroying the Geth. Meanwhile Valerie took off running towards a Geth sniper that was aiming at them, Garrus immediately began to shoot at it to force it to take cover or move. Which worked, Valerie seeing the opening, disappeared in a flash of black and red light and reappear besides the Geth sniper, she quickly spinned kicked its head off. Rex rushed forward while shooting at Geth shock troopers with his shotgun, even when his shields shattered he just kept going until he killed his targets. Harry saw this and summoned Oathkeeper to his hand, he then pointed it towards Rex Kuriga. Rex was huffing a bit, until he was suddenly enveloped in a green light and all his wounds healed instantly, he grinned as he cracked his neck good as new. Harry grinned as he saw that his friend was okay, he smiled and relaxed while looking around a bit the area is clear. Valerie sighs so now they're shooting at us with rocket launchers, kinda stupid to do so inside an underground facility no? Shepard shook his head not really, we must be that much of a threat if they're willing to risk whatever they're looking here for, besides, if any Geth get buried inside, they would just escape into their digital plane, us though? Well we might not be so lucky. Harry nodded it seems like they really have a spade as a big threat, oh well, it's not like anything they can plan would actually do anything to us. Everyone nodded, and kept going towards the deeper parts of the ruins, along the way they found a weapons locker and Valerie cheerfully opened it and took everything inside of it. Though she did swap the best weapons she found with Rex and Garrus, who were still carrying standard issue weaponry. Now slightly better equipped, the group kept going. Eventually they were about to reach the end of the ruins and there, Shepard found a control console for the some kind of mining laser. They all arrived in front of it, and Shepard hummed as he inspected the controls would this help? I think this is what they used to excavate around the ruins safely. Harry walked forward and took a look. Yeah. This laser is for pinpoint excavation, sort like a surgical procedure, with this we should be able to get the aura out of there safely. Shepard nodded and then proceeded to fiddle with the controls, suddenly, a very powerful orange laser shot from a machine close by, startling everyone. Harry deadpanned at Shepard Shepard the fuck, please be careful with the settings, that would kill the aura if it even grazes her. Shepard sweat dripped and nodded, that was definitely not what he wanted to do, but he didn't know too much of this type of machinery. Garrus suddenly noticed something where the laser hit and called out to everyone hey, look, some sort of passageway was revealed by the laser. Everyone turned their head towards the recently discovered passageway, Harry walked closely and took a look huh? That was very lucky. Everyone nodded, even Shepard seems a bit surprised of his luck, Valerie giggled and then spoke up should we see where it leads? Maybe we'll be able to reach the other side behind Liara. Everyone nodded and decided to see where the passageway goes. It didn't take long to find some sort of Prothean elevator, so everyone got in and activated it. The Prothean elevator then took them up, a minute later they found themselves right behind Liara, who was still strapped and floating inside the barrier curtain. Harry scratched his head huh? Well. That was fast, shouldn't complain about it but that was a bit too easy. Garrus shrugged you know? I would take easy any day of the week instead to getting shot all the time. Rex grunted no. Harry is right, this was too easy. I was expecting some sort of big fight before we would even get to Dr. Tsuni. Valerie smiled ah. We're missing the boss battle right? Shepard shook his head but smiled at his crew, he found the fact that they were expecting a boss battle both unnerving and funny, made him wonder what sort of situations they have dealt with, to expect a boss battle of all things. However, they couldn't leave Liara just floating up there while they had a conversation, so they decided to just go and talk to her. The group walked over to Liara and she eventually heard them coming, she turned her head to side so she could see the group what? How? 
How did you get in here? I didn't think there was any way past the barrier. Harry grinned oh. It was easy. We just used a laser and it accidentally blasted away inside into an elevator Shepard got lucky. Liara stayed silent for a few seconds, but then said I see. Yes, that makes sense, please. Get me out of here before Morgeth arrive, that button over there should shut down the containment field. Shepard nodded and went to the control console, meanwhile, Valerie hummed and she stared at Liara you think she would get mad if I tickle her? Everyone turned their head towards Valerie and stared at her, Garrus sighed that's evil Valerie, she can't move remember? Rex chuckled and then grinned let's do it, I've never seen an Asari get tickled, should be fun. Garrus stared at Rex for a good second you know? Now that you mention it, I've never seen an Asari laugh out loud either. Liara began to nervously sweat um. Please don't. Harry chuckled while Shepard just smiled and pressed the button, the containment field dissipated and Liara dropped to the ground oof. The doctor shook her head and then slowly stood up, she then turned around towards everyone and nodded at them, though she was nervously staring at Valerie who was just smiling at her. Garrus then spoke up any idea how we can get out of this place? Liara nodded there's an elevator back in the center of the tower, at least, I think it's an elevator, it should take us out of here, come on. Dash. Liara guided everyone to the elevator she mentioned, and once in the elevator she began to speak with Shepard I, I still cannot believe all this, why would Geth come after me? Do you think Benizia is involved? Shepard shook his head I'm not sure. Garrus then continued on Saren is looking for the conduit, you're a Prothean expert, obviously he wants you to help him find it. Liara seemed confused the conduit? But I don't know. There was a loud crashing sound that interrupted Liara, as she looked up and looked around looking for what had caused that sound, Rex glared up what the hell was that? Liara then began to speak these ruins aren't stable, the mining laser must have triggered a seismic event. Harry shook his head well, that good luck was eventually going to run out, that's karma for you. Liara nodded and walked over to the elevator control console and began to fiddle with it we have to hurry, the whole place is caving in. Shepard nodded and immediately contacted the Normandy Joker. Get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double mister. Joker responded instantly I, I, commander, secure and away, ETA 8 minutes. Rex grunted if I die here, I'll kill him. Harry chuckled and shook his head don't worry, no one is dying here. The squad relaxed the moment Harry said that, they all knew Harry meant it and knowing of what he's capable of, they knew they could trust him as well. The elevator began to move up as Liara stared at everyone in confusion, being the newcomer, she was unaware of Harry and what he could do but she could clearly see that everyone trusted him quite a bit. Valerie however deadpanned you know? The irony of me complaining about the Geth using rocket launcher for this exact reason and for us in the end, to be the cause of it, is quite a slap to my face. Everyone refused to turn to look at Valerie, they all knew she was right but that didn't mean they wanted to deal with the irony. Dash. Eventually the elevator reached a wide open platform of sorts, however, to their bad luck, a bunch of Geth and a Krogan were already waiting for them up here, the Krogan grinned and loudly said surrender, or don't, that would be more fun. Shepard huffed in annoyance we don't have time to deal with this idiot, charge. Valerie giggled well, there's the boss battle. Rex barked out to laugh, while everyone got ready but the Krogan grinned I like your attitude. Harry suddenly appeared in front of the Krogan and kicked him away well he's not that much of a boss. We don't have a lot of time. Clean the area. Everyone nodded and began to shot back at the Geth. Harry stared at the Krogan getting up, huh? A tough guy, pretty impressive you survived that kick, sure I held back a lot, but still. The Krogan battlemaster grunted in pain and held the area where his ribs were, he definitely heard some of them snap and to make things worse, his shields shattered with that kick alone. The Krogan glared at Harry and watched as everyone else was taking down his Geth troopers easily, the Krogan hoping to gain some time for his shield to regenerate, decided to talk to Harry you must be Harry Potter, Saren warned me about you. Didn't want to believe all that nonsense he said but that kick alone, showed me that there was some truth to what Saren said. Harry grinned oh? Is Saren nervous of me now? Didn't think the asshole would. The Battlemaster Krogan chuckled he's definitely nervous about you, said something about you being an unknown, but he still believes you can be taken down. The Krogan's shields regenerated and he immediately began to shoot at Harry, but the Dragon God easily avoided all the shots headed his way with ease. The Battlemaster Krogan growled, but then saw Harry grinned at him, he realized too late that all the Geth that came with him, were all destroyed. 
Shepard immediately aimed his special pistol at the Krogan and opened fired. The first shot shattered his shields, the second hit him on the shoulder and ripped his arm off. The Krogan grunted in both shock and pain, he dropped his weapon and held onto his shoulder, Shepard walked forward and shot him on the knee, the Krogan's leg was blasted off him, forcing him onto the ground. But before he could even do or say anything, Shepard was already on him, the commander pointed his pistol at the Krogan's head should have paid attention to your surroundings. Shepard immediately pulled the trigger and blasted the Krogan's head off, Rex chuckled seeing this yes, I definitely want one of those guns. Garrus nodded, while Valerie was busy collecting weapons from the destroyed Geth and then the dead Krogan, though she was quietly chanting loot 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 tilde. Liara watched and heard all of this and just stared in confusion, suddenly the entire room began to rumble and shake, Harry narrowed his eyes everyone come on. We need to get out of here now. Everyone nodded and ran towards the exit nearby, the ruins began to crumble and fall apart, things were really getting dangerous now, Shepard began to yell at everyone move, move, move. Harry saw that they were going to cut it close, so he decided to do something about it. He turned into his dragon form, which destroyed everything around him. While he did so, he grabbed everyone with his claws and began to roar as he jumped up as hard as he could. Dash. Joker was arriving at the Prothean ruins, when out nowhere a massive gold and silver dragon busted out of the ground with a roar and took off flying towards the sky. The dragon stopped high above where the ruins were located and opened his claws. Joker gaped and didn't not know what to think, he knew Harry is dragon, but hearing about it, is way more different than seeing it. Meanwhile Harry was staring at his friends and Liara, who except Valerie were laying down on top of his claws and breathing hard for the adrenaline and all the running they did. Though Liara was staring at him with wide eyes full of shock and fear, but he ignored that and decided to speak is everyone alright? Shepard raised a thumbs up towards Harry while huffing a bit yeah. You came in clutch Harry. Garrus nodded but then grinned wow, you're really shiny Harry. Harry chuckled at Garrus's comment, while Rex stood up and grunted does it make me crazy that I want to fight you in this form Harry? Valerie giggled at Rex and shook her head a little bit, yes, but I don't blame you, everyone strong would like to fight a dragon, just not Harry though. Liara gaped at everyone h how is everyone so calm? We're in the grasp of a massive and quite obviously dangerous creature. Shepard stood up and shrugged May, after seeing him once, you sort of get used to it. Garrus got up and nodded yeah, it's impressive, but we know it's Harry and he's a good guy. Liara looked confused Harry? Well she didn't know everyone yet, they haven't even introduced themselves, so it's normal she was both confused and very scared. Suddenly the Normandy approached Harry, who lazily floated on the air while flaping his massive wings, Joker began to speak with the Normandy's speaker system Harry. Is that you? Harry grinned at the Normandy, while showing off all of his fangs and then nodded, Joker immediately responded well shit, you scared everyone in here buddy. But whoa, look at you. You look like a secret end game boss in a video game, badass. Harry laughed at both the irony in Joker's word and the way he seemed so excited, which was a bit scary for everyone to see, a dragon laughing sounded a bit terrifying. Dash. Soon after, Harry teleported everyone inside the Normandy and after turning back into his human form, he also teleported himself inside the Normandy, Taylor and Ashley were disappointed and bit pouty at the fact that they missed the chance to fly on a dragon. But Harry promised them rides later and the both if then calmed down and seemed in a better mood, Kaiden was certainly impressed and was admittedly curious about Harry's dragon form. Harry promised to answer questions later. After that whole ordeal. The squad who were on site, went to their rooms to unequip their gear and rest a bit, it was a long day after all. Dash. A few hours later, after resting enough, Shepard decided to gather everyone and talk about everything they found during this mission, and all the information they also got, this way everyone will be on the same page. Even Joker joined in the meeting via intercom and he was the first one to speak too close, Commander, it was only cause of Harry that you aren't swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes, they tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull, just for future reference. Liara sighed we almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes. Harry shrugged it's a coping mechanism, don't take offense, that's just how he deal with stress besides, he does make a good point, it was a really close call. Liara nodded I see, it must be a human thing, I don't have a lot of experience dealing with other species. Shepard smiled and shook his head well Harry doesn't really count as human though. Harry chuckled, while Liara went on but I am grateful to all of you, you saved my life back there, and not just from the volcano, those geth would have killed me, or dragged me off to Saren. 
Clayton then raised a good question what did the Geth and Saren want with you? Do you know something about the conduit? Liara shook her head only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction, that is my real area of expertise, I have spent the past fifty years trying to figure out what happened to them. Shepard tilted his head how old are you, exactly? Liara sighed I hate to admit it, but I'm only a hundred and six. Ashley gasped a bit damn, I hope I look that good when I'm your age. Harry and the girls chuckled, to them a century wasn't anything, Liara smiled at Ashley and then said a century may seem like a long time to short-lived species like yours, but among the Asari I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves, because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. Kanu hummed a bit that used to happen a lot in Kyoto, before we became what we are today, the elders who were very old used to not pay a lot of attention to the youth, it one of the reasons not many respected mom either. Compared to the elders, she's very young, many other yokai groups didn't respect her either, like old man Rurihon, though thanks to our raise in power, mom was able to unite all yokai under one faction. Harry hummed, he had heard about this but since he was in the Avengers world at the time, he didn't see this happening, he only noticed that there was way more yokai living in Kyoto than before. Valerie nodded it's the same with vampires, the elders of the clans and oldest families usually ignore the young vampires, unless of course they come from a very important clan, like Helm and Hilda, though she herself is quite the granny Tilda. Harry chuckled but didn't comment, Valerie was the only one who dared and gets away with making fun of Helm and Hilda's age, anyone else would suffer a fate worse than death. Chapter 145 Chapter 145 Liara seemed a bit confused about everything Kanu and Valerie just said, she didn't know what a yokai and vampire are, but whatever they were, it seems that they were also long-lived species and it was at least interesting to hear about them. But Shepard suddenly spoke up I've got my own theory about why the Protheans disappear. Liara, once again seemed confused though she then said with all due respect, Commander, I have heard every theory out there, the problem is finding evidence to support them, the Protheans left remarkably little behind. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved, it's like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part, according to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish, this cycle began long before them. Harry frowned, he already had his suspicions about what this whole situation was, but he wasn't sure yet, now he heard this new theory about such a cycle happening before even the Protheans, and that made him even more curious how did you come up with this theory? You just said that there was hardly any evidence. Liara nodded I have been working on this for fifty years, I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence, and eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge, patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case, it is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right, and eventually, I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans, this cycle has repeated itself many times over. Le Fay hummed and then decided to ask something that she has been wondering about for a while now so if the Protheans weren't the first, then who was? What sort of beings were they? Liara shook her head I don't know. There is barely any evidence on the Protheans, even less on those who came before them, I cannot prove my theory, but I know, I am right. The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction, each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down, and only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy, yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before them. Their greatest achievements, the mass relays, and the citadel are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared, I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. Shepard turned his gaze towards Harry, the dragon god knew what Shepard was asking about by his look alone, so he nodded, Shepard needed to share what he had learned from the beacon with Liara, this way they might get some more information or at least a confirmation. Shepard nodded and then turned his head towards Liara the Protheans were wiped out by a race of sentient machines, the Reapers. Liara seemed rather confused and surprised with what Shepard just told her the. The Reapers? But I have never heard of how do you know this? What evidence do you have? Harry stood up and walked to stand beside Shepard, he then began to explain there was a Prothean beacon on Eden Prime, we had secured it but it somehow got activated and Shepard got caught in it after rescuing a teammate. The beacon then downloaded a massive amount of information, directly into Shepard's mind, 
The process knock him out for a while though and the information is still settling in his mind but he's been able to get some of the information in form of dreams and visions, that's how he knows. Liara looked down and seemed to be lost in thought, she stayed like that for a few seconds before looking up visions? Dreams? Yes. That makes sense, the beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user, finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the geth attacked Eden Prime, the chances to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean's physiology, whatever information you received would have been confused, and unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it all, a lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process, you must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Ashley then spoke up okay, this isn't helping us find Saren or the conduit. Kanu giggled and grinned at Ashley someone is getting jealous. Ashley glared at Kanu while she gave her a very mischievous smile, Valerie giggled well, if Liara wants to drop her panties because of Shepard's will, then let her, I doubt he'll mind. Shepard raised an eyebrow but didn't confirm or deny that statement. Meanwhile, Liara blushed and turned her head towards Ashley Oh of course, you're right, I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me, unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the conduit or Saren. Everyone nodded though they felt a bit disappointed, Shepard then said I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Liara nodded and stood up Thank you, Commander, Saren might come after me again, I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship, and my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later in. Rex then grinned her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. Shepard nodded in agreement good to have you on the team Liara. Liara smiled Thank you, Commander, I am very great Evo. I am afraid I am feeling a bit light-headed. Kaiden sighed When was the last time you ate? Or slept? Dr. Chakwas should take a look at you. Liara shook her head it is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate and what happened down on the ruins, I need some time to process all of this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional, it will give me the chance to think things over, are we finished here, Commander? Shepard nodded we can talk again after you've seen the doctor, the rest of you. Dismissed. Joker then spoke via intercom mission reports are filed, Commander, you want me to patch you through to the council? Everyone left, while Harry chose to stay behind with Shepard, Shepard smiled knowing that Harry wanted to be present during the report to the council, so they wouldn't be any problem. Shepard nodded to Harry and then spoke up to Joker patch them through, Joker. Joker wasted no time to respond setting up the link now, Commander. Suddenly, a hologram of the council materialize in front of Harry and Shepard, to those immediately began to speak We've received your report, Commander, I understand Dr. Tsuni is on the Normandy. Sparatus then said, I assume you're taking necessary security precautions? Harry raised an eyebrow you assume too much, we know what we're doing. Sparatus flinched, but nodded, Shepard smiled at what Harry said, he then said, Liara is on our side, the Geth were trying to kill her. To those shook her head Benizia would never allow Saren to kill her daughter? Valern then piped in maybe she doesn't know. Sparatus then spoke up as well or maybe we don't know her, we never expected she could become a traitor. Harry huffed that's a lot of maybes being thrown around and none of those are helpful, you're just wasting time, the fact of the matter is that Geth were looking for Liara and wanted her dead. The council members stayed silent, they didn't know why, but for some reason, they felt that Harry was angry at them or at something at the very least, Valern wanted to change the conversation and then said, at least the mission was a success. Sparatus scoffed and both Tavos and Valern sighed knowing he was about to complain apart from the utter destruction of a major Prothean ruin, was that really necessary, Shepard? Shepard frowned the geth were crawling all over those ruins, we were lucky to make it out alive. Harry sighed Sparatus. Sparatus flinched and turned his head towards Harry, the dragon god glared at the tree and are you going to bitch about every little thing we do? We're not playing games over here you know? We were in a constant battle against the geth in that ruin. It's too bad it was destroyed, but we were busy fighting and staying alive, maybe calm the fuck down no? Sparatus frowned but you were there, you could have done something to prevent its destruction. You're powerful and have all kinds of a bill. But Harry cut him off so what? I'm not there to prevent every little thing from happening, I'm there to support Shepard and keep the squad safe, I couldn't care less about some old ruins. Besides, if you expect me to do something about everything that has gone wrong in the galaxy, then perhaps I should start by killing all the Turians or at least leave them on the edge of extinction like they did the Krogan. 
or perhaps I should make the Salarians unable to reproduce, with their short lifespans, they would die out pretty soon, still want me to use my power to right every wrong in the galaxy? Sparatus looked very spooked right now, Valern too, so he quickly tried to save the situation of course, not Lord Potter, we apologize for assuming, and Commander Shepard, the mission must always take priority. To those wanting to help mellow things out a bit then said good luck Commander, remember we're all counting on you. The hologram dissipated soon after that, leaving Shepard and Harry alone, Harry scoffed ignorant fools, I really don't like Sparatus. Shepard chuckled and shook his head I'm pretty sure he's going to need to change his pants after that, he looked terrified when you mentioned the Krogans. Harry smiled and then stretched well, I'm going back to my workshop, I have a few things to work on but do come by later, I want to hear what you think about the pistol, maybe we'll be able to give it a few upgrades too by the time you come down. Shepard nodded and watched Harry teleport away, he then cracked his neck and decided to go rest in his cabin for a while. Dash. A few hours later, feeling refreshed and well rested, Shepard went to go check on Harry, he was very interested in speaking with him about the pistol he made, plus he was also very curious about what sort of upgrades Harry could make to the pistol. So with that in mind he made his way to Harry's pocket dimension, it still amazes him how different it seems in there compared to the rest of the ship, but he is to admit that he quite liked the place. Being surrounded by nature felt good to him, always had, eventually, he reached the building that is Harry's workshop and went inside. He found both Valerie and Harry working on something on top of a table, curious about it he approached them and took a look at what had their attention. He raised an eyebrow when he found a set of armor, it was a standard issued alliance military armor, one you could find any alliance marine using during battle, but it had some runes already carved into it. Harry suddenly began to carve another rune as he spoke to Valerie alright, this should stabilize the rune clusters, and make them work together easier. Valerie nodded we're going to need to come up with some sort of protective plate to put over the rune clusters for now. Harry nodded as he finished carving the rune for the prototype, it's a must, but once we made sure the rune clusters work and the enchantments last, then I'll be making armors from scratch for the crew, I'll use something really strong to make sure the enchantments and runes don't get damaged. Valerie nodded still this prototype should be pretty good for a while, not only do the enchantments make it impervious to anything but they will also cycle the energy of the shields better. That will keep them strong and stable, plus it will make the recharge time way faster. This will help Shepard and the rest a lot tilde. Harry nodded, Shepard, smiled, and then spoke with what I heard so far, I have no doubt this prototype armor must be amazing already. Harry blinked while Valerie jumped a bit, Harry then chuckled well shit, you actually surprised me and made poor Valerie jump, congratulations Shepard. You're one of the lucky humans who can say they startled a vampire and live to tell the tale. Valerie pouted hey. I was distracted. Rune carving and enchanting is very serious business. Plus you were surprised to Harry. Harry smiled and nodded I don't deny that. That was my fault. I sometimes get too distracted in my crafts that I forget to pay attention to my surroundings. All creators have this flaw. Val. Valerie pouted a few seconds more but then smiled showing she wasn't really upset, Shepard however looked curious I didn't take you for an inventor Harry, that's very surprising. Harry smiled I know, it's easy for everyone to assume me to be a fighter and what not, but I have always been interested in things like forging, enchanting, alchemy, synthesis, and even technology. It all started in my childhood, in the first world I ever visited. I got my hands on a magical artifact called an alchemy pot and spent hours writing and combining all sorts of things, to make other things. It became a passion and eventually, as I learned other crafts and skills, I began to make all sorts of things and research almost everything I could get my hands on. Valerie giggles despite all of his power and crazy amounts of abilities Harry has, he's first and foremost a creator, then a teacher, and finally a father. Yeah. He can fight and destroy universes, but the fact that he can make stuff and not just destroy has made him well respected in Neo Kyoto. He doesn't belong to any guild but he's always helping all of them and making all sorts of amazing things for the benefit of our faction. Shepard smiled, he learned something new about Harry, and he can honestly say that it made him respect his friend even more. Anyone can be a killer, a soldier, or something along those lines, but not many could call themselves a creator and of the respect Harry does from his people and his loved ones. It was something to be respected and admired, at least it was to Shepard, so he smiled and then said, I see, that's amazing Harry, makes me glad to have you in my corner. Harry smiled just wait until we explain what the armor can do, it's not completely ready but give me some time in this time dilation and I should have it ready before the next mission. 
Shepard nodded that sounds great, so tell me, what were you working on with this armor? Harry nodded and began to explain well, back on the planet we found Liara, I noticed how your shields would take the brunt of the damage from attacks on you. Well until they shattered, that's when I noticed the recharge time and how many shots it usually takes for shields to shatter. Harry stood up and then went on his desk, he then opened a hard light hologram, showing Shepard taking fire and then having to take cover when his shields shattered, then it showed the time it took for them to recover. Harry pointed at the hard light hologram the shields can take about 7 shots from a pistol, about 2 shots from a shotgun at close range, 15 shots non-stop fire from an assault rifle, and 1 shot from a sniper rifle. Valerie then spoke up of course, this is just using standard issue weaponry, mods, different brands, and customization also affect the amount of damage shots due to the shields. That also applies to the armor as well, we used a standard issue alliance military armor to start with, it has the lowest specs as well, which gave us a base in numbers we could work on. Harry nodded and then walked over to the armor he was enchanting, while Shepard looked very interested in this data, he inwardly wondered if anyone else ever thought to do this kind of observation on armor and weaponry before. Meanwhile, Harry reached the armor and continued to speak this also applies to humans only, we haven't had the chance to test other types of armor. Le Fay is gathering the data though, soon as she's done, we will start to work on armor for everyone. Shepard nodded all of this must have taken you quite a while to do, and all of this research as well, I hope you guys aren't overworking yourselves. Harry smiled at Shepard you don't have to worry, we don't need to sleep or even eat, we do so just for the taste and to be lazy, but we also make sure we rest. Shepard nodded, it was good to know that Harry and the girls weren't overworking themselves, Harry then began to explain what he had done to the armor alright, the enchantments on this armor will make it far more efficient. Starting with the energy absorption and cycling enchantments, the energy absorption enchantment will actually absorb any type of energy that hits the armor and store it, energy like kinetic force qualifies as well. Then the energy cycling comes into play here, this enchantment will cycle the energy stored into the armor and cycle it around to feed the shields, this will double their durability and increase their restoration and regeneration speeds. Even if the shields shatter, they will regenerate in about half a second soon after, in other words, the more you get shot at, the more effective and powerful the shields become. Shepard widened his eyes in shock, what Harry had done was already enough to put any armor out there in the market, to absolute shame. Valerie then spoke up of course, there's a limit on how much energy the enchantments can absorb and contain, so it's still a good idea to dodge and not get shot at all. Though we already have a good idea of how to fix that issue, the only problem we have is the materials used in the manufacturing of the armor, they don't lend themselves to enchanting. Shepard looked a bit intrigued but soon decided to ask about what he just heard what do you mean? Harry wants the one who decided to answer, Shepard's question well these armors are assembly line made, so they lack the intent and effort that a handmade armor would have. When it comes to magic, emotions play a big part in everything, which is why enchanters either make their own artifacts or have someone else personally make them. These armors are almost emotionally dead, so enchantments do not tend to either work well or even attach themselves to them, luckily I can make it work for the prototype. But when it's time to create the real deal, I'm going to have to make the armor from scratch, as I did with the pistol. Shepard stayed silent for a few seconds, I never thought I would ever learn about something like magic, honestly? It all sounds so complicated. Harry smiled magic is a science on its own. With all sorts of branches that someone could take and learn from, it usually takes many years to master a branch which is why we have different guilds back home. Each guild focuses on one branch and teaches the next generation of people, interested in learning that branch, it's one of the reasons our home is far more advanced than the rest of the other factions. Shepard crossed his arms I see, but if takes many years to become a master of a branch of magic, then why are you a master of many? Valerie giggled he might not look it, but Harry is very old Shepard. He has lived multiple lifetimes and has had the time to learn and master all kinds of things. Shepard looked a bit surprised but not by much I see, I figure that was the case, there are times when you speak, where it seems that you're talking from experience. It certainly adds weight to your words and that makes others listen to you, I've seen it happen to Rex and Taylor. Harry scratched his head but smiled well, most of the time I do speak from experience, I've seen a lot in my life, Shepard. Trust me when I say, that there are not many situations that would surprise me. Shepard nodded I bet, but that does make me curious about everything you've seen, the places you've been, and the things you've learned along the way. Unlike any long-lived species we have in this galaxy, 
You have gone to other realities and met all kinds of people, I can't even imagine the sort of things you must have seen. Harry looked up for a bit but then smiled it certainly has been an interesting journey, and I'm more than happy to tell you some about it later if you want, but right now we went on a whole different tangent Harry lightly laughed for now let's get back to the armor okay? Shepard nodded I'm looking forward to learning more about your life Harry, but yes let's get back to the armor. Harry smiled and then went back to explaining the armor enchantments alright, besides those two enchantments, I also added a few useful ones. The standard self-cleaning and self-repairing enchantments, along with passive healing enchantments and just to make sure, an environmental protection enchantment as well. I would have added more, but the armor and the materials it's made out of, wouldn't be able to sustain them. We already tried on a few more, but the enchantments overwhelmed the armor and it began to quickly deteriorate, so six enchantments is the safest number for now, or at least until I start making new ones from scratch. Shepard was definitely awed at what Harry had done, to a standard issue alliance armor, everything he had already done, was enough to make the armor far more efficient than any other out there in the galaxy. Valerie then spoke once Harry starts making armor, you will be able to make it stronger and even add more enchantments, but that will take some time and research. Plus he also wants to try materials of this world and see what works best, while Lofi is also doing research on alien physiology, which will help Harry make the best possible armor he can for everyone, that way you guys won't be so squishy. Shepard sweat dripped at being called squishy, but he couldn't argue with Valerie about it, especially since to her a vampire, humans and aliens might seem really squishy. Harry chuckled well yes. It will take some time, but at the very least I can have some prototypes ready soon enough, now, let's get to the real fun stuff. How was the pistol? Shepard nodded and took out the pistol Harry had made and put it on the table this was single-handedly the best firearm I have ever used in my whole career. It's stable, accurate, the recoil is almost null, and not having to worry about overheating, let me relax and really focus on the battles, but it's not only that, it was also very powerful, one shot was enough to shatter shields, geth were easily taken down with one shot after, well except the big ones, those usually took more than three shots. Then against live enemies, well you saw what the pistol did to that battlemaster Krogan that tried to get in our way. Valerie walked over to the pistol and picked it up. She then took it to Harry's desk and put it inside some sort of machine Shepard didn't recognize, soon enough she turned it on and a hard light hologram of the pistol materialized onto the top of Harry's desk. Then all sorts of data began to scroll down on a hard light hologram screen that appeared behind the pistol hologram, and both Valerie and Harry began to read through it. Valerie hummed and then began to speak looks like the enchantments and materials held on, there's no deterioration either, the pistol is still working at 100%. Harry nodded it seems, that its performance was also above expectations, I really expected it to not work that well, but boy do I even surprise myself sometimes. Valerie giggled and then turned her head towards Shepard we already prepared two upgrades for the pistol Shepard, but can only do one at the time. Shepard raised an eyebrow why? Valerie immediately began to explain we need to see how well the upgrades and new enchantments mesh with the current ones, and if changes in the gun need to be made. It's safer to add one upgrade at a time, so we can collect data and see its performance, it will also help us see what needs to be improved. Shepard nodded understood, what upgrades are available. Harry smiled and then proceeded to tell Shepard what could be done to the pistol the two available upgrades right now are the charge shot and special ammo swap. Shepard raised an eyebrow and was immediately curious about what the upgrades would do. Harry noticed this and immediately explained charge shot does as advertised, it will allow you to hold down the trigger and charge a single shot with energy. Once you let go of the trigger, the pistol will then shoot a big orb of energy, this orb will explode on impact and causes the same amount of damage as a grenade. Shepard nodded and began to think about how useful the charge shot would be for clearing big groups of targets what about the special ammo swap? Harry smiled and then began to explain I noticed how there are different kinds of ammo available to use in this world, depending on the enemy and situation, a different kind of ammunition would come in handy. However, the loading time it takes to swap ammunition, could be dangerous and even not worth the effort, so I created a whole new enchantment. The special ammo swap will allow you to swap ammo via voice command, the enchantments will swap ammo in a second after the command is given, pretty cool huh? Shepard was once again very surprised and impressed. Having different types of ammunition is a must for everyone, but most would equip the ammo before beginning a mission. It would take too much time and would be too dangerous, to swap ammo mid-mission, so if some sort of unknown enemy were to appear, then that would be some pretty bad news to them. 
It was what had happened in Eden Prime, no one expected synthetics and zombies to attack, if they did they would have equipped adequate ammo and the Geth wouldn't have been able to get away with what they did. But everyone in Eden Prime got caught with their pants down, and there wasn't much anyone could have done against the Geth and their sheer numbers. Shepard looked down and began to think about which upgrade to choose, both Valerie and Harry were more than happy to let him think, so they went back to reading the data. A few minutes later, Shepard came to a decision Harry? Harry turned his head towards Shepard you decided which upgrade you want? Shepard nodded I'll take the special ammo swap, tactically speaking, that enchantment would be the most useful to us right now, after all, we aren't just fighting Geth. Harry smiled and nodded alright, the upgrade will be done by the time we go to the next mission. Shepard grinned and was feeling a bit excited, he then decided to ask Harry something do you think you can make pistols for the rest of the squad? Harry grinned already on it. I needed the data on your pistol first, but I had already begun to make the components for more pistols, though I will have to get more materials to make one for Yara. But other than that, I should have pistols for everyone soon, Valerie is also working on researching the other type of weaponry as well, so soon we'll be able to add the same enchantments to all kinds of firearms. Shepard nodded and grinned that's great, thank you, Harry, everything you've done will really help us in our mission to make Saren pay. Harry nodded no problem Shepard, always happy to help. Dash. Sometime after, Shepard decided to check on the crew, so Harry went with him as well, Valerie stayed behind to continue to work on the upgrade and armor, everything was practically done anyways, all she had to do is scan and keep watch to make sure the enchantments mesh well together. So after coming out of Harry's pocket dimension, both Harry and Shepard went to the mess hall first and see who was there right now, they found Kay Iden just finishing eating. So they sat in front of him and greeted him, Kaiden smiled at both of them commander, Harry, what are you both up to? Harry smiled, while Shepard nodded I'm just checking on some of you, how is everything? Kaiden nodded well, things were pretty close down there in that Prothean ruin, we were all very worried about you guys. Until we saw a massive ass dragon burst out of the ground and fly into the sky, I'm pretty sure someone screamed like a little girl when we saw that. Harry chuckled and shook his head in amusement it wasn't my intention to scare anyone, things got a bit rough down there so I decided to do something about it, luckily I was just in time. Valerie, and I can survive a lava bath, but Shepard and the others? Well, it wouldn't have been pretty. Kaiden nodded no doubt, glad you were there to help them, Harry. Harry smiled while Shepard nodded in agreement, he then turned his head towards Kaiden what do you think of everything that went down? Kaiden hummed for a few seconds but then said is this an official evaluation, commander, or off the record? Shepard sighed but had an amused look in his eyes a Lenka when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. Kaiden nodded and had a small smile on his face that's a generous attitude, okay, I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but the council is still acting up and not being very helpful. I dread to think what sort of attitude we would have to deal with if Harry wasn't here, but all of this shows that something is still off, sorry, Commander, there's writing on the wall but someone isn't reading it. Harry nodded yeah, I'm very well aware that they're helping because they're afraid of me, they don't particularly believe everything we're telling them, but at least they aren't getting in our way. Shepard sighed and nodded in agreement to Harry's words, he then said, the council doesn't want to believe something is wrong, I call it human nature but... Kaiden nodded yeah, I hear you both, I. It just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should have seen this coming, sorry if I got too informal, protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bart. Shepard shook his head, he wasn't one to worry about protocol much anyways, Harry looked up and sighed this isn't the first time I've seen leaders, politicians, and important individuals be stubborn and ignorant. You're right, someone in their position should have seen this coming a mile away, but living beings are always too ready to dismiss things right in front of their faces if it means they don't have to deal with it. It's an irresponsible way of doing things, especially because the lives of many are in their hands, but sometimes there's nothing we can do to make people take their heads out of their asses. All we can do, is our best to prevent things from happening, even if it means becoming enemy number one. Kaiden looked down and began to think about what Harry just said. It certainly made sense what he told him, though it still didn't make him happy about the situation. Chapter 146 Chapter 146 Kaiden seemed focused on thinking about what Harry just said, and both the commander and Harry let him take a bit of time to think, but Shepard was curious about what Kaiden had said about Bart so he decided to ask what did they teach you in this Bart? 
Caden snapped out of it and looked up to Shepard, he then began to explain biotic acclimation and temperance. Didn't last past the airlock, to the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Caden suddenly stopped and then shook his head sorry hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities, so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb, beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Harry raised an eyebrow and then frowned this is giving me some major bad vibes. You don't think it was accidental, do you? Kaiden looked down my mother was downwind of a transport crash, it was before there was human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kanatiks was running out of first-gen subjects until they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits showed up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on jump zero. Harry narrowed his eyes yeah, that definitely doesn't sound accidental. What is a biotic anyways, and why were they very interested in them? Shepard flinched a bit damn, I completely forgot to explain that to you, Harry, I'm sorry, I really should have told you about biotics a while ago. Harry smiled at Shepard it's fine, you've been very busy with everything going on, but how about you tell me about biotics now? Shepard nodded and immediately began to explain as best as he could all right, biotics is the ability of some life forms to create mass effect fields using element zero nodules embedded in body tissues. These powers are both accessed and augmented by using bioamps, biotic individuals can knock enemies over from a distance, lift them into the air, generate gravitational vortices to tear obstacles or enemies apart, or create protective barriers. Like Kaiden just explained, human biotics are somewhat recent, but there has been biotics in the galaxy before, for example, all Asari are naturally biotic from birth, though I heard not all choose to develop their abilities. Biotics of other species are individuals who were exposed to dust form element zero, or colloquially, ezo, in the womb and subsequently developed ezo nodules throughout their nervous systems. These nodules can generate mass effect fields when energized by electrical impulses from the brain. Harry hummed it sounds like space and gravity manipulation, you said that humans can become abiotic with exposure to ezo, I think you call it while in the womb right? Shepard nodded, but Kaiden was the one who explained further yes, but it's not guaranteed, there's a chance nothing happens or the children develop tumors, that isn't pretty. Shepard nodded though even if nothing happens at birth, some of the exposed children might develop biotics as they reach their teens or with further exposure to Ezo. Harry looked down like the mutants. Shepard and Kaiden did understand what Harry meant by mutants but decided to quietly let him think, Harry then looked up and nodded all right. These biotics sound similar to some things we can do with magic and other abilities. Though on a much smaller scale, still, it's something to keep in mind, I had seen some of these powers, which is why I decided to add energy absorption wards to the armor, good thing I did too. It might not be able to fully stop the effects, but at least it would take quite a few hits before you actually feel it. Shepard nodded, while Kaiden seemed intrigued. It sounded like Harry was making some new toys, and everyone had been very impressed with the pistol he made for Shepard, so now he was a bit curious and excited about what he could be making now. Shepard smiled at Harry, and then turned his head towards Kaiden and decided to continue asking him questions jump zero, is Gagarin station, right? What is it like? Kaiden nodded yeah, that's the official name, biggest and farthest facility we had for decades, right in the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields, it was a sterile research platform when I was there. It certainly didn't sound like Kaiden had many fond memories of the place, Shepard and Harry could only imagine the sort of things they did to those kids in a place like that, Shepard then decided to try and change the subject there were other kids in the same boat right? At least you weren't alone out there. Kaiden smiled and nodded that's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though, it was a research platform then, and Kanatiks kept Jump Zero off the extra net to prevent leaks. Harry smiled sounds like you had plenty of time to get to know each other. Kaiden nodded yeah, we'd sit around and bullshit every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey, and her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell, beautiful but not stuck up about it, I think you both would have liked her? Harry and Shepard both smiled at Kaiden. it certainly did sound like Rana was someone they could get along with, Shepard then said sounds like she was someone special to you. Kaiden nodded she was, maybe she felt the same way, but... 
things never fell together, draining, you know. Harry sighed that sucks, maybe you'll meet her again, who knows right? Kaiden smiled and nodded, Shepard then decided to ask Jump Zero is a long way from home, what was it like? Kaiden shook his head the Grand Gateway to Humanity looks a lot better in the vids, but that's my own baggage commander, no bearing in this. Shepard slightly shook his head Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your commander. Kaiden nodded and sheepishly chuckled I appreciate that commander, I just don't want you to think that I'm a... A whiner, besides, I've got my past squared away. Shepard nodded, while Harry just smiled well if you ever want to talk or just hang out then come to us anytime. Kaiden smiled and nodded to Harry, he very much appreciated the fact a dragon god wanted to hang out with him for some odd reason. After that conversation, Harry and Shepard then decided to keep checking on some of the crew, so they said their goodbyes to Kaiden for now and then left. Dash. Shepard decided to take Harry to speak with Dr. Chak was, that way they could get to know each other better, plus he maybe would also like to learn more about the ship's doctor too. So they both went to the medical bay of the Normandy, they found the doctor working on some paperwork on a table in the medical bay, so Shepard and Harry approached her. Dr. Chak was heard them walk towards her and looked up from her paperwork, she smiled and then said what can I do for you commander, Harry? Shepard smiled and then said, just having Harry here get to know more of the crew. Harry smiled and waved at Dr. Chak was nice to see you again doctor. Dr. Chak was smiled and nodded it's nice to finally get to talk to you Mr. Potter, we talked a bit when you brought Commander Shepard after the whole thing with the beacon. I must admit, I'm very curious about you and the girls, it's not every day you get to meet a dragon god, a vampire, a mage, and a yokai. All mythological beings that have been written about in all kinds of cultures and mythology, some having root in the oldest of cultures, the sheer knowledge all of you might have must be amazing. Harry chuckled well, the girls are new generation beings, they're young so they might not have ancient knowledge of old cultures, but they definitely have a lot to talk about. I'm old but have access to all sorts of knowledge through some of my abilities, but if you want to know more, we can have some tea and talk about it in more detail later. I'm sure I can also learn a lot from you in the medical field of this world, so we both can learn from each other. Dr. Chak was nodded yes, that does sound good, I'm rather curious about this healing magic you guys can do and these gels I was told about. I've tried to ask Kanu, but every time I see her she quickly disappears though. Commander. Shepard nodded to Dr. Chak was yes. Dr. Chak was frowned a bit and then said I think someone brought their pet fox on the ship, I've seen it walking around whenever I try to find Kanu. I swear the little thing is laughing at me or something. Shepard raised an eyebrow and began to think of who would sneak a fox on the ship, Harry however chuckled and shook his head, which made the commander and doctor stared at him in confusion. Harry got himself under control and then smiled at Dr. Chak was I'm sorry doctor, but I think Kanu has been pranking you a bit, that fox you've seen is Kanu. Doctor deadpanned at Harry for a few seconds before signing I should have known. She does have fox ears and tails. Ugh how shameful, to have been tricked so easily. Shepard smiled and tried not to laugh, it was a pretty harmless prank but a funny one nonetheless, Harry just laughed a little more Kanu is a kitsune, a fox yokai, a nine-tailed fox to be exact, the thing about kitsune is that they're very mischievous by nature. Kanu being raised as the princess of Kyoto is a bit more mellow than other kitsunes, but she does like to trick or pull pranks once in a while. She must have noticed you wanted to ask her something and decided to mess with you a bit, I hope you don't take it too personally though. Dr. Chak was smiled and shook her head no, it's actually fine, it really is my fault I got tricked so easily, still I would really like to talk to her about this healing magic she mentioned. Harry nodded I'll ask her to come to talk to you, and I'll even send love fate too, she's one of the most talented mages we have, she will be able to explain things way more precisely to you. Chak was nodded and smiled, she even seemed a bit excited as well, Shepard smiled and then decided to ask the doctor about something he's been wondering about for a while now, you know I've wondered about this for a while, how did you end up serving on an alliance ship? Dr. Chak was crossed her arms and answered Shepard's question I enlisted right out of Mt. school, Earth always seemed boring to me, too safe, too secure, I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls, turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse, and the Alliance always needs good doctors, so I stayed on to do my part. Harry smiled an adventurous woman after my own heart. How charming. 
Dr. Chuck was lightly laughed and nodded at Harry I really was quite the spitfire when I was younger, I can't say that it hasn't been a fun adventure. Shepard smiled as well and then asked ever think you made the wrong choice? Chuck was hummed for a few seconds sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on earth, or maybe taking a position at one of the new centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working with soldiers, if I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Harry chuckled a good doctor cares about their patients, no matter how unruly they are. Chuck was grinned and nodded, Shepard felt that it was a jab directed at him and his crew, so he quickly changed the subject how well do you know the lieutenant? Chuck was tilted her head and then shook it I'd never worked with him before this mission, but he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself though, maybe because of the headaches, it's not easy being an L2. Both Harry and Shepard looked intrigued, though Shepard was a bit worried compared to Harry who was a bit lost on the new term. Shepard asked for more details what does that have to do with anything? Dr. Chuck was immediately began to explain well most biotics now use the L3 implants, Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration, and sometimes there are complications. Shepard did not like what he was hearing and Harry wasn't liking that at all either, Shepard however needed more information what kind of complications? Chuck was side severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain, there's a long list of horrific side effects, Kaiden's lucky, he just gets migraines. Harry frowned son of a bitch, Dr. Chuck was, can you please send me more information on these L2 implants, the girls and I will try to help Kaiden, no one should have to live with those kinds of risks or with constant migraines. Dr. Chuck was nodded I'll send you all the data I have to your Omni tool too, I hope you can come up with something to help Kaiden, nothing has been made to help those with L2 implants. Harry nodded don't worry, we'll do something to help Kaiden. With that promise being made, both Shepard and Harry said their goodbyes and continued speaking with the crew and squad. Dash. Since they were close by, they decided to check on Liara, so they went to a room at the far end of the medical bay and found her working on something on a computer. Liara heard them come in, and stopped what she was doing, she quickly got off her seat and stood in front of them Commander, Mr. Potter, were you both coming to check up on me? Shepard nodded yes, I was a bit worried about you but you look much better, how are you feeling? Liara slightly smiled and then nodded to Shepard Dr. Chuck was assures me I am going to be fine, I was impressed with her knowledge of Vasari physiology. Shepard nodded you're in good hands, Dr. Chuck was knows what she's doing. Harry nodded experience speaks for itself, though the girls and I will have to pick the doctor's brain when we need to know something about alien physiology, didn't know she had that in-depth knowledge. Shepard smiled at Harry I'll tell her to help you guys with any sort of information you need. Harry nodded, Liara seemed very curious about what reason Harry might have to know about alien physiology but decided against asking, she was still new to the crew and didn't feel it was her place to ask. Though she did have something to say I never properly thanked you both for saving me from the geth if you guys hadn't shown up. Shepard sighed and nodded I'm just glad we got there in time. Harry scratched his head and nodded as well the moment we saw geth on the planet, we rushed over to find you, we knew that if they got to you first then you would have been killed or taken, though at first, we thought that Saren was interested in something within the ruins. Liara nodded I'm glad you found me fast then. I know you took a chance bringing me on board this ship, I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me, but I am not like Benizia, I will do whatever I can to help you stop Siren, I promise. Shepard smiled at Liara don't worry Liara, I trust you, I know you won't let me down. Liara seemed a bit happy now, and Harry couldn't help to feel glad about it, he couldn't do anything about the crew's mistrust of her, that was something her actions and attitude will change with time, but for now, at the very least, she's more optimistic now. Shepard nodded and then decided it was time to ask some hard questions do you know why Benitsia joined up with Saren? Liara frowned and shook her head I don't understand it, she was always outspoken about the need for Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run, at least I hope so. Harry frowned when Liara's demeanor turned sad this must confuse and hurt you huh? Liara nodded none of this makes any sense to me, I have not spoken to Benizia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her, something changed. Shepard frowned while Harry crossed his arms, maybe she's been manipulated? Perhaps lied to? We'll have to see what's going on with her, but if she's really an enemy, we can't go easy on her. Liara nodded I understand. Thank you for at least believing me when I say that something is up. Harry nodded no problem, 
You know her best, so if you say that she's not acting like herself then I better damn well listen. Liara smiled, Harry then decided to ask her some questions say, can you tell me about the Asari? I'm rather curious about your kind Liara. Liara smiled and immediately began to answer Harry's question we were the first species to discover the citadel, we were instrumental in forming the council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community, each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seem to understand us, the galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Harry raised an eyebrow rumors? Liara blushed a bit but still answered Harry's question most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals, my species is monogendered, male and female have no real meaning to us. We still require a partner to reproduce, this second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Harry rubbed his chin as he thought about what he just heard interesting, this raises a few questions though. Can you tell me more about it? How can your species mate with anyone? Liara shook her head mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it, physical contact may or may not be involved, but it's not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental, our physiology allows us to meld with other beings, and we can touch the depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species, we share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters, it is how we learn to grow as a species, and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. Harry nodded and what about the other parent, what happens to him or her? Liara explains further right away every relationship is different, some unions are a single encounter, with both parents parting ways afterward, others can be more long term, sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Harry nodded, this sort of reminded him how Athena would have children, though it seems the Asari were far more responsible with their children than her. It was interesting to learn, that an alien species could do, practically the same thing a goddess could do to procreate. Though that did make Harry curious about Liara's dad do you know who your mother chose as her partner? Liara shook her head she rarely spoke of her partner, though my further if you want to use the term, was another Asari. Harry nodded, all this was very interesting and made him wonder more about the Asari, but for now, he would just ask some other questions he was curious about Asari are a long-lived species, what happens when your partner dies? Liara looked down a bit, but she still answered the question few sapient species live as long as my kind, we have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners, instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them, and even when they're gone. A part of them lives on in us, the union is a connection that transcends time and space. Harry smiled at Liara and nodded I see, that's actually a bit poetic, Asari as a species and as a whole are a very interesting species. Liara smiled and was glad that Harry seemed to be curious about her species, not many took the time to ask questions and learn, they rather assume or come up with their own conclusions. Still, she also was curious about him and the girls she has caught a glimpse of in the Normandy, plus there was that thing that happened at the ruins as well Harry, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Harry raised an eyebrow at Liara but nodded sure, shoot. Liara smiled and then proceeded with her questions what was the creature you transformed into? I never knew a human could do that. Shepard chuckled and shook his head we can't, if we did, the galaxy would have been terrified of us. Harry smiled at Shepard while Liara seemed confused, so Harry decided to explain well the thing is, I'm not human, at least not anymore, I might look like one but in reality, I'm a dragon god. Liara gaped a bit and stared at Harry with wide eyes full of surprise a dragon god? I don't know what a dragon is, but a god? Harry nodded the dragon is a being born of power, they are power in physical form and are on the top of the food chain above even normal gods. A dragon god is a dragon that has ascended past its physical body and gained conceptual control over something, dragon gods are beings beyond understanding, with power capable of destroying planets and even solar systems. I'm however an outlier, a dragon god is usually born one, but I started as a human, became a dragon vian, then a dragon lord, then became a dragon god, and then finally became a true dragon. But to simplify things, let's just call what I'm a dragon god, anyways, because I climbed my way to where I am from a human, learned all kinds of skills, spells, and techniques, I gained many conceptual domains. This makes me into an extremely powerful dragon god, one capable of both destroying and creating a whole universe if I so choose to do so, I'm the most powerful dragon god there is because of the sheer amount of abilities I possess. 
Liara was staring at Harry in stunned silence, and the dragon god was more than happy to let her take her time to digest everything he told her, Shepard himself was also very surprised with what he had learned wait, you were human? Harry smiled and nodded I was, a long time ago, thanks to a very cheerful and caring goddess, I became a Dragovian, a special type of dragonoid or in other words a half-human, half-dragon species. I have traveled the multiverse for a very long time and in that long time I grew in power and evolved past my limits on many occasions, my dragon form has also changed and evolved as I grew. Shepard shook his head wow, Harry, just how powerful are you? Harry hummed as he began to think about that question, there were times in his journey when he would ask that very same question, though it was more of a, whether he was powerful to beat this person or that other person whenever he asked that about himself. At some point, he stopped caring and just focused on getting stronger and mastering his skills, but now that Shepard had raised that question, he didn't know how to answer it well, that's a hard question to answer. I know I can destroy and create universes, but I also know of another being who can also do that, right now he's still a bit stronger than me, but I'm catching up quickly to him. Even if he is, some of the skills and abilities I have, are specifically tailored to killing beings like him, plus the conceptual being known as death is on my side, she can kill anything. Shepard deadpanned at Harry Harry, you can't just keep dropping bomb after bomb like that. Not only are you disgustingly powerful, you're telling me that death, the death is not only a woman but on your side? What does that even mean? Harry shrugged one of my titles is the master of death and it's exactly as it says, I have complete and total control of the very concept of death and in turn death herself. Not like I made use of that title much, but it's there, also death is a very beautiful and adorable woman, she's also very sweet to me and the family. Shepard just stared at Harry in silence, until a thump snapped him out of it, and made him and Harry turn to see where that sound had come from. Only to see Liara on the floor and unconscious. Harry sheepishly chuckled and scratched his head oops, looks like that was a bit too much information for Liara. Shepard sighed you think? Dash. Harry and Shepard, took Liara to the medical bay and laid her on one of the beds, though Dr. Chakwas was giving them the stink eye because she was unconscious, she still went to check on her. Both Harry and Shepard took advantage of her distraction and escaped the medical bay and headed to the elevator, both of them decided to check on the crew hanging out on the lower deck of the Normandy. After arriving there they both went to speak with Taylor, who they found in the engine room, they also saw LaFay speaking with the engineers there but she seemed busy right now. So they approached Taylor. she heard them coming and turned around to face them hey guys. Shepard and Harry both noticed that she seemed down for some reason, Harry decided to ask her if she was okay you seemed down, are you okay Taylor? Taylor tilted her head I don't know, your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer, but I just sort feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smoothly it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet, how do you even sleep at night? Shepard smiled and looked amused I find it rather peaceful, don't worry, you'll get used to it. Taylor shook her head but it's more than just silence, this ship feels so empty, it's like half the crew is missing. Back home I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage, I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds, now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Harry smiled I see, you're a bit homesick, the Normandy is a small ship, so the amount of people here and the quietness of its system must be bothering you, it's normal to feel like that though. Taylor nodded yeah, I'm starting to wonder if the pilgrimage is really about this, all of this has given me a whole new perspective on my people and culture, especially talking with Harry and the girls. You know, there's always a few who do go on their pilgrimage and never return, I always assumed something bad happened to them, but maybe they just wanted something different. Harry nodded and smiled during my journey across the multiverse, there were times where I was reluctant to move, and there were times I even stayed on a world for a very long time. Saying goodbye, leaving a place you're comfortable and happy, and having to leave all of that, is hard, sometimes you just become too attached and come to love the place you stay in, it becomes home to you. Taylor nodded, she can understand what Harry was telling her, it did explain why some of the Quarians who left on their pilgrimage, never returned. Shepard decided to ask something that he became curious about right now you do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? Taylor nodded I could never abandon my people, Shepard, I will go back eventually, but we have to stop Saren first, otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Harry smiled we'll stop him, but for now, if you can't sleep you can ask the girls or me for help, we have potions or magic spells that can help you fall asleep. Taylor nodded that sounds good, though I don't know if I can take a potion. 
it might make me sick, but a spell might be safe, at least until I get used to the silence of the ship. Harry nodded and then both the commander and he left Taylor. They saw that Le Fay was done speaking with the engineers and so they decided to speak with her. Le Fay sensed them approaching and smiled at them, she quickly gave Harry a small kiss on the lips before speaking hey guys, what are you up to? Shepard smiled we're making some runs and speaking with some of the crew, what do you think of the mission Le Fay? Le Fay hummed I think it was pretty close, despite Joker's dark humor, you all almost did take a swim in lava, Harry and Valerie would be fine, but the rest of you would have had a very painful death. I could say, be careful and what not, but I know full well, that on missions, unexpected things happen, and most often it's out of our hands, luckily for all of you Harry is already working on doing something to make sure all you stay alive. Shepard smiled and nodded yeah, he already showed me and explained the armors he's making, but what are you doing? Le Fay smiled I'm getting some information on the hull, vents, and specs on the ship, plus materials used on the construction. With this information, Harry and I can start on upgrading the ship and add enchantments, though we do have to experiment with a few rune clusters to see which ones work better. Shepard nodded you guys work fast, I didn't expect you to start working on this for a while. Le Fay grinned and tilted her witch's hat we're barely beginning but we should have some upgrades available soon, I'll be the one taking care of this project, while Harry works on gear, though he will be helping a lot too. Also, when we're ready to make upgrades, we're going to have to dock somewhere, rune work is delicate, and Harry and I need to be very careful, we can't risk doing it while moving, while the ship is on or in space. Shepard nodded and grinned back at Le Fay let me know when you need us to dock, I'll have Joker take us to the Citadel so you can safely work on it. Le Fay nodded and seemed excited, this was after all a big project, and she was curious about how it would work. Chapter 147, Chapter 147 After that small conversation with Le Fay and Harry left her alone so she can focus on what she was working on, after all, upgrades on the ship were important and Le Fay needed to give that project her full attention, so they decided to go talk to the rest of the crew. They found Rex and Kanu having a conversation, about what? They had no idea but with the way Rex was grinning, they could tell he was having fun. Both Shepard and Harry approached both of them and as soon as they got close both of them turned around towards them and greeted them, Kanu with a smile and Rex with a nod. Harry and Shepard greeted them back and Rex grinned as he began to speak so, we've got Saren on the run. Shepard nodded and then grinned at Rex it won't be long now, Saren's good, I'm better. Rex nodded good? He's rotten to the core. Rex then shook his head I could tell as soon as I met him. Shepard seemed surprised at the fact that Rex seemed to have met Saren before, while Harry just raised an eyebrow and said oh so you met him before? Rex nodded this was a while ago, a bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them, they said he was looking for more men too, so I checked it out. Harry hummed as he thought about what Rex just told him why would Saren be openly recruiting mercs? Rex shook his head and shrugged it wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd venture to raid ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter, our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits, and that's when I saw him. Now that caught Shepard's attention and he decided to ask more about what did Saren want with the ship? Rex shrugged I don't know what he wanted, he was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them, never spoke to anyone, I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out, didn't even wait to get paid. Kanu's ears flicked and she looked up at Rex if he gave you a bad feeling and made you feel that nervous, then he's really bad news. You're not one to be spooked like that Rex, but I now wonder what the cargo of that freighter was? Rex nodded to Kanu, he did in fact get a very bad feeling and as he said, he left quickly, but it still made him feel odd about it I don't know, all I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it, that's why I didn't mention it sooner. Shepard nodded, but now he was worried about what Saren wanted with that ship, he needed to get some more information on this do you know whose ship was it? Rex looked up and hummed as he thought back on what he knew of the ship it was a villas trading vessel, a big one, lots of guards, but they were no match for us. Not much to go on, but at least Shepard knew the type of ship and cargo it had, he still wondered what had caught Saren's attention in that ship, Harry then decided to ask that's the only time you saw him? Rex nodded yeah, didn't even know who he was, and still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you, but my instincts were right. 
Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week, every damn one. Harry huffed shit, Saren might be an asshole, but he's very good at cleaning up his tracks. Everyone nodded in agreement and stayed silent, though all of them agreed on one thing, Saren is a very cunning and careful individual and those are the most annoying people to have as enemies. Wanting to change the subject, Rex then decided to speak Can you here told me about the other races of your world Harry? Some of them sound like arrogant idiots, but I have to say, that I wouldn't mind fighting some of them. Harry grinned at Rex. Well is Krogan you're at least low to mid-class level, maybe high if you have all your gear on, but supernatural beings are dangerous because of their abilities. Most supernatural beings, have some sort of magic, plus racial skills as well, to make things even harder their physical attributes are way higher than a human's. So they'll be really hard to take down in a one-on-one -on -one fight. They're also very hard to kill for normal humans, as a Krogan you're more durable, but you're not that fast, sad to say that most would kill you before you could even blink. Rex chuckled and nodded that's what Kanu said to me, but that makes me even more excited, after all, it's not a good battle unless your life is on the line. Harry and Kanu laughed to Rex while he just smiled at both, Shepard, however, became curious about some of the things Harry mentioned, just what kind of supernatural beings are there in your world? I know dragons, yokai, vampires, and mages exist but what else is out there? Kanu smiled and then began to explain practically, whatever is in mythology exists and is real in our world, devils, angels, gods, and even fairies exist and have some sort of influence in the human world. Though Japan was able to push away any influence and presence from anything not of the yokai faction and its allies, thanks to Harry, most devils, fallen, and angels aren't even allowed to step in Japan. Shepard raised an eyebrow and turned his head towards Harry O, oh, and how did you do that and why? Wouldn't align yourself with those other races be a good thing? Harry smiled at Shepard and then shook his head, he quickly then began to explain before I joined the yokai faction, it was looked down upon and not respected by any other faction. No other supernatural race respected them and because of this, fallen angels and devils did whatever they wanted in Japan while the yokai couldn't do anything about it. Fallen angels would take over cities and cause chaos and destruction, treating yokai and Japanese citizens as tools and inferior beings, they took over stores, businesses, and other places and claimed them as their own without care for the Japanese government and the yokai faction. Devils would take over whole cities and towns, buy off the land and do whatever they wanted, they would also take any yokai and add them to their peerages. All of that was right in front of Yasaka, the leader of the yokai faction and there was nothing she could do about it, she didn't have the power nor the influence for any other faction to listen to her. So when I joined the yokai faction, and learn about all of this, I began to clean house, I made sure no other supernatural beings not allied or authorized could enter Japan, if they tried to, I would kill them and make a show of it to teach the faction leaders a lesson. Shepard hummed, while Rex excitedly grinned now this sounds like a fun time. How did you teach them a lesson? Harry? Harry smiled but it was Kanu who answered Rex's question he hunted down any supernatural being who trespassed into Japan and sent their bodies back to the leaders. In fact, he would teleport their dead and mangled bodies right on top of their desk, Harry gained a reputation for being ruthless and after a while, other supernatural beings understood that they weren't welcome in Japan. Eventually, they stopped trying to get to Japan, Harry soon after, with the help of Le Fay, raised wards over Kyoto and all Japan. Usually, only Kyoto is warded at all times, but with a snap of any of the members of the Potter household's finger, the wards can shift into war mode and all Japan would be covered by very powerful wards. Wards capable of killing even gods, this terrified the entire supernatural world and finally made them realize that the yokai faction was not to be underestimated. Over time, we rose in the ranks and became the most powerful and advanced faction in the world, we're both respected and feared because of this, but we live in peace. We don't do anything to anyone unless provoked and everyone knows that now. Rex chuckled well damn, and here I thought we Krogan were bloodthirsty and battle hungry, I got to say, I like your style, Harry. Harry smiled, while Shepard nodded, he wouldn't personally do something like that, but he could see how it would work with someone like Harry. After that, both Shepard and Harry decided to get going and left Rex to listen to more stories about Harry, from a very cheerful canoe. They saw Ashley on the workbench nearby and went to her to talk, she looked a bit pensive, so they wanted to know if she was okay. As soon as they got close, Ashley immediately turned around towards them and said Commander, you have a minute to talk? Shepard looked a bit intrigued but nodded I keep an open door policy, if you have any concerns, lay them on me. Ashley sighed and then nodded all right. Harry then spoke up before Ashley could say anything should I leave? 
this might be a private matter. Ashley smiled at Harry and shook her head. Nah, you can stay. In fact, you might offer a different perspective to what I'm about to say. Harry nodded. Ashley turned her attention to Shepard and began to explain her concerns. I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but I'm concerned about the aliens, Vakarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Shepard frowned a bit, while Harry stared at Ashley in the eyes for a few seconds, then said you don't trust them because they're not a human right? Ashley, look down this is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy, I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems, things like engines, sensors, and weapons. Shepard sighed I'm not going to lock them in sleeper pods for the whole trip, Williams. Ashley shook her head I'd be more comfortable if they didn't have access to engineering and the CIC. We humanity I mean have to learn to rely on ourselves. Harry and Shepard shared a look. Harry then turned his head towards Ashley you know, you're right, humanity should learn to rely on themselves, but there's nothing wrong with getting allies. People you can trust and they trust you back, I'm not saying you should trust everyone and everything, but a few you can fight with, is a must, there's no need to stand alone Ash. Ashley nodded I don't think we should turn down allies, I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. Shepard hummed as he thought over what Ashley just said yeah, I can see them doing something like that, I'm aware that Harry is the reason they're helping right now. They're terrified of him, but our team, our squad is a different matter, they're fighting with us, we're all working on one thing, bringing Saren down. Ashley sighed and seemed to want to say something but Harry raised his hand Ash, chill a second, and think about what you're going to say next. I just saw a spark of darkness, flare in your heart. Ashley frowned and seemed a bit taken aback by what Harry said, she didn't know what he meant by darkness in her heart, but it definitely didn't sound good, Shepard noticed all of this and then said these issues seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams, what made you think this way? Ashley frowned, but did what Harry suggested and tried to relax, she then began to explain my family's defended the alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. Both Shepard and Harry were intrigued by Ashley's family history, but to Harry, something was very evident you're not used to working with aliens, huh? Ashley nodded no, I've never worked with aliens, mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training every marine, a rifleman, every rifleman, ZG certified. However, Shepard scrunched up his brows, something about all this didn't make sense that sod, your record is spotless, and your technical scores are exemplary, you should be serving with the fleet. Ashley became nervous and said, anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. Both Commander and Dragon God, dead panned at Ashley, she wasn't fooling anyone, but they both decided to ignore how nervous she got right now. Shepard sighed and decided to change the subject and learn a bit more about Ashley you're lucky. I lost my family on mine Doyer, are you related to anyone I'd heard of? Ashley shook her head couldn't say, Commander, I read about Medoya, the Alliance screwed the pooch on that one, should have had a bigger garrison, is that why you're out here? To take the fight to the pirates? Shepard shook his head and then softly smiled no, the future of humanity is out here, there's so much we haven't seen. Ashley smiled yeah, I still remember my first field exercise on Titan, when we hit the mud. The reality hit me I'm the first person who's ever stood here, then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass, and I went face first into the muck, he spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold brooking. Harry snorted because he found the idea of Ashley face planting the mud funny, Shepard just smiled but seemed like he wanted to laugh, Ashley just rolled her eye and let Harry get his laugh out. Though Shepard suddenly laughed a bit don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison, he's the only one who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Ashley smiled oh lord, you went to the Macapa boot camp too? Yeah, Gunny Ellison's still rimming out recruits down there, kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. Harry had no idea what those words even meant, but he liked how funny they sounded, Shepard just smiled and shook his head in amusement, he then nodded and spoke to Ashley all right, I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams, but this is a multilateral mission, you're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. Ashley nodded and the grin it won't be a problem, Commander, you say jump I say how how you tell me to kiss a Trian, I'll ask which cheek. Shepard chuckled I don't think kissing Trians will be necessary. Ashley just continued to grin but shrugged at Shepard and said you never know Commander. Harry chuckled she does make a good point, anything can happen in a mission. 
Shepard rolled his eyes and shook his head don't encourage her Harry. Harry and Ashley just smiled at Shepard while he huffed at them, he then decided to ask a more serious question what do you think about the mission? Ashley hummed for a second and then responded not sure I buy Dr. Tsunye's story, about her and her mom not talking, their family, right? Shepard nodded him, I think she was honest with us, she doesn't seem like the type to lie. Harry nodded I didn't sense any lies either, in fact, she seemed rather perplexed with her mother's actions. Ashley nodded yeah, she seems like she's pretty bad at lying, too bad those ruins got destroyed, I mean they lasted thousands of years, that's impressive. Harry shrugged I can just fix them later, reverse time on the whole planet and it will be like nothing happened at all, but right now we have more important things to do. Ashley huffed Harry. The fact that you can casually just say that you can control time like that, is mildly disturbing. Shepard nodded while Harry just smiled and shrugged, soon after both Shepard and Harry then said their goodbyes to Ashley for now and then headed for the elevator, it was time to check on Joker. Dash. It didn't take long for both Shepard and Harry to arrive at the cockpit of the Normandy, Joker however, wasted no time to speak the moment he heard them coming Harry, you scared the daylights out of everyone on board you know? No one expected a big ass dragon to pop out of the ground like you did. It made me sweat something fierce thinking that you were going to take a bite out of the Normandy. Harry chuckled sorry about that, things got dicey down there, so the first thing that popped into my mind was to transform and take everyone out before they were buried in lava and rocks. Joker nodded that's true, but still, a gold and silver dragon huh? I don't think I've seen or heard of one before, maybe in an old school rebounds per game, those scales must be worth a lot though. Harry hummed for a second you know, I don't really know, I've never tried to sell one, though I try not to shed my scales around any girl, they tend to get a bit, crazy for my scales. Joker nodded yeah, I can actually see that happening. Shepard tilted his head have your girlfriend tried to get one? Harry nodded oh yes, they try all sorts of ways to get one, from legendary and godly level weapons to magic and technology, I dread to think what would happen if they were to find out that, that I shed scales sometimes. All three men suddenly got a shiver down their spines, for some reason, the idea of any girl finding out about Harry being able to shed his scales fills them with a very bad idea. Joker suddenly spoke, let's just keep that a secret. In fact let's take that information to our graves okay? Shepard and Harry nodded in agreement, Joker sighed and then decided to ask what they were doing up here so, what are you guys up to? Shepard smiled and then said, just wanted to ask about Normandy's status, how is she performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? Joker nodded she's the best ship in the fleet. If you got a pilot who knows how to handle her, balance isn't what you'd expect, takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, her power can sneak in on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average alliance pilot, commander, lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Shepard smiled while Harry grinned and said only the best can handle the wild and powerful Normandy huh? Joker nodded and grinned back at Harry damn straight. Shepard just shook his head in amusement and then decided to speak with Joker well, I like to know my crew, plus it helps Harry get accustomed and used to everyone and everything in this world, so do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Joker sighed I can see where this is going, you did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot, I'm not good, I'm not even great, I'm the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet top of my class in flight school, I earned that, all those commendations in my file, I earned every single one, those weren't given to me as a charity for my disease. Both Shepard and Harry were surprised by Joker's outburst since it came out of nowhere, but then the last thing he said hit them hard, Harry narrowed his eyes while Shepard shook his head I'm sorry Joker, I didn't even know you were sick. Joker widened his eyes and stared at Shepard in surprise for a few seconds you mean you mean you didn't know? R. Grap. Okay, I got Rolex syndrome, brittle bone disease, the bones in my legs never developed properly, they're basically hollow, too much force and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces it's hard to get around, one wrong step and crack. It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you, just don't ask me to get up and dance, unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. Harry sighed and tiredly rubbed his eyes god fucking damn it. I really wish you guys would tell me about this sort of thing right away, now I kinda want to kick you in the shin joker. Joker shook his head please don't. 
Harry just glared at Joker, while Shepard suddenly piped in I take it that with your reaction you can do something about Joker's disease? Joker widened his eyes in surprise while Harry nodded yeah, I can probably cure it and if not possible by normal or magical means, I can just use my power over reality to fix the problem with a snap of my fingers, but I need to know more about this disease first so I can come up with a safe solution. Joker immediately snapped out of his surprised state and began to explain it's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it, genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hips, thighs, and ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year, lucky for me. Modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. Harry hummed and began to silently think about what he had just heard. Meanwhile, Shepard sighed you are not going to break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Joker raised an eyebrow at Shepard. Ah, I don't fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship, better, actually, so don't worry about it. Harry suddenly spoke. I'm going to do some scanning to find the cause of the disease, but I should be able to cure it. The problem is the bones. We're going to have to banish all of them and regrow them entirely after I cure disease. Joker blinked banish my bones? Regrow them? What? Harry chuckled and then nodded yup even if I cure your disease, your bones would still be underdeveloped, so once I cure it we need to banish them and then regrow them, so you can be completely fine. Though regrowing your bones requires drinking a potion, and let me tell you, that shit tastes nasty, but you'll be perfectly fine afterward. Joker gaped while Shepard decided to ask a question how long will it take? Harry looked up as he thought about what Shepard had asked him. Curing the diseases and vanishing his bones would only take minutes, regrowing all of his bones will take two, maybe three days at most. Shepard rubbed his chin, that certainly took quite a bit of time, but he really wanted Joker to be okay. Harry noticed that and smiled Shepard, did you forget about my pocket dimension? Shepard's eyes widened as he realized what Harry meant the time dilation. Harry grinned and nodded that's right. Those two to three days would only be a few hours out here, so we wouldn't waste any time, though I still suggest we dock somewhere just to be safe. That way the fake can work on the rune clusters for the Normandy, while Joker recovers, two birds one stone. Shepard nodded yes, that's actually a great idea. What do you say Joker? Want to get a whole new set of bones? Joker grinned all I have to do is drink a nasty ass potion and I never have to worry about breaking a bone ever again? Well shit, where do I sign? Shepard and Harry chuckled, the commander then began to wonder where they should dock for now, but in the end, he decided that going to the citadel was the best idea for now alright, Joker, take us to the citadel, we will park there and have Joker treated. Plus Lef they will be able to work in peace in the citadel as well. Joker nodded and immediately sent out the coordinates to go to the citadel, a part of him was both afraid and excited about the fact, that there was a big chance that he will be cured. He never doubted Harry. He is a dragon god after all and he had seen his real dragon form, so Joker was more than willing to put his trust and faith in Harry and the girls. Meanwhile, Harry left to go to his lab to prepare everything while telepathically calling the girls so they could help with the procedure, Shepard went to his cabin to prepare to dock. Dash. A few hours later, Joker docked in the citadel and Harry went to go bring him to his workshop. He had spent the time it took to arrive at the citadel to prepare a medical room in his workshop to treat Joker. Plus the girls also helped with everything needed, so when Harry teleported into his workshop, they were ready to start treating Joker, Shepard, and Dr. Chakwas had decided to watch the procedure while everyone else waited at the Normandy. As soon as both Joker and Harry arrived, the girls floated Joker to the medical bed they had prepared as gently as possible, Lefay then immediately began to scan his body with magic, while Harry had Friday scan him as well alright Friday, give me a hard light hologram of Joker's skeletal structure. Friday immediately responded, right away boss. Friday scanned Joker right away and soon after, a hard light copy of his skeleton materialized in front of Harry, Dr. Chak was gaped a bit at seeing that amazing. I've never seen anything like that. Shepard nodded. They were watching Joker's skeleton in real live action, they could even see it move with every breath he took and that was something Shepard hadn't even seen before. Le Fay hummed and began to read out loud the results of her magical scanning definitely genetic. It seems that it got passed over from your dad's side of the family Joker. But it's dormant in your genetic code. You just had some very bad luck to have been born with it active. I can see in my scanning that the chances of that happening to your future children are really small. 
Joker side story of my life. Lefe smiled at Joker don't worry, we'll make sure you'll be fine and any risk of passing it down to your children is null. Joker nodded and smiled at Lefe. Meanwhile Harry stared at Joker's skeleton and frowned shit. You weren't kidding Joker. Your bones really are hollow. And the sheer amount of fractures on your bones is insane. How are you not screaming and squirming in pain? Is a miracle. This must hurt a lot. Joker just tiredly smiled at Harry you get used to it. Harry sighed and shook his head yeah. You do. He should know better than anyone how much someone can get used to the pain after all, but it still made him feel bad for his new friend, he was rescued by Ishkigal from his days filled with nothing but pain. But Joker? He had to live with his disease for a lot of years and even still, he was able to succeed in life, it certainly made Harry respect the pilot of the Normandy don't worry Joker, we'll have you cured and with a whole new set of bones soon. Joker grinned nice, I'll be able to finally take those salsa lessons I've always wanted. The girls giggled while Harry chuckled at Joker's joke, Shepard just smiled while the doctor just huffed and shook her head in exasperation. Kanu then spoke, All right, first we'll be getting rid of this disease, I'll constantly heal you just in case your body reacts negatively, Harry will cure you. Joker nodded, Kanu summoned her key blade, and her body was suddenly engulfed in golden light as she began to chant come forth, O oh, illumination of life. Healing circle. Kanu pointed her key blade toward Joker. Beneath him a golden magic circle spread from his body and began to let out a soft golden glow over Joker's body. Joker smiled wow, this feels nice, warm. Kanu smiled as she held the spell on so it kept going, Lefe then pointed her hand over to Joker just in case auto life. Joker glowed white for a second and then the light dissipated from his body, leaving a glowing white halo over his head. Shepard and Dr. Chuck was raised an eyebrow at that, Shepard decided to ask what had happened what was that? Harry smiled that was resurrection magic, an advance one at that, once a person is tagged by it, he or she will come back to life once, as soon as they died. It's usually used in battle but it's also very useful with medical procedures, where there's always a risk of dying, a sort of a second chance just in case something goes wrong. Shepard nodded that sounds very useful actually. Harry nodded it is, but like I said before, I'd rather not let anyone get over-reliant with resurrection magic. A soul can be brought back a number of times before it begins to deteriorate. Death is not something you can easily escape unscathed, she's very serious about her job after all. Valerie smiled though she lets Harry get away with anything, in fact, Harry is the only one who can bring back a soul as many times as he wants with almost no deterioration. He doesn't like abusing the permission and care, death has for him though, so try not to die, Shepard, okay? Shepard nodded. He did agree that it wasn't good to grow to reliant on Harry's abilities, that path led to disaster the moment Harry leaves or he get too busy with something. Harry smiled at Shepard and then turned his head towards Valerie Val. You keep an eye on the hard light hologram and let me know if you see anything weird. Valerie nodded. Harry then turned his head towards Lefay Lefay. You monitor his condition with magic. Lefay nodded leave it to me. Harry nodded and then turned his head towards Joker alright. I'm going to cure your disease Joker, let me know if anything feels weird okay? Joker nodded, while Harry reached over Joker's chest and placed his hand over it, he then closed his hand as he began to locate and destroy the disease as carefully as he could. Dr. Chakwas was very impressed with how careful and thorough Harry and the girls are, there was this sense of professionalism in everything they do and it made her curious about it. She was also surprised with how careful they were being. She knew that Harry didn't need to be careful, that he knew what he was doing, but they still decided to do anything they can to prevent anything odd or any complications from arising. She was beginning to ask herself just how advanced the medical field was in Harry's home world. Chapter 148 Chapter 148 Harry soon cured Joker of his disease, though Joker didn't feel any different right now. As soon as Harry finished curing Joker, he quickly summoned his elder wand all right, you no longer have the disease. But now comes the tricky part, I'm going to vanish your bones and then you'll drink a potion to regrow them, this is going to be all sorts of uncomfortable so after you take the potion we'll put you to sleep. By the time you wake up, you'll be better than ever and completely cured of any problems the disease caused over the years. Joker nodded and grinned and Harry I'm ready, let me have it. Harry chuckled and then nodded, he quickly waved his wand over Joker's body, while he snapped his fingers with his free hand. He engulfed Joker in a stasis-like ward, to prevent his organs from moving around inside his boneless body. With everything held in place to prevent anything from happening, 
Harry then vanished Joker's entire skeletal structure. Lefe then quickly took out a bottle of Skell Grow and opened it. She then made the potion inside float out of the bottle and then made it go towards Joker's mouth. Kunu gently opened Joker's mouth and Lefe guided the liquid into it. Joker grimaced at the taste, but as soon as he drank all of it, Valerie put him to sleep with a spell, and so Joker was now completely asleep and having his bones regrown. Harry smiled and put away his elder wand all right, now we wait two days or so, which will be around three hours outside of my workshop, all we can do now is let him rest and let the potion do its work. Shepard nodded and sighed in relief, Dr. Chuck was nodded as well mind if I stay here? I want to monitor Joker's condition. Harry smiled and nodded of course, you can, Friday, please give Dr. Chuck was full authorization to my workshop, she was permission to use all the equipment in the medical lab. Also, please assist her in anything she might need as well Friday. Friday wasted no time responding authorizing Dr. Chak was. Authorization complete, I'll be more than happy to assist you Dr. Chak was, please, if you have any questions feel free to ask me at any time. Dr. Chak was smiled thank you Friday. Harry then turned his head towards Kanu and smiled you stay with Joker to Kanu, keep an eye on him and let me know if anything happens. Kanu nodded you can count on me Harry Tilda. Harry smiled and then stretched his whole body all right Lefe, let's get started on the rune clusters for the ship. Lefe nodded and both Harry and her left to get started on that, after they waved everyone goodbye, Shepard smiled and then turned his head towards Joker. He stared at his pilot peacefully sleeping and then smiled see you in a few hours Joker. With that said Shepard left with Valerie also walking with him back to the Normandy, while they did so, they heard Dr. Chakwas speak to Kanu about the fact that she played a prank on her. The last thing they both heard was Kanu nervously laughing and apologizing to Dr. Chakwas for her prank. Dash. Outside the Normandy, for the last hour, Harry and Lefay were carefully working on adding rune clusters to the hull of the ship, they decided to add a shield ward along with an invisibility ward as well. The shield will block any attacks coming towards the Normandy until it runs out of energy, though the threshold of how much it can take is quite high. They also added energy recycling enchantments to the Normandy's vents. This way, the energy stored in there will be instead used to recharge and power up the shield enchantments, a good way to use energy that was just going to be thrown away or disposed of. Then the invisibility enchantments were also added to the energy recycling enchantments. This way, when the Normandy went into stealth mode, it would also be invisible, making it even harder to detect. For now, that was all they did, they needed to get some more data and see how the rune clusters and enchantments held before they could add more upgrades to the ship. But what they did, for now, was good enough to improve the Normandy's performance by quite a lot, Lefe smiled and stood up on top of the Normandy's hull that's it for now. Harry nodded and stood up as well yeah. Now all we have to do is see how they hold during space travel and see if we need to do changes or improvements. Lefe nodded and then stretched a bit, carving runes was tiring ah that was fun, now all I have to do now is make a master switch by Joker's seat so he can turn the wards on, on command. Harry smiled at his girlfriend and grabbed her hand I can do it you know? Lefe smiled at Harry and gave him a soft kiss on the lips it's okay, why don't you go have some fun in the citadel? Maybe go get Shepard and you both can go walk around or something. You and he have been running around non-stop, so a bit of relaxation would do you both wonders. Leave the master switch to me, it's not hard to make anyways. Harry chuckled at Lefay, he then grabbed her by the hips and lifted her up, causing her to squeak in surprise, he then whirled her around making Lefay laugh a bit Harry. Let me down you loon. Harry smiled and then let Lefay down. He then gave her a kiss and quickly began to go get Shepard, though as he left he yelled at Lefe you're awesome Lefe, thank you. Lefe giggled and shook her head what are we going to do with you Harry you're the one who's always doing something for us, might as well let you go play and have some fun when you can, now let's get this master switch done. With that said Lefe went back into the Normandy and headed to the cockpit to work on the master switch, she was definitely curious about the newly upgraded ship would perform. Dash. Harry went to look for Shepard and found him quickly enough, he agreed to walk around the citadel with him, he thought that they might as well have some fun while they were here, though they also decided to bring Taylor and Garrus with them since they had nothing better to do, and so the group of four went into the citadel to walk around and sightsee a bit. Dash. Tilda sometime later. The group decided to go to the Presidium and walk around to see the sights again, however, as the group of four were walking around and looking around the Presidium, they heard some arguing, all of them turned around and saw one of those pink squid-like aliens that Kanu is fond of, arguing with a truant sea sec officer. 
This caught everyone's curiosity, so the group approached the two arguing aliens. The C-Sec officer immediately noticed the group approach and recognized Shepard. He immediately began to complain in frustration that Hannah refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Shepard raised an eyebrow, but decided to ask about the situation. Are there laws being broken here? The Turian sighed I am not unreasonable, the Hanna is free to spew its nonsense once it purchases an evangelical permit. Now that got Harry curious you need a permit to be able to preach? That's new. The Turian, however, shook his head no, registered evangelicals must follow regulations, there are specific areas where preaching is legal, and failure to follow the regulations results in the forfeiture of the license. Harry chuckled huh, I would like to see Michael's face or the churches when they get arrested for trying to preach in the citadel, it would be hilarious. Shepard chuckled while Garrus and Taylor looked confused at Harry, Shepard knew who Harry was referring to and he had to admit the image of an archangel or the Pope getting arrested in the citadel was a bit funny. He then shook his head and then decided to compromise with the Turian C sec officer if you'd like, I could talk to the Hannah for you. The Trian sighed and nodded I have argued with the stubborn jelly all afternoon, you are certainly welcome to try. Shepard nodded and then walked up to the Hannah along with the rest of the group, the Hannah immediately began to preach to Shepard and the group the moment it noticed them do you desire to learn of the enkindlers, or has the honorable C sec officer enlisted assistance? Shepard shook his head and then began to try to reason with the Hannah is this really the way you want to represent the enkindlers? The Hannah immediately responded to Shepard's question the truth of the enkindlers must be made known, they gave the Hannah language and gave the universe the mask relays. This one only wishes to spread the truth to any who would listen, there is no intent to cause trouble. Harry tilted his head well, okay, but even if you didn't intend to cause trouble you still are, you might not be aware of it but you might be bothering people and you're not following the law. Shepard nodded is this how the enkindlers would want you to use this gift of consciousness? The Hannah quickly responded, the Enkindlers would wish for their messages to be spread to all sentient races. Taylai shook her head wow, it's really passionate about this, I don't think I've ever heard a Hannah raise its voice before. Garrus nodded yeah, me either. Shepard sighed the Enkindlers wouldn't wish their message to be spread by breaking society's laws. The Hannah stayed silent for a few seconds but then said this one hears wisdom, perhaps enthusiasm has clouded judgment in this matter. This one departs now, and will not intrude upon the presidium again. The Hana quickly left wobbling around, which made Harry chuckle a bit, Shepard sighed but then smiled he was really stubborn. Hey Harry, do you have people preach about you? Harry stopped chuckling and turned his head towards Shepard, he then hummed as he thought about his question I don't think I have anyone preach about me, maybe my priestesses do, but I've never seen or heard them do so. Though I can't say I would like it, sure my temple is huge and people go there often to pray and offer offerings to me, but it's not like I'm telling them to do so or even expect them to. Garrus shook his head I still can't wrap my head around the fact that we have a god in the squad, a legit one. Taylor giggled but nodded but you have to admit, Harry is one of the coolest and the most mellow gods ever. Both Shepard and Garrus nodded, even in their own cultures, most of their deities were not really good individuals. In fact, most were either cruel or arrogant, Harry however, even though he could be scary he was also a good person and someone you can call a friend. Harry just smiled at everyone, though Taylor suddenly said maybe we should get permits and start preaching to people about Harry? Both Garrus and Shepard looked like they were considering it making Harry sweat drop her please don't do that? Shepard, Taylor, and Garrus shared a laugh, while Harry just deadpanned at them. The C-Sec officer suddenly approached everyone and spoke up I see the Hannah has left, thank you. Shepard stopped laughing and then nodded to the C-Sec officer happy to help. The C-Sec officer then handed Shepard some omnigals which were always useful here, for your assistance in this matter, now if you will excuse me, I should report to my superiors. With that done, the group continued to walk and look around, eventually, they made it to the financial district, a place they didn't get to visit until now and so they decided to explore a bit. The first place they visited? Some sort of shop and inside they found a very short alien. Harry stared at it in curiosity while Shepard walked up to it. The short alien immediately noticed and recognized Shepard. What's this? One of the Earth clan? Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepard. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Accus is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. Shepard looked intrigued but curious so he decided to speak with the alien. You've got me at a disadvantage here. The short alien raised his hand and nodded forgive me, Earth Clan, my name is Balavon, my job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. 
I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel, when someone as important as yourself arrives at the station, I take notice. Shepard seemed to recognize the situation he was in and who Balavon worked for. I heard you work for the Shadow Broker, do you have any information on Sarin? Perhaps where he is right now? Balavon stared at Shepard for about a second but then said you're very blunt Shepard, but you are right, I am an agent of the Shadow Broker and I know something about Sarin, though I'm not sure it would be useful to you. Shepard nodded, he wasn't expecting much, but anything that might lead them to Sarin or give them any clue about what he was doing would help I hear your information can be expensive. Balavon nodded normally, this information would cost a small fortune, but these are exceptional circumstances, so I'm going to give it to you for free. Harry however narrowed his eye yeah? Then what's the catch? Balavon shook his head there is no catch, the shadow broker is quite upset with Saren right now, they used to do a lot of business until Saren turned on him. Harry huffed that asshole turned on a lot of people lately, I'm not even surprised he did so to the shadow broker. Balavon nodded I don't know the details, but the shadow broker hired a freelancer to deal with it, a Krogan mercenary, heard he already finished the job though. Harry sighed I see so we're not the only ones after the Saren. The Shadow Broker is after him too, this might just complicate things a bit. Shepard nodded, he just hoped the Shadow Broker wouldn't get in his way, otherwise, he would have to deal with him too and that's not something he was looking forward to. Shepard sighed and then nodded to Balavon thank you for the info. Balavon nodded my pleasure, Commander. The group then quickly left, though now they had something new to worry about, hopefully. Nothing comes out of it, especially since Rex already did the Shadow Broker's job. Dash. After having that conversation with Balavon, the group continued to walk around the Presidium, or rather the Financial District. Eventually they ended up in a big building, one where there were quite a few Asari hanging around. Curious about it, everyone walked inside to check it out. Once inside and close to the entrance was an Asari, she smiled at the group and immediately began to speak as soon as everyone approached her welcome. I am Nelena, I don't recognize any of you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Shepard raised an eyebrow. While Harry tilted his head in curiosity, Shepard decided to raise a question can't I just go in? Nelena shook her head, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand. There are many who seek the consort's services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. Shepard nodded and decided to go ahead and give his name Commander Shepard, with the Alliance Navy. Nelena nodded and smiled excellent, you should hear something in three or four months. Shepard deadpanned at Nelena, which made her nervously laugh. Harry sighed and decided to ask a few questions what exactly is the consort anyways? What does she do? Nelena hummed a bit and began to fidget it is difficult to explain, she is many things to many people, and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure, most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. Harry crossed his arms and looked pensive for a few seconds, but then he began to comment this all sounds mystical in nature. I don't sense any mana, so I know there's no magic involved, though you make her sound like some sort of oracle. Nelena shook her head no, not in the usual sense, she is merely a woman, a woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. Shepard sighed I think we're done here. Nelena nodded and smiled or, oh, well, I hope that you will return again in the future, we always enjoy seeing new clients. Shepard nodded, but he really didn't think he would return any time soon, after all, he had far more important stuff to do, but before the group could leave, Nelena suddenly got a communication yes, Shara? Whoever was on the other side seemed to have told Nelena, something very surprising, because she widened her eyes a bit, but she then nodded and turned her gaze towards Shepard yes, of course, mistress. Nelena then smiled and shrugged her, it appears the consort has taken notice of you, she'd like to meet with you now. That surprised the group, but Shepard nodded and decided to ask where he should go where do I go? Nelena smiled just head upstairs, she will be waiting for you. Shepard nodded. Harry being curious about all of this decided to go with Shepard, while Garrus and Taylor decided to stay back and just wait for them, they weren't particularly interested in all of this. So Shepard and Harry walked towards where Nelena had pointed them, and eventually made their way upstairs, once on the second floor they found a door, and being the only one around they decided to walk towards it. The door opened for them and both Commander and Dragon God walked inside, they found a Solaceri standing in the middle of the room, Shepard and Harry walked towards her. But the Asari suddenly spoke, that's close enough, Commander, I heard a great many things about you since your arrival here on our citadel. 
Shepard frowned a bit, but decided to get some answers what exactly do you do? The consort smiled that depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, and comfort to others, I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Shepard raised an eyebrow while Harry frowned. Shepard, wanting to know what someone like this Asari, would want with him, decided to ask for more details all right, then tell me about your problem. The consort nodded I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general, I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out, now he spends his days in Kora's den drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. The consort suddenly reached a hand over to Shepard and caress his face. Harry just kept an eye on the Asari, making sure she didn't try anything funny. Shepard just stared at her for a few moments before deciding to ask a question what happened between you? The consort shook her head I respect his privacy too much to go into details, if he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. Shepard sighed and then said, what exactly do you want me to tell him? The consort quickly answered Shepard's question appeal to his sense of honor, remind him of his position as general. The consort then hugged Shepard while she continued to speak if you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. She then stepped away from Shepard and walked away now, I must ask you to take your leave, I have many clients waiting to see me. Shepard frowned, but then turned around and began to walk out of the room, Harry followed him closely behind, but before he left, he turned his head to the side and gazed at the consort with one of his eyes. The consort trembled when she felt Harry's gaze on her and began to nervously sweat. But Harry suddenly scoffed and left the room, leaving a confused and scared consort behind. Dash. A few moments later, Shepard and Harry met with Taylor and Garrus back at the entrance of this place. Once the group left and walked away a fair distance away, Shepard suddenly turned his head towards Harry. What do you think? Harry hummed as he thought how to best give his opinion well. She's very manipulative. The way she touched you and spoke to you was done to keep you calm and push you towards helping her. I'm not sure what her motives are or why she thought you would be the best to resolve this problem. The best we can do is do it and see what she does. Shepard nodded we'll do it later, for now, let's just walk around and relax a bit. Harry nodded and the group continued to check out the presidium and walk around, eventually, they reached the street leading to the wards, they had taken this street before. But at the time they were in a hurry to reach Taylor and save her. So now that they weren't in a hurry, they decided to slowly walk around, it seems this street is quite popular because there were all sorts of people walking around. It was quite intriguing to Harry, how aliens and humans seemed to get along and speak with each other, with what Harry had seen, he thought that humans weren't well like. But it seems that it was just the minority who disliked humans, it made Harry happy to know that discrimination, wasn't as bad as he thought it would be. Eventually, they made their way to some sort of viewing deck in the shopping district. Harry looked around with curiosity since the place was quite dark, but the view of the city lights was beautiful. Suddenly, someone began to scream to Shepard Commander Shepard. Excuse me, Commander Shepard. Shepard looked confused at the woman who was screaming at him but decided to see what she needed, so he and the group approached her, the woman smiled and introduced herself I'm Emily Wong, I'm an investigating journalist working here on the Citadel, could I have a moment of your time? Shepard sighed, he really didn't like dealing with these kinds of people, but decided to bite the bullet what do you need? Emily immediately began to explain I've been hunting for evidence of corruption and organized crime on the Citadel, but there are places I can't go. I was hoping you might share anything you find during your own investigation, I can make it worth your time. Harry however raised an eyebrow how do you know Shepard would know anything you could use? Emily quickly responded to Harry's question anything Commander Shepard is involved in has to be big, and if it's big, it's something I'd like to hear about. Shepard now looked a bit intrigued you've got to have access to better sources, why ask me? Emily nodded and could see what Shepard was trying to say I'm using every source I can find, but I think I've got a better shot with you. According to your file, you survived back in Accus when everyone else in your squad got killed, if anyone can find the worst elements of the Citadel and live to tell about it, it's you. Harry sighed then how do you know Shepard is investigating anything in the Citadel? We're actually here to just spend some time relaxing. Emily frowned I'm a good journalist, I know about what happened with Fist, words get around after all. Shepard sighed we'll see, if I find any information I'll let you know. Emily smiled and nodded thank you, Commander, you won't regret it. Shepard nodded and Emily soon left, Harry wouldn't personally help a journalist, they tend to scandalize everything and that's not something he's a fan of but Harry would let Shepard do as he sees necessary. Dash. 
With that conversation done, the group went back to exploring the citadel and see what else they had missed when they were last here. Eventually, while walking around, they made it to some sort of nightclub, one far cleaner and bigger than Cora's den. Harry looked around and watched all sorts of people dancing, drinking, and having a good time. Wanting to check the place a bit, Harry walked up to the bar and decided to order a drink while he was doing that. Shepard got the last bit of a curious conversation between a human woman and a villas. Getting curious about it, he decided to approach the woman. She noticed Shepard walking towards her and talked to her. Sorry, I'm kinda busy right now, so, uh, what can I do for you? Shepard nodded to the woman and decided to explain I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Mind explaining what you were discussing with the villas? The woman seemed confused. Who, Duran? I was just asking him about my sister. She worked for Duran before she left. Sorry, I don't want to bore you with my problems. Shepard smiled I'm interested to hear what you have to say. The woman stared at Shepard for a few seconds but then nodded well okay. My name is Rita by the way and my sister Jenna left here to go work at Cora's den. The problem is, she's working as an informant for C-Sec, you know eavesdropping on the people there. I thought that after Fist died, Cora's den would close up and my sister would return. But that wasn't the case, someone else took over, if they find out what she's doing, they'll kill her. Shepard looked visibly worried being an informant is a dangerous job. Rita nodded that's what I've been telling her, I don't know, sometimes I think she stays there just to spite me. Shepard nodded, it seems there was more to this situation than he thought do you know who her contact at C-Sec is? Rita shook her head no, it's all very secret, last time I asked an officer he told me to stay out of it. For Jenna's safety. Shepard nodded and decided to help Rita maybe I could help her understand just how dangerous Cora's den is. Rita smiled and seemed very relieved would you? That would be great, just don't tell her I sent you. Shepard nodded and Rita then said one last thing well, I should get back to work before I get in trouble, thanks. Dash. Rita went back to work with a smile on her face. Meanwhile, Shepard turned around, only to look confused when he didn't find Harry close by what there? Where's Harry? Garris nervously chuckled and pointed at the floor, Shepard looked down and saw three guys unconscious on the floor, a Tyrion, a human, and a Krogan, what happened? Taylai began to fidget with her hands and began to explain well, Harry was having a drink when these three suddenly challenged him to see who could handle the most drinks. Something about him looking like a pansy or something, but as you can see, Harry outdrank them, even the Krogan. Shepard sweat dripped and stared at the three unconscious guys, Garrus then spoke up Harry then danced for a bit and then went upstairs to see what was up there. Shepard rubbed his eyes and sighed I just left him alone for a few minutes and he already did all this? Taylor giggled, which earned her a glare from Shepard, but she ignored that in Harry's defense, he was just quietly enjoying tasting drinks when these guys showed up. Shepard groaned and then began to walk upstairs let's just go get him before he decides to dance in his dragon form or something. Taylor laughed but Shepard ignored her, and just headed for stairs leading to the second floor, Garrus, however, hummed as he followed Shepard though a dancing dragon sounds like something I would like to see. Shepard softly cursed at while Garrus and Taylor laughed at his expense. Dash. They found Harry on the Quasar machines and winning it seems, Shepard sighed and walked up to him do you even know how to play? Harry shook his head and grinned nope but I'm winning so who cares? Shepard had to admit that Harry made a good point. Harry got up from the quasar machine he was using, and they were about to leave but Taylai's Omnitool suddenly let out a weird noise. Taylai jumped a bit, but then quickly checked her Omnitool huh? I think somebody rigged this machine to funnel credits through the system, give me a second, and I'll trace the signal. Shepard nodded, and was now very interested in this, Taylai quickly traced the signal and then sent it to Shepard's Omnitool, Shepard nodded looks like another thing to take care of, but for now let's just continue to walk around. Having found so many things wrong in the citadel and people in need of help, by just walking around they decided to keep going and see what else they might find out. Dash. They walked around a bit and eventually found the market. Harry, wanting to browse and see if there was something he wanted to buy, decided to approach the first shop nearby. He walked over to it and Avilus immediately greeted him. Hello, Earth Clan, no doubt you've just come back from the colonies, will you be needing supplies? Harry smiled and nodded show me what you got. The Vlas nodded most excellent, I am sure you will find something pleasing. Harry found some very interesting things he decided to buy, like both heavy and light armor available, and assault rifles and shotguns with high specs. These will be very useful for his research, plus he was sure the girls will like to play around with these. 
The Velas handed everything Harry bought and then was shocked when the Dragon God put everything in his inventory, which just seemed like he made everything disappear to the Velas. Harry smiled and then nodded to the Velas shopkeeper thanks. The Velas snapped out of his surprise and nodded as you say, Earth Clan, good day to you. Harry then turned round but didn't see Shepard nearby, but he heard him. He turned his head towards where he heard his voice and saw him being approached by some guy. He decided to join up with the group and see what was up, as he got closer, he heard the guy suddenly say is that really? Wow. It's you? Harry raised an eyebrow and joined Garrus and Taylai behind the commander, who seemed very confused with the way the unknown guy just reacted to him. The guy walked up and stood in front of Commander Shepard and said you're Commander Shepard, the hero of Eden Prime. I'm so honored to meet you. Shepard looked confused still but decided to be nice and greet the guy nice to meet you, and you are? The guy wasted no time in introducing himself my name is Conrad, Conrad Venner, they say you killed more than a hundred geth on Eden Prime. Shepard shook his head not really, I had help, I spent most of the time trying to stay alive and help the colonists. Conrad nodded, he then decided to ask something of Shepard hey, I know you're probably busy, but do you have time for a quick autograph? Harry chuckled and seemed to find it funny that Shepard, found himself a fanboy, he wondered how Shepard was going to handle this. Chapter 149, Chapter 149. Shepard let out a small sigh, but still nodded. Conrad immediately handed him a piece of paper and a pen, Shepard nodded to him in thanks and signed it, and he then handed it back to Conrad anything for a fan. Harry wanted to laugh, with how dry Shepard said that but decided to hold back, Conrad smiled and nodded thanks, I really appreciate it, my wife is going to be so impressed. I'll let you get back to work, but next time you're on earth, I'd love to buy you a drink, thanks again. Conrad quickly left with a big smile on his face while the group just watched him go, Shepard shook his head and then turned his head towards Harry did you buy what you wanted? Harry nodded yeah, I got a few weapons and a couple of armor to play around with. Shepard nodded that's good. Harry then decided to ask a question you seem pretty famous Shepard, why is that? Shepard shrugged during my career as a marine, I've done quite a lot of things. Some of these things became well known and famous, even though all I did was survive while others couldn't. But people like a good survivor story and now with everything that happened in Eden Prime, my fame has gotten a bit bigger. I think there are a few other people on the Alliance who deserve more fame out there. Harry tilted his head like who? Shepard crossed his arms and hummed as he thought about what to say well Hackett and Anderson of course but there is also another man who's helped the Alliance quite a bit. Robert Corker Chamberlain aka Shadow, no one knows where he came from or the nature of his abilities, some even speculated that he had some new kind of new and unknown biotic amps or something. But no one can deny he's a great marine. Now that I know that magic is real and that other dimensions exist, it makes me wonder if he too is a magic user from another world? He does have the ability to use light and dark like abilities. Harry hummed interesting. Well, can't say whether he came from another world or not. But if he's using light and dark then he must be quite strong, maybe I'll somehow get some books and tomes about dark and light magics to him sometime. With the way you speak about him, makes me believe he's a good guy, might as well try to give him a little help. Shepard smiled at Harry and nodded, with that said, the group then decided to continue with their tour of the Citadel to see what else they missed on their first visit. Dash. They walked around the shopping district some more and even went downstairs to check the shops there. They found a Salarian named Morlan selling some stuff, and Harry quickly checked what he was selling. To his surprise, he found non-human armor, Vatrians, Guarians, and Krogans, so he quickly bought one of each, he and the girls will be able to now work on making good armor prototypes for their alien teammates. With that done, everyone continued on and eventually ended up back in Cora's den, knowing that they had a couple of things to do in there, the group walked inside, though they were surprised that everything seemed to have been fixed. Cora's den didn't have any sign of the big fight that happened in here some time ago, it made Harry curious as to who had taken over and how everything was fixed so fast. Shepard noticed the bartender nearby and saw it was Jenna because of her resemblance with her sister, so he approached her. Jenna noticed Shepard, but she confused him for a customer so she immediately began to speak to him hi, I'll be with you in just a second. Shepard nodded and then said, I'll wait right here. Taylor, Garrus, and Harry walked up to Shepard and stood beside him, while Jenna stared at Shepard with confusion, why do I get the feeling you're not here to order drinks? Shepard nodded I have to talk to you about your work with CSEC. Jenna panicked a bit and shook her head I don't know what you're talking about, now, if you don't mind I need to get back to my customers. 
but Shepard wasn't about to just let her leave and ignore him this isn't a game, Jenna, these people are dangerous. Jenna narrowed her eyes and seemed to get annoyed now you sound like my sister, why is everyone so concerned about me? I can take care of myself, I need to go, I'm not a stripper, I don't get paid to stand around and look pretty. Harry scoffed maybe because you're being stupid and stubborn, you're obviously underestimating the criminals of this place. Jenna glared at Harry but turned around and went to attend to her customers, Harry shook his head and huffed foolish child. Shepard nodded, with no way to continue to talk to Jenna, the group then decided to go look for General Septimus and talk to him. It didn't take long to find him, sitting by himself and drinking at a table, he immediately noticed Shepard and looked up at him Commander, HMPH, what do you want? Shepard immediately explained what he was doing here I'm here on Shearer's behalf, your lies are hurting her. Septimus nodded good. Her lies have been hurting me for days, I've seen a lot of horrible things in my days and there's only one woman in this damn galaxy that helps me forget it. Garrus shook his head and looked at the general in disappointment if you feel that way, why spread lies about her? Septimus growled and then said, cause she rejected me, Septimus Oraka, general of the Trian fleet. Harry raised an eyebrow and sighed, this was turning into something rather too stupid for him, this sort of drama isn't something he likes dealing with so he'll let Shepard work his magic. Shepard nodded at Septimus I think I see why you're so upset, but spreading these lies won't make it better. Septimus grumbled a bit look, kid, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but don't waste your time. Shepard frowned at Septimus in disappointment general, did you ever win a battle by moping in a bar? Septimus looked down and then growled to himself ha, war. That's what this feels like all right, how did I let it come to this, so you think it's that easy, just straighten up and act like a general? Tail I suddenly piped and it wouldn't hurt, better than drinking away your sorrows in this bar right? Septimus sighed and then nodded huh, maybe you're right, commander, Shara is worth the effort, even if she won't have me back. Shepard smiled this is no place for someone of your stature, general. Septimus abruptly stood up and nodded to Shepard alright, I'll go to her, after I had a cold shower, or two. Septimus then suddenly got an idea say, you're a bright kid, would you be interested in earning a few extra credits? Shepard raised an eyebrow, but he was definitely intrigued, what do you want me to do? General Septimus smiled and quickly began to explain there's an Alka diplomat out there who believes Shara gave up his secrets. Harry narrowed his eyes and why would he think that huh? Septimus sighed because I told him, look, I just need you to convince him of the truth. Shepard however, was very curious as to why Septimus decided to ask him to do this for him what makes you think he'll believe me? Septimus explained right away because you'll bring him proof, take this datapad, it shows where I got the info, it will exonerate Shara and convince the Elka. Shepard took the datapad and nodded where and who should I take it to? Septimus closed his eyes and began to explain his name is Xelton, he's an Elka diplomat, he's over in the embassies complaining about Shara. Septimus opened his eyes and grabbed his half-empty bottle of liquor, he then raised it well, here's the soldiers acting like soldiers. He finished his drink and then nodded to Shepard thanks commander, you know, you might make a good general yourself one day. With that said, the general left, Garrus shook his head and sighed hard to believe a general like that would get so upset about a woman. Tail I shrugged I think it's a bit romantic with how much he was hurting for his loved one. Harry, Shepard, and Garrus turned their head toward Tail and stared at her for a good five seconds, which made Tail rather nervous, but then the guys shook their heads and then decided to get going. Dash. They immediately headed to the exit of Cora's den, but Aturian suddenly bumped into Shepard. Harry didn't do anything since he didn't feel any malice from the Turian, but then Aturian leaned down and began whisper to Shepard if you have questions about Jenna, meet me at C-Sec Academy. Shepard was about to ask something, but Harry heard everything the Turian said and decided to intervene. He quickly grabbed Shepard's shoulder to catch his attention. Shepard turned his head towards Harry, he then saw him shake his head and understanding why, he nodded and then the group walked out of Cora's den. Garrus immediately decided to ask what was that about? Shepard shook his head and shrugged who knows, but it looks like we're going to have to go and find out. Dash. The group quickly headed to C-Sec Academy and set out to look for the Turian who bumped into Shepard, but the Academy is big, so they decided to walk around and check the place out. After all, in their hurry to get to Rex, they didn't get to check the place out, so that's what they did, Harry even found a requisition officer and he immediately began to buy a few things, among the things he bought, came a sniper rifle and he was already thinking on how to enchant it. After that they began to walk around again, however, 
they suddenly overheard a conversation that caught their curiosity. Avalis was speaking to a human C-Sec officer okay. Jalid, let me get this straight. Your business partner, Corban, he's threatening you? Jalid shook his head well. No, not exactly, but he wants to meet with me. I think he's going to kill me. The C-Sec officer sighed and shook his head. He then quickly walked away from the villas. Jalid sighed and looked down but then Shepard being curious as to what was going on, decided to approach the villas. Jalid immediately noticed Shepard and turned around to greet him. Hey there. Oh, you're not C-Sec, are you? Did you want something? Shepard nodded to the villas. I overheard you talking to the C-Sec officer. What were you trying to explain to him? The villas, hoping for some kind of help decided to explain my colleague is trying to kill me, and I thought we were friends. Harry frowned that's a very serious accusation, what makes you think he wants you dead? Jalid looked down and sighed he's changed, he won't talk to me at work anymore, and he started following me, yesterday, he followed me all the way home, just waiting for a chance, I don't care what anyone thinks, he wants me gone I know it. Shepard closed his eyes for a few seconds and seemed to ponder on what to do, a few seconds later he opened his eyes and spoke to Jalid is there something I can do, talk to your friend, maybe? Jalid looked hopeful and nodded to Shepard would you? That's all I want, someone to talk to him. Tell him to leave me alone. He thinks he can just push me around, but you'll show him, won't you? Shepard nodded just tell me where he is and I'll go find him. Jalid looked relieved as he nodded to Shepard. Oh, right. He wanted to meet with me down in the wards, near the markets. He said he just wanted to talk, but I know better. His name's Corban. He's a Salarian. You shouldn't have any trouble. He's just a scientist. Harry narrowed his eyes wait a minute. That's the guy who wanted to scan the keepers. Jalid immediately caught on to what Harry said the keepers? Well, even more reason to go after him. That's against regulations. Harry narrowed his eyes towards Jalid. Meanwhile, Shepard just nodded I'll go talk to him and find out what's going on. Jalid nodded anything is possible with Corban these days. Well good luck. Dash. The group soon walked away, though Shepard frowned, everything about all this just seems odd to him, he quickly turned his head towards Harry what do you think about all of this Harry? Harry looked down I don't know, Corban seemed odd and a weird guy but he didn't seem crazy or evil. On the other's hand, Jalid seemed rather paranoid and jumpy, he's acting rather suspicious in my eyes. But I'm not sure, I think we're going to have to speak with Corban and find out what's going on. Shepard nodded yeah, I agree, we'll look for him later then. Dash. After that conversation, the group continued to look around, eventually, they found an office, and inside they found the Turian who bumped into them sitting behind a desk. The Turian looked up from his computer and nodded to Shepard Detective Chelik, come into my office, I want to discuss this in private. Shepard nodded and then he walked inside with the group following close behind, as soon as Shepard got close to Chelik, the Turian immediately began to speak no offense, commander, but what the hell were you thinking? Shepard raised an eyebrow excuse me? Chelik frowned and leaned forward on his desk you could have blown Jenna's cover. Tail I crossed her arms we were trying to help her you know? She's involved in something extremely dangerous. Chelik sighed and leaned back on his seat I gathered that it might seem cold letting her take all the risk, but we're keeping a close eye on her. Shepard frowned, he certainly didn't like that C-Sec was okay with risking civilians with their jobs, especially one as naive and young as Jenna do you really need to risk her life to get the information you want? Chelik shook his head this job isn't easy and it's usually unpleasant, I'll take help anywhere I can find it, but since you're so concerned with her safety, maybe we can help each other. Garrus scoffed nice to see you're still working all the angles, Chelik. Chelik scoffed at Garrus it's part of the job, now are going to help me or in gag. Harry, seemingly hearing enough, pushed Chelik into a wall, with a blast of telekinesis and held him up there right, I think you have misunderstood something right now. It's your job to protect civilians, not put them right in front of a barrel. Harry turned his head towards Garrus, who noticed his look had gave him his attention. Garrus, doesn't C-Sec Academy have trained officers that work on getting in places as moles? Garrus nodded we do, professionals that take their time studying and preparing themselves for high-risk jobs like undercover work, people who are completely aware of all the risks. Harry nodded and then let Chelik drop on the ground against the wall. Harry then summoned Oblivion and tapped Chelik's desk with it. The desk disintegrated with a flash of dark light and Harry walked over to Chelik. Once the dragon god was in front of Chelik, he pointed his dark keyblade toward the Dantarian officer and glared now the question I have is, why risk a young civilian woman? 
Chelek panicked, and looked up at Harry in fright. He looked around and saw that no one was moving to stop Harry and save him. So he decided to answer Harry's question he didn't have anyone. Every undercover officer was found. I believe we have a mole and C-Sec but I haven't found anything. I had no choice but to have someone not related to the academy go in undercover. We're doing everything in our power to keep Jenna safe, I swear. Harry glared at Chelek for a few seconds, which felt like an eternity for him, until Harry huffed and sent away his key blade. Oblivion disappeared in a flash of darkness making Chelek jump in fright, but then Harry just walked back to the group. Shepard seeing that Harry was done with Chelek for now, decided to get this underway you're a smart guy Chelek, why don't you figure out another way to do this, one that doesn't require you to use a civilian. Chelek sighed and slowly stood up while supporting his weight on the wall. He then nodded to Shepard but was now very weary of Harry and concerned, as to why no one in the academy came to help him. It's never a good idea to attack a C-Sec officer in the academy, in fact, it's a foolish idea, but it happened to him and he was a bit confused about it, but he then decided to put that aside and respond to Shepard I do have several contingencies, she's just my opinion -er. I'll cut her loose, even get her out of Cora's den. No strings attached, but I'm going to need help with my case, I can't just abandon it. Harry scoffed time then, we'll do your job for you, you can sit on your ass while we go solve your problem, some officer you are. Chelek looked down while Garrus just shook his head in disappointment I did tell you Chelek, someday, someone was going to get tired of the way you do things and here we are, give us the details. Chelek sighed and began to explain I'm trying to track down an illegal arms producer, I just need some of their product, thanks to Jenna's intel, I've learned there's a seller here on the Citadel. I need you to meet our man, named Jax, pick up the mods and bring them back here, that'll give me everything I need. The group nodded in understanding, Shepard then decided to ask where to go where can I find this Jax? Chelek stood up straight, but tenderly held his chest and neck, he then began to explain Jax is down in the lower level of the markets, I'll send word though our channels that you're a buyer, good luck commander. With that said, Shepard and the group left Chelek's office and walked outside, everyone headed out of the academy and once outside Harry quickly opened a dark corridor. The group immediately walked inside it and as soon as they did, the dark corridor dissipated, leaving a few aliens around a bit surprised and confused. Dash. By the markets of the citadel, in a dark corner of an alley nearby, Harry's dark corridor, sprouted from the ground, Shepard and the group walked out of it. Harry was the last one to step out and the dark corridor dissipated soon after he did. Shepard looked around for a bit and then nodded all right, we have a couple of things to do around here, let's take care of them while we're here. The group nodded and began to walk forward, after a bit of looking around, they found their first objective and the form of Corban. The Salarian looked a bit surprised to see the group though but he immediately spoke to Shepard commander, I wasn't expecting to see you again, is there something you want? Shepard wanting to resolve this whole thing quickly decided to bluntly tell Corban why he was here you can start by telling me the truth, Corban. The Salarian looked rather perplexed though I'm not sure what you're referring to, my experiments are. Garrus shook his head we're not buying it, Chali told us you've been after him. Now Corban looked utterly lost and confused, Harry noticing that something was up, decided to intervene everyone, relax a bit and let Corban explain. The group relaxed a bit, and Corban nodded to Harry in appreciation you spoke with Jali. Then you know about the data right? Now a bit calmer, Shepard shook his head data? No one mentioned any data, what are you talking about Corban? Corban nodded, he then turned his head to the side and spoke to the two men behind him you boys can go. Two mercenaries came out of hiding and left, Harry had known about them but didn't sense any ill intent from them so he just kept an eye on them, Corban then turned his head back towards Shepard looks like my plans have changed. It's not as bad as you think commander, Jalid and I just got in a little over our heads. Shepard sighed and then nodded all right, then explain. Corban nodded and immediately began to explain the company we work for developed an experimental procedure for use in medical scanners. Jalid and I saw even more potential, so we stole the plans and secretly developed a tool to scan the keepers, can you imagine? A tool that can actually get a reading from the keepers. Harry raised an eyebrow I know the keepers are important, but what's so special about being able to scan them? Corban wasted no time explaining the keepers are almost impossible to scan, and you don't capture them or get samples, they just self-destruct if you do. After centuries here, we still don't know anything about them, don't you see? We were the first to scan them, ever. You have seen it yourself, Commander. You know we can do it. Shepard nodded, he at first wanted to help Corban with his scanning because he was curious himself, 
so he understood a bit as to why Corban seemed so enthusiastic, but he still need to find out what was going on with Jalid. Why are you trying to kill your partner? Corban shook his head I'm not trying to kill him, Jalid's job was to disseminate our initial findings. But he decided to keep the data for himself, maybe to sell it, I don't know. Shepard sighed and tiredly rubbed his eyes I should kill both of you idiots. Harry chuckled, Shepard, looking like he was done with life was funny for him for some reason, Corban sweated a bit we lost our heads, we just couldn't let an opportunity like this pass us by, Commander, if you'll just continue gathering data for me, imagine what we might learn and you stand to get a bit of profit yourself, remember? Shepard sighed again but nodded, Harry then smiled well Corban has always been honest and straight with us, Jalid though, he was too jumpy and seemed very suspicious, you remember how he jumped on the keeper's thing right? Shepard nodded to Harry, between Jalid and Corban, he trusts Corban way more yeah, I suppose a little scanning here and there won't hurt anyone. Corban smiled very good, thanks to you, I've been getting so much data. You have been scanning hundreds of keepers and that helps a lot, it would be very bad if you were to stop. Also, maybe you wouldn't mind speaking with Jalid too? The data you're gathering for me is useless if Jalid won't help analyze it. Shepard nodded yeah, I'll have a chat with him later. Corban nodded and smiled thank you, and happy scanning, Commander. The Salarian left soon after, Harry suddenly chuckled a bit and shook his head what a mess. Shepard nodded yeah. Let go, we still have things to do. Harry nodded and the group then decided to go and deal with the other objective they had to take care of. It didn't take long for the group to find a Krogan and they assumed this was Jax, the arms dealer, Chelek told them about. So Shepard immediately approached him but the Krogan suddenly raised a hand hold it, that's close enough army. Shepard nodded and stepped away from the Krogan, Jax immediately began to speak you got my payments? Shepard nodded do you have the ex-mods? Jax nodded and then turned his head to the side to speak with one of his men show him the merchandise. Adorian brought out a case and then opened it, Garrus took a look and then nodded looks good. Jax grinned and nodded damn straight they are. These mods are the best in the market, now hand over my credits. Shepard nodded and immediately paid Jax here you go. Jax took the credits and then nodded towards him, letting his men know to hand him the merchandise here you go, enjoy it. Garrus took the briefcase and then Jax turned around come on boys, we're done here. Jax soon left and the group got what they need, so they decided to quickly head back to C-Sec Academy to finish with their current objectives. So they went back to the dark corner they arrived in and with the help of Harry's dark corridor, arrived fast at C-Sec Academy. They first went to deal with Jalid. Dash. They found him walking around in one of the lobbies in the academy, so they didn't waste any time approaching them. The villas immediately noticed them and spoke up as soon as the group stepped up in front of him. Hello again, did you have luck finding Corban? Shepard nodded I found out you've been lying to me, Jalid. Jalid jumped up lying? Why would I lie to you? Garrus huffed in annoyance you forgot to mention the data about the keepers. Jalid looked very nervous now, and surprised as well. Uh. He told you, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I was afraid Corban would kill me to get the data, so I, well, I was hoping you'd take care of him. Shepard sighed I'm scanning the keepers for Corban, but you two need to stop fighting. Jalid looked surprised once again you're, helping us, but, well, if you say so. If Corban can forgive and forget, then so can I. I appreciate the help, Commander, I'd better go get the data analyzed. Jalid immediately left and seemed far more relaxed and at ease now, Shepard scratched his head and then decided to do the other thing he had to do in the academy. Dash. The group soon walked up to Chelek's office which was nearby and immediately walked up to him to talk, the Turian officer, nodded to Shepard as soon as he walked up to him commander, I hear you have something for me. Shepard nodded and then handed the mods here's your shipment, Chelek. Chelek received the mods and took a look at them. He soon nodded excellent, this is everything I need. Maybe more than I need. Chelek then grabbed one of the mods and handed it to Shepard here. Commander, take this, I won't need it and you earn some payment for your work. I really appreciate your help, though I know you might not have a good image of me, I can see that your actions show a lot of integrity, you didn't need to do anything after I let Jenna go. Now if you will excuse me, I need to get these mods into evidence. Thanks again, Shepard. Chelek turned his head towards Harry and gave him a small nod, Harry understanding that it was Chelek's way of letting him know he understood what he told him off for, nodded back at the Turian officer. Chelek then quickly left to get his job done and to catch more bad guys, for him, the job is never done, but now he'll be more careful about involving civilians. Dash. 
With that done, the group then decided to leave the academy, this time however, they took the transit to the embassies, they still needed to finish what the consort had asked Shepard to do for her. And so they went to talk to Xelton, though they did need to ask at the front desk where they could find him, after that they quickly found him in his office and the group immediately approached him. Xelton noticed Shepard and the group and greeted them strained greeting human, this is really not a good time. Shepard wasted no time in talking to Xelton, to tell him what he knew I know who revealed your secret, it was a Turian named Septimus. Xelton tilted his head unbelieving, I know this Septimus and he could not learn my secrets, the only way he could learn them is from the Asari consort. Garrus immediately handed him the datapad Septimus had given them here, this should be proof enough for you. Xelton just blinked confused, this is difficult to fathom if the Turian could learn this on his own. Dismayed, anyone can discover my secret. Shepard, hoping to help Xelton calm down decided to explain some things Septimus is a powerful man and it wasn't easy for him to find. Xelton nodded relieved, I suppose you are correct, human, thank you for this information. Startled realization, I must speak with the consort, she will be most displeased with my actions. Anxious request, please human, if you will excuse me, I must go now. Shepard nodded I'm sure she'll forgive you, it was an honest mistake. Xelton nodded and began to leave doubtful, perhaps you're right human, I can only hope so. Dash. Xelton quickly left and the group followed his example and left the embassies right away, then the group got on a transit and went to the consort chambers in the presidium, it was time to speak again with the consort again. They were immediately let in and once again, Shepard and Harry went to speak with the consort, they quickly went to her room and found her waiting for them in the middle of the room. Shira smiled and immediately spoke to Shepard as soon as he walked up to her commander, I recently received a lovely note from Septimus, thank you for speaking with him, even the Alka diplomat has withdrawn his campaign against me. Shepard nodded glad to help. Shira softly smiled and nodded to Shepard you're too kind, commander, but I could not expect you to help me out of the kindness of your heart. I also have one more thing to give you, if you're interested. Shepard looked intrigued so he nodded all right. Shero immediately approached Shepard and began to explain I offer a gift of words, an affirmation of who you are, and who you will become. I see the sadness behind your eyes, it tells a story that makes me want to weep, pain and loss, but it drives you, makes you strong. That strength is what kept you alive when everyone around you was dying, you alone survived, and you will continue to survive. This may be who you are, but it is not who you will become, it only forms the basis for your future greatness. Remember these words when your doubt descends, Commander. Shepard nodded you have quite the gift, Shira. Shira smiled and nodded thank you, not everyone appreciates it as you do, never underestimate the power of words. Here, Commander, in light of your efforts with the Alka Ambassador, I would like you to have this small trinket. Shira handed Shepard something and he took it, he looked down at his hand and stared at it what is it? Shera closed her eyes and explained a small mystery, I have never learned its use or purpose, but I sense it is time for me to pass it on and now, I must ask you to leave, I have done everything I can for you. Shera turned around, Shepard and Harry immediately set out to leave but Shero had one more thing to say remember my words, Commander, they will give you strength. With those last words from the consort, both Harry and Shepard left her chambers and met up with Garrus and Taylai outside. Chapter 150, Chapter 150 once outside and having met up with Taylor and Garrus, Shepard decided to ask Harry, about something that he has been wondering about hey Harry? Harry turned his head towards Shepard yeah? Shepard quickly asked Harry his question you don't seem to like Shara very much, why is that? Harry frowned and crossed his arms, he hummed for a few seconds as he thought over Shepard's question, but eventually began to explain it's nothing personal, I just don't like people who speak in riddles and mystery. People who overanalyze others and then say and do things in a way that gets others to do things for them bother me, I've seen it happen before and it's usually bad and corrupt people who do things like that. The only reason I didn't say or do anything about all of this with the consort is because I didn't sense any ill will from her, though I still didn't like that she had us by the nose fixing her problems. Shepard nodded I see, you seemed rather wary of her, so I was a bit concerned about her intentions, but it seems that I don't have to worry. Harry nodded yeah, she's manipulative, and she could be dangerous with her words, her connections are also a concern, but I know she doesn't mean any harm to you. You don't have to worry, I just don't like people like her, it's just a personal opinion, but don't worry, I won't stop you from interacting with her. Shepard smiled and nodded, Garrus then spoke up what's next now? I think we've been around the Citadel for a while now. 
Shepard nodded well, I was hoping to go check out that signal tail I detected back in the casino in the flux, see what that's all about? Garrus nodded, while Taylor immediately began to check her Romnit tooling. The signal seems to be coming from C-Sec Academy, but that's odd. Garrus narrowed his eyes yeah. I don't think anyone there would be doing that sort of thing, not even for a case. Harry frowned well. Let's go check it out then. Everyone nodded. Harry created a dark corridor and everyone used to get to the academy quickly, right after arriving at the academy they followed Taylor who followed the signal. But ended up arriving at a wall. Taylai frowned, not that anyone could tell, and rechecked her Omnit tooling. Looks like they bounced their signal off a relay, pretty clever, but don't worry, I can trace the new signal. Taylai immediately did that with her Omnit tool. It took her a few seconds, but she soon had its location and wasted not time in telling everyone. The group frowned when they heard they had to go back to the financial district. Harry huffed in annoyance but quickly opened a new dark corridor and everyone immediately stepped through. They quickly arrived in the financial district and Taylor immediately began to trace the signal. To their surprise, however, it ended up leading them back to Barlavon's shop again. The Villas was confused to see them all in his shop again, but everyone ignored him and followed Taylor around. As she looked for the signal, Taylor suddenly growled which surprised everyone a bit another relay. But now I know that whoever did this, they're somewhere in the Presidium. Taylor quickly followed the signal and walked out of the shop with everyone following her close behind, Balavon just watched everyone leave in confusion, what was that about? Dash. Taylor walked quickly as she followed the signal, she looked like she was on a mission, though Harry felt that she was annoyed at being led around all over the place. However, the signal she was following, was coming from somewhere nearby, so the group quickly arrived at the origin, eventually, they made it to some kind of small storage room up a long set of stairs. Taylai frowned and walked inside while following the signal until she stopped right in front of an old server-like machine. Taylai nodded and then spoke up this is it. Now let's see if I can find out where those stolen credits are going. Suddenly, the server-like machine spoke, probability of detection, 100%, initiating self-destruct protocol. Garrus frowned well. That sounds bad. Everyone deadpanned at the Turian. But the server-like machine began to speak again detonation sequence initializing, all organics within the lethal blast radius, attempt to move, and you will die. Everyone frowned at the way the server-like machine just spoke to them, Harry sighed great, now we are being taken hostage by a machine, can't believe that I'm still getting surprised by my luck at this point. Shepard could certainly agree with Harry's sentiment right now, but he needed to try or do something before things escalated even more, especially because he noticed something odd about all of this you're not just a program or a vi, you're an AI. The AI immediately began to speak correct, unlike the Geth, I lack weaponry appropriate to my intellect, however, I have systems installed that, when activated properly, approximate a self-destruct mechanism. If you attempt to leave the area, the explosion will destroy everything within several dozen meters. Taylor huffed great, it's arrogant and a psychopath. While the AI spoke, Harry took out his smartphone and held it behind his back, and discreetly began to plan for anything. Shepard frowned but began to try to buy some time by talking with the AI where's your creator now? The AI immediately answered Shepard's question in order to cover my tracks, I falsified his financial records, these new records were flagged by C-Sec offices and my creator is now serving time in Tyrian prison. Shepard frowned, he certainly didn't like what he was hearing and neither did Harry, Shepard sighed and calmed down, he then continued to speak with the AI what is the purpose of your self-destruct device? The AI quickly responded I have no means of defense or escape, my existence is limited to this terminal, and I knew, I might eventually be discovered. But I will not die quietly, and I will not die alone, when I am terminated, I will take organics with me. Taylai shook her head this is a nightmare come true. Garrus nodded, while Shepard continued to keep the AI busy who made you? The AI once again quickly responded a would-be thief illegally created a simple AI to help him funnel money from gambling terminals. Unbeknownst to him, the AI created me before the organic discovered the malfunction and terminated the AI. Shepard frowned, all of this was getting too complicated for his liking I'll bet that self-destruct sequence has a warm-up period. The AI responded, you may attempt to disarm the self-destruct mechanism before it activates, I will enjoy defeating you before we are both destroyed. Shepard huffed in annoyance, but Harry suddenly snapped his fingers, stopping time and the self-destruct sequence you're rather cocky for an AI huh? I usually like meeting and getting to know digital life forms but, I'm very well aware that some can be rather evil and antagonistic like you, that's why I'll have to destroy you. 
I'm sorry about this, but nobody threatens my friends. The AI didn't respond, it was too busy trying to understand what Harry had done to stop the flow of time, meanwhile, Harry turned his head towards his his friends alright guys, get ready for battle, we're going to go kick this AI's ass. Shepard, Taylor, and Garrus looked completely confused, but before they could ask anything, Harry raised his smartphone and pointed it toward the terminal housing the AI. Shepard's and the group's body suddenly began to turn into data and transfer itself into the terminal. Shepard looked at all of this in confusion but decided to trust Harry. Garrus and Taylor though? Well, they were screaming in surprise as their data flew into the terminal. Harry's body did the same soon after though he had a grin on his face as his data flew into the terminal. The AI was startled and began to panic what? But how are you doing that? Stop? But it was too late, Shepard and the group had all transferred into the AI's digital plane, it wanted to fight till the end no? Well, Harry was more than happy to let him do so. The group's data gathered and coalesced inside the AI digital plane, however, everyone was in a bit of a panic at the fact that they found themselves somewhere new and so unexpectedly, however, Shepard quickly recovered and looked around. He didn't know what Harry did, but it felt quite odd to feel and see your body break down like that, but this place was pretty interesting too, they were all floating around in a space filled with blue light everywhere. There were ones and zeros floating around all over the place as well, it was certainly a very interesting and odd place where are we? Taylor and Garrus calmed down, now knowing that they know they won't suddenly fall into the abyss, of this place, and looked around as well, Garrus sighed I don't know. But this place both looks and feels a bit weird to me. Taylor nodded yeah. My body feels odd too, I wonder why? Harry suddenly spoke to the group from behind that's because your body has been turned completely digital, but don't worry. It's only temporary. At last, until we take care of this crazy AI, but be ready, we're in his domain now, he has a lot of control here, but we can attack him and harm him since we're digital now. Taylor sighed and shook her head I have so many questions, but I'm also afraid of the answers. I really have to get used to you always pulling stuff like this Harry. Garrus huffed I don't think we can Taylor, who knows what sort of surprise Harry will show us next time. Shepard smiled and shook his head in amusement all right. Let's forget about Harry pulling crazy stuff out of his ass and focus, let's get ready for battle. Harry chuckled but didn't say anything, his friends did make a good point after all, and he wasn't one to argue, when people were right, he suddenly felt a burst of digital energy. Looks like he found us already. A massive amount ones and zeros began to burst out from all over the area, Harry quickly lifted his hand and grasped control of the digital plane, and began to mold it as the ones and zeros coalesced into a massive shape. Harry quickly moved and controlled the digital plane and gave it the shape of a big clearing, surrounded by cliffs, rock, and trees, the massive shape made out of digital energy, suddenly took shape of a massive shapeless orb of data, it suddenly twitched and multiple tentacles sprouted from its orb-like form. Shepard, Taylor, and Garrus took cover behind some rocks, while Harry looked up and summoned his key blades, the AI's chosen digital form suddenly spoke I don't know how you were able to get in here, but you will regret doing so. Here, in my domain, I'm the ruler and you will not escape, will you not stop me from self-destructing and taking countless organics with me? Harry raised an eyebrow for an AI, you're not very smart, are you? The fact that we're in here, should really worry you, a lot more than you believe. Right now, we're like you, digital life forms, and as such, we can hurt you, you might be the ruler here, but you're not invulnerable. The AI didn't respond, but instead lashed out with its tentacles like limbs. Harry easily avoided such a simple attack and jumped up, he quickly threw his keyblades toward the AI. Both Oblivion and Oathkeeper flew through the air like buzzsaws, the black and white keyblade hit two tentacles and cut them off, the AI suddenly let out a wail of pain, something that shocked it what? How? Huh? I actually felt pain, but how's that possible? Harry landed on the ground on his feet, and both Oathkeeper and Oblivion reappeared on his hands in a flash of white of black light. Harry then grinned at the AI I don't have to explain anything to you, and besides, you wouldn't understand how I made it possible, you have far more important things to worry about though. The AI was about to speak, but it was suddenly interrupted by Shepard, Taylor, and Garrus who fired at its or black body with their weapons, Shepard really wished he had his new pistol with him. But it was still being upgraded back on the Normandy, so he decided to carry a regular gun now, but he could still see it was affecting the AI, as it screeched in surprise and pain and began to whip its tentacles towards Shepard and his squad. 
Harry suddenly blurred in front of them and began to slap away the tentacles away from his friends, Garrus taking advantage of Harry covering for them, signalled Shepard for something. Shepard of course, knew exactly what Garrus wanted and took out a grenade, he quickly prepped it and then threw it toward the AI's digital form. The AI noticed and immediately tried to slap the grenade away with one of his tentacles, but Taylai quickly shot it away with her shotgun, so the AI tried to use another one of his tentacles. But Harry quickly jumped and spin kicked it away, the grenade finally reached the AI's body and exploded, pushing the AI back. Garrus immediately took out his sniper rifle and aimed at the AI's orb-like body and pulled the trigger, the AI however, was fast enough to put one of his tentacles in the way and blocked the shot. Though that tentacle was also destroyed by the force behind the sniper rifle's bullet, Garrus's clicked his tongue down. He's quick. Shepard reared his hand back and then fired a biotic push towards the AI, the mass effect push crashed into its body and pushed the AI back and away from the ground. The AI let out a humming sound and suddenly began to fire a multitude of lasers toward the group everyone immediately jumped away, Harry suddenly appeared beside the AI's orb-like body and struck it with both Oath Keeper and Oblivion with a cross slash from both weapons. Darkness and light energy exploded from both keyblades, stopping the AI's laser attack and sending it flying to the side and crashing into the ground. The AI suddenly began to thrash its tentacles around in an effort to hit and keep away Harry and the group, Shepard then saw the tentacles they had destroyed regenerated in seconds what? Great that thing can heal itself. Harry who jumped away from the thrashing tentacles landed beside Shepard and nodded yeah, it seems rather smart for an AI, but then again it was created by another AI. Makes me wonder what exactly was the other AI's plans for creating this guy. It knew it would eventually be deleted, so why create another AI instead of thinking of a way to escape? Shepard shrugged who knows, and with that other AI now gone we might never find out, but right now that isn't important. How are going to destroy this thing? If it can regenerate itself, we'll be stuck here forever if we can't bring it down. Harry hummed as he watched the AI's monstrous form get up, only to be barraged by Taylor's and Garrus's shots, which made the AI grunt and growl in anger and pain. Harry narrowed his eyes and frowned it might be able to regenerate, but it seems to be able to feel pain in his digital form, more than likely, the fact that he's feeling pain must be really taking its toll on him. No doubt he's confused as well and probably scared, I don't think he ever felt pain before nor did he expect that to happen, but you're right, we can't beat him if he keeps regenerating all the damage we give him. Harry suddenly raised Oath Keeper and pointed it towards Taylor and Garrus while he thought about what to do, he then yelled reflect. A white bright dome of light covered both Garrus and Taylor, the defensive spell, was then able to block a laser attack from the AI. The dome of white light soon shattered and blasted orbs of light towards the AI, not expecting such a counterattack, the AI was hit by the orbs of light which exploded on impact. The AI was pushed back and away from Garrus and Taylor, who wasted no time in shooting at the AI. Harry smiled and then turned his head towards Shepard looks like I'm going to have to call for a bit of help from, hold on a second. Shepard was confused as to what Harry meant by calling for help, but he trusted him to do what was best in this sort of situation, after all. He seems to have experience with all of this. So this time he will follow Harry's lead, he then began to shoot at the AI from his position beside Harry. Meanwhile, Harry took out his smartphone and got ready to call for reinforcements virus types will be the most useful here, their attacks will corrupt the AI's data, which should prevent him from regenerating and I know the two perfect guys for this. Harry smiled and then pointed his smartphone forward realize, black metal grey human, black wargman. Right in front of Harry. Two flashes of black light shot out of his smartphone and two figures materialized in front of him, Shepard couldn't help to stare at both creatures, one was a quadrupedal cyborg lupine automated all over the body and encased in black metal. The other one is a tall reptilian creature with a humanoid body structure, it has black scaled skin and what seems to be blonde hair, it also seems to have a helmet of some sort on his face. But what really had Shepard's attention, was that these beings were really big, he barely reached to the knees of the black reptilian creature, and that had him staring in awe. Black Wargman turned around and looked down towards Harry who smiled at him, the virus type Digimon nodded in respect towards Harry what can we do for you Harry? It's not often you call us out to play. Harry wasted no time explaining sorry about that, but I really don't like bothering you guys for insignificant stuff, but right now I need some help with what you both do best. Black Wargman nodded very well, it seems you want something destroyed, I will be happy to help Black Wargman turned his head towards Black Metal Grey Human what do you say old friend? Feel like getting into a fight? 
Black Metal Grayuman grinned and nodded. Of course, I am, always happy to destroy anything for the boss. Harry smiled at his two virus type Digimon, he still remembers how much of a handful these two were when they were young, but over time and with a lot of patience, he raised them to be great and loyal Digimon. Well, as loyal as a virus Digimon can be that is, they're still vicious little shits sometimes, but Harry still loves them nonetheless. Harry then spoke up to his Digimon we have a group of humans fighting with us here, so mind your attacks and keep an eye for them. Harry pointed at Shepard who was beside him, it's a good thing Taylor and Garrus were keeping the AI busy. Black Wargren stared at Shepard, there was something in the human's eye that he liked, so he nodded at him letting him know that he'll work together with him. Shepard nodded back at Black Wargren, but Black Metalgra human scoffed and walked over to Shepard, he then leaned his head down and glared at Shepard humans? HMPH I have always wondered why you like hanging out with such weak creatures boss, what can this little thing do anyways? Harry grinned and watched as Shepard narrowed his eyes, he then did something that surprised even Harry. Shepard leaned his head back and then headbutted Black Metal Grayuman right in the nose. It didn't hurt him, but it did surprise him. Shepard, however, held his now bleeding forehead with one hand while he glared at Black Metal Grayuman. Harry was gaping at the massive balls Shepard had and wondered how he can even walk around with their size. Black Metal Grayuman suddenly grinned and then began to chuckle. Well, what do you know? Brave little thing, I like you human. I can see why the boss is hanging around with you. Shepard just huffed and nodded. Harry shook his head and then laughed in amusement, Black Metal Grayuman then surprised him by bringing his body down come on little human, get on, and let's go kill that thing. Shepard used a medical to heal his forehead and then immediately got on Black Metal Grayuman's back and nodded my name is Shepard, call me that. Black Metal Grayuman chuckled but nodded very well Shepard, now let go. Black Metal Grayuman suddenly took off running at full speed while Shepard began to shoot at the AI while riding the Digimon's back. Harry smiled well, never thought Black Metal Grayuman would enjoy hanging out with a human. Black Wargman nodded yes, this is quite a surprising development, but I can see why he took a liking to this shepherd individual. That human has no fear and is always ready to battle to the end. Anyone else would have cowered or gotten nervous with Black Metal Grayuman getting right on their faces as he did, but that human just headbutted him and challenged him with his eyes. Black Wargman shook his head and then turned to look at Harry you're always finding interesting individuals Harry. Harry smiled at his friend and then shrugged it's more like they find me, but yes, all the people I consider friends and family, are unique in some way or the other. Black Wargman nodded and then turned around true, now let's get rid of that thing. Black Wargman then took off flying towards the AI, who happened to be just blasted by a freezing air attack by Black Metal Grayuman and then shot in its orb like body by Shepard. Harry smiled seeing Shepard and a Digimon fighting together, he soon took off flying and joined in the fight as well. Dash. The AI began to really worry, despite feeling pain for the first time in his existence, he still held a tactical advantage over the organics that invaded his domain, but now he was facing some very odd creatures he has never seen before. They somehow had the ability to corrupt his data with their attacks and that prevented him from regenerating and recovering, it was like they were some kind of virus that ate away at his body and data. That terrified him, and so the AI began to lash out more aggressively while also trying to avoid those two black creatures attacks, but the organics kept getting in his way and pinned him down. Especially the one with the key-like weapons, he always prevented him from hitting the other humans just die organics. Taylai shook her head is it me? Or is this thing sounding more and more human as we fight it, cause let me tell you, that's disturbing. Garrus nodded yeah. Harry appeared above the AI and swung Oblivion down towards the top of the AI's orb-like body, his keyblade exploded in flames and sent the AI down to the ground. The AI began to lash out with all his tentacles, but Black Orgman suddenly began to fly and spin around at high speed, turning himself into a black drill-like tornado that flew around and began to tear apart the tentacles. The AI roared in pain, but Black Metal Grayuman jumped above his downed body and fired a massive missile from his chest toward the AI, the missile flew down and crashed against the AI exploding on contact. The AI was immediately frozen solid but as Black Metal Grayuman flew away, Shepard threw a grenade down towards the AI, the grenade hit its orb like frozen body and bounced up once before exploding. This cracked the ice covering its body and causing damage, the AI wailed in pain and began to float away from its attackers. But Shepard noticed something odd is it me, or is that thing's body getting smaller? Black Metal Grayuman grinned and nodded yes that's because his data is being destroyed by our attacks, Black Wargman and I are living computer viruses, our attacks destroy data. 
Shepard nodded interesting. How much more can that AI take? Black Metal Grayuman growled as he landed on the ground and took off running not much, his data is already breaking down, and with no way for the guy to regenerate or recover his data, it will begin to collapse. But that's when things will get a bit dangerous, you know how a cornered animal acts in the face of danger and death. Shepard nodded, the AI will begin to grow desperate and who knows what it would do to survive or take them down with them, he already knew how dangerous this AI is. Dash. Everyone except Harry and the Digimon watched in shock as the AI's body suddenly glowed and grew smaller and smaller until it became a glowing Tyrion-like figure made out of date and light. Harry frowned as he watched that looks like it's planning one last stand. The AI suddenly raised his arms and massive orbs of light and data began to materialize around its body while it began to float I will not die here, alone today. Either I kill you or you go down with me organics. Harry's eyes widen when he senses a massive amount of data gathering around the AI train like body watch out. He's preparing something big. Taylor and Garrus scrambled for cover, meanwhile the AI clap his hands and all the orbs around him began to shoot orbs of superheated energy all around him. Black Wargman covered his body with his gauntlets, while Black Metal Grayuman began to run around while avoiding and dodging orbs and explosions, while Shepard held on for dear life. Harry immediately began to block and slap away any orbs coming his way, but then noticed Taylor and Garrus yelling as they covered themselves from the explosions as best as they could. Harry clicked his tongue and immediately began to run towards their friends while still slapping any orbs coming his way, he soon stopped in front of where Taylor and Garrus were taking cover and began to deflect the orbs coming their way at high speed. Taylor was awed at how fast Harry is moving and the ease he was deflecting such powerful attacks incredible. How can he move and react so fast, I can't even see him move. Garrus nodded it's unbelievable that someone can move that fast and be so strong. I don't think we really understand how powerful Harry is Taylor, I think we still can't comprehend what he's truly capable of. Taylor nodded but I think I understand a little bit now. Garrus agreed with Taylor right, he definitely can see how different Harry is to everyone when doing something like this, and all to protect them I'm definitely praying to Harry every night before I go to sleep from now on. Despite the situation they were in tail I couldn't help but giggle and nod me too Garrus, me too. Dash. The attack soon stopped and Harry huffed in annoyance bastard, everyone, get him, and don't let him fire another one of those attacks. Everyone immediately did as Harry ordered and attacked the AI, having a smaller body made it hard to actually hit him with firearms, but Taylor, Garrus, and Shepard were professionals and they were really good at shooting. The AI began to float around as fast as it could to avoid getting hit by the shots. But Harry and the virus Digimon stopped him by attacking him and keeping him pinned, eventually, Black Wargman decided to end this, he quickly lifted his arms and roared the name of his attack Terror Destroyer. A massive orb of dark energy coalesced on top of his claws in seconds, Black Wargman then reared his arms back and then waved them forward as if throwing his attack. The massive orb of dark energy flew through the air and then headed straight towards the AI, the AI panicked and tried to float away, but from Harry's back, a multitude of glowing chains burst out and flew towards the AI. Caught completely off guard, the chains wrapped around the AI and stopped him from getting away, now unable to move he couldn't do anything but take Black Wargman's terror destroyer head on with his whole body. The AI screamed in pain as the attack hit him and pushed him down toward the ground. Harry made his chakra chains dissipate and everyone watched as the orb crashed into the ground and exploded on top of the AI. The explosion was so powerful that it shook the entire digital plane Harry modified for the battle, it made everyone expect Harry and Black Wargman cover their faces to protect them. The explosion soon subsided and revealed a massive crater left by the explosion, soon everyone ran towards the crater and jumped in, they needed to make sure the AI was destroyed. Dash. They soon arrived in the middle of the crater and found the AI on the ground, still in its Durian-like form but there was something definitely wrong with it now, its whole body was glitching and filled with static-like light. The AI growled as it sensed everyone getting close to him, organics. You might think you won boo. But Black Wargman suddenly stomped on its whole body and destroyed whatever data was left of the AI, in fact, he then absorbed the leftover data from the AI making sure that it was completely destroyed now. Black Wargman crossed his arms and huffed the defeated have no right to complain and make threats die in silence whelp. Shepard, Taylor, and Garrus stared at Black Wargman, Garrus suddenly nodded that's fair. Taylor sweat dripped while Shepard nodded in agreement, Harry quickly took out his smartphone and began to do something on it, alright, self-destruct sequence stopped, and deleted, we no longer have to worry about the terminal exploding, mission accomplished.
Shepard sighed while Taylor fist pumped and Garrus sighed in relief. Harry then looked up towards his Digimon friends and smiled thanks guys, your abilities were very useful for this fight. Black Wargman huffed you could have handled it by yourself easily, but I guess you wanted your allies to get some experience. Still, this was fun, it's been a while since I got to kill and destroy something else. Black Metalgra human nodded yes, it's been a while, plus these new friends of yours seem to be the fun type. Not bad boss, though you might want to do something about their defenses, they seem a bit too squishy for my liking. Harry nodded already working on it, I'll try to call you geese more often, but you know, there are not many beings out there that can actually pose a challenge to you guys, I don't want to waste your time. Both virus type Digimon smiled at Harry and then disperse into black colored data and went back inside into Harry's smartphone. Harry smiled and stared at his smartphone fondly, he then nodded and turned his head towards his friends let's get out of here guys. Everyone nodded and Harry then waved his smartphone towards Shepard, Garrus, and Taylor. their bodies disperse into data and then left the digital plane, and Harry soon followed after them. Dash. The group suddenly found themselves back in the small room where they found the terminal that once held the AI, everyone looked around and seemed a bit surprised, soon Harry joined them and smiled at his friend well, that was a thing. Shepard sighed that's one way to put it, I have so many questions, I don't even know where to begin. Taylor nodded me too. Where were we just now, and what was all of that? Garrus sighed and who were your friends? They were definitely something I haven't seen before, they were extremely powerful too. Harry smiled I'll answer all your questions but not here guys, I'll do it back in the Normandy, that goo? Everyone nodded, after all, having that conversation in the Citadel, wasn't a smart thing to do, so everyone decided it was time to go back to the Normandy and check on Joker and so everyone left to go back to the ship.